Good morning, baseball fans. Much anticipated podcast of Around the State, a prep baseball Alabama podcast is here. It's time to try to pick the winners for 1A through 6A of the first round matchups in the state state playoffs. Man, this is a lot of fun. Um, obviously, it'll be different from our normal podcast. Um, we're going to go through each of the matchups for 1A through 6A. We're going to try to move through this as, you know, as quickly as we can, but we want, we want those teams to, you know, we, we don't want to slight those teams that have qualified for the playoffs. So, you know, this one could get a little lengthy, but we'll try to move through it, try to keep, you know, try to keep a good pace, you know, as we can, but again, don't want to slight these teams that have earned this shot. Um, we, man, there's a lot of good we, stuff uh, going on. We see. I'm afraid you say this every year. Every time we do this podcast, because this is the this is the long podcast, you get on. I, I'm I'm not talking. I'm I'm trying to keep mine short. Next time you look up, it's three hours later. So I know. You, I know. We're gonna try to stay, better settle in. We'll try to stay away from that three hour uh, that three hour benchmark. But uh, yeah, man, it's time to get cranked up with one A through six A. Obviously, one classification, the largest classification in the state, seven A. They're finishing up uh, this week. And um, some uh, big time games coming up tomorrow into the weekend. Um, Austin, you want to take a quick look at seven A or just yeah, you know, I got it pulled quickly? up real quick. Yep, I do know that while he's getting that pulled up, Austin and I will be headed to Birmingham tomorrow to get to some of those seven A, those big seven A matchups, and then we'll be hanging there uh, for Friday's uh, matchups uh, for one A through six A. But Austin, you can go ahead and move us through seven A real quick if you want to. <laughs> Yeah, starting off in 7A area one, that four team area down uh, in the Mobile area with Baker, uh, MGM, Alma Bryant, and Davidson. Um, Baker and MGM have already played. Uh, Baker, uh, sp they split the first two games, which, which for those who, who may not know, um, the first two games of the area series is the only ones that count towards your actual area record. The game three is only used for tiebreaker purposes. So if you'll see I've got the asterisk by Baker. They split the first two games, but you see the asterisk by Baker's three and one. That means they won the deciding game three. So if they were to finish five and one or four and two, Baker would get the nod and finish in front of him because they ultimately won that last that last tiebreaker game. Then Alma Bryant and Davidson or Owen uh, Alma Bryant and Davidson uh, sit at three and four, moving on to area two. Uh, Daphne and Fairhope have already played, just like Baker and MGM. Both those teams split the first two games, um, but Fairhope took the uh, deciding game three. So if Fairhope sweeps, sweeps Foley, I think that starts today, uh, Fairhope would win the area championship and Daphne would be the runner-up. Um, moving on to area three, um, only one series in that, that, that five-team area this week. And that's Enterprise and Dothan. Um, both teams went Enterprise and Dothan both in it went into the week at five and one. Enterprise took game one yesterday. I saw it was an extra inning, extra inning game that the Wildcats were able to win, so that pushes their record to six and one. Dothan's at five and two, and then Prattville sits at the top at six and two, and um, and and they've already played all all four of their area series, so they're kind of waiting and to see what what happens in that series um, tomorrow. Going to Area Four, and we talk about those Birmingham areas. Man, the, the Area Four is it, it, the quality of, quality of teams. The quality of the four teams in this area is 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 really strong. You've got Central Phoenix City, obviously the number one team in seven A. They're three and one. Smith Station, who I don't think many people are talking about, they're three and one. Um, Auburn is two and two, and Opelika is zero and four. Central Phoenix City, obviously, uh, they they split with Auburn last week. Um, uh, and then Auburn was able to, to win that game three, so they would have the tiebreaker head-to-head -head if those two teams were tied. Um, and they also have the tiebreaker against Smith Station um, after those those two teams split early, a couple weeks ago. And um, Central Central Phoenix City and Smith Station uh, get, gets – and Auburn and Opelika get set to, uh, to, to start today their final area series. And um, – be interesting to see if because there's a there's a high there, there's a high chance you know that all those three those th top three teams finish at four and two um so interested to, to be seeing how the how the tiebreaker would work out um if auburn was to sweep and central and smith station were to split 
going to Area Five. Um, Hoover has, uh, I believe they they they've clinched a playoff spot. Correct. Yes, because even if they end up with two losses, that's the most yeah, they can have. Them, yeah. Tuscaloosa County and Vestavia already have more than two losses. So yeah. yes. Okay. Uh, so Hoover's wrapped up a, a playoff spot. They will. They got beat by. They're playing Thompson this week. They got beat by Thompson last night in a one-run game. Um, they will play t- tomorrow at Thompson. Um, one game that we we may be able to be at. Um, and I believe I think the winner. Winner of that game is the area champion. If Thompson wins their area champs, Hoover's runner up. If Hoover wins, they go to four and two. Thompson goes to three and three. And I don't think Thompson and Tuscaloosa County played a game three. If, if Tuscaloosa County were to beat Vestavia, I saw both. Of, I looked at both those game changers. I did not see the game three. So and that's what I'm basing that on. Yep. So, uh, yep. Go ahead. It could just be like the area six where they just play a tiebreaker on yep. Saturday. So area six is interesting, man. Woo. It is. Speaking of area six, um, Oak Mountain went into this week at three and one. Hewitt Trussell and Spain Park were both two and two, and Chelsea was one and three. Um, as you see, Hewitt and Oak Mountain played yesterday. Hewitt won that game, I believe it was six to one. Um, so that's a three way tie at the top with with Spain Park also beating Chelsea two to nothing. So you got three teams tied at three and two going into the last day. Supposed to be last day of area play tomorrow. Um, I know if, if if there's a tiebreaker uh, within these area standings, I believe they'll play a playoff game on on Saturday. But um, you know, still a lot to be played for going into uh, Thursday and potentially further. Um, and and we'll be it. We'll, we're excited to check out um, at least one of these games. So not, not really sure yet which game we're going to, but excited to see how that shakes out in area seven. Um, Grissom. Um, they clinched, yeah, clinched the area championship last night with a three to two win over Huntsville. Um, Huntsville falls to three and two. Sparkman um, uh, won their game against Alberville last night, pushing the record to two and three. And Alberville is zero and five. So Huntsville needs to win tonight or tomorrow against Grissom to finish as a runner up. Um, if they lose and Sparkman wins, did Sparkman? Do you know who won that tiebreaker between? Yeah, Sparkman won Sparkman two three. Yes. Okay, so Sparkman wins. Huntsville loses. Sparkman would finish as the runner-up. And then in that final area, eight, um, um, up in the, the last area up north, you got Bob Jones and James Clemens. Both of those teams have already swept Austin and Florence, and that sets up a, a big matchup this weekend, as, as it has over the last couple of weeks, or over the last couple of years, seemingly coming out of that last week of area. It's Bob Jones and – and James Clemens playing for a, an area championship. Um, James Clemens is playing. Check out uh, our first comment. Hold on, hold on. I don't have <laughs> to do that. Oh, man. <laughs> what, up, what up, Tino? <laughs> um, but, yeah, Bob Jones and James Clemens getting ready to uh, play for an area championship. I believe that starts today. Starts today. Uh, or, no, it's, it's Thursday. Thursday, Thursday, Saturday. Saturday. Thursday yes. Saturday. So, that's how Area Seven is shaping up. We'll be interested to see how uh, how it all plays out, and, and we'll have a bracket here in, in a few days. Hopefully, there's yep. no no real playoff games or anything like that. So, um, Class Seven A is coming down to the wire. That's right, which we thought it would, but it's time to focus on one A through six A for this week as we get ready for our uh, playoffs. Some of these matchups are beginning uh, tomorrow. I know there's a threat of some rain in certain parts of the state, so some of the matchups have been moved up to tomorrow. If you're not aware, all of these are best two out of three with a doubleheader, the first day of competition, and then the, if necessary, game would be the day following. So, uh, you know, time to get to get, to get into our picks um, for each before of the Before we do that, picks, before we do, do that, let's, let's – Yeah, let, and let me say one thing real quick, and I'll go you to – go ahead, Austin, and I'll come back. Go ahead. Okay. Um, we've – we talked about it uh, on Monday, but we've released our bracket challenge. Um, you know, if you want to get in and make your picks, make your brackets for each classification, uh, go ahead and do so. Our All the information is on the website um, under the AHSAA tab. You can click uh, p- playoff pairings and scroll down to the bottom of that article, and it has all the information. We've also released an article under our news tab. So, um, and we've been pushing it out on our social media platform. So if you're interested in doing that, you'll be able to make all your picks. 
um, make all your your brackets for each classification and pick your winner and um, you know if, if you win you know if you get the most accumulated amount of points at the very end you win a win a bunch of merchant prep baseball merchandise so that's that's something to to help build the hype for the playoffs and um, if you have any questions please re- please reach out um, but uh, be sure to get your brackets in I think most of them most of them are starting to close on Thursday so got to get them in. We need Tino to get in. I mean, why not? I mean, his, you know, yeah. just guess, go by the highest ranked team. And yeah, you know he, winner. now you know he would pick Mountain Brook because they are the Spartans. That Sparty yeah. Green, man. He's he he's got some favoritism towards that. So, but let's go ahead and get started in 1A. Uh before we do, man, this is <laughs> this is a chance where uh Man, we, we want to hear your comments out to the side, man. Let us know if you agree. Let us know if you disagree. Trash you know, talk us. I want to get yeah, trash Yeah, man, you know, we don't get our feelings hurt. Man, this is all in fun. We we don't know. No one knows who's going to win. But, you know, we're just, it's just interesting to take a look at all these. So let's go ahead and get started. Austin, pull that bracket up. I'll get us started in 1A. Um, in 1A, again, these some of these begin on Thursday and Friday. Our first matchup will feature – the Area 8 winners, South Lamar, they will be hosting the three, uh, the, the Area 3 runner-up, McKenzie. South Lamar comes in with a record of 16-9, and nine, while McKenzie comes in with a record of 11-12. and 12. Uh, South Lamar sits right outside of our top 10 uh, receiving votes, I guess you can call it. Um, you know, I, I'm going to go with South Lamar here. They've been a consistent team throughout the, throughout the season. Um, I'm going to go with South Lamar. Uh, in this one and and possibly in the first two games in a sweep. <clears throat> yeah, I like South Lamar as well when I was because you know last week was busy pulling game changers, pulling records from game changers, all that stuff. Uh South Lamar obviously sitting at there's 17 and 9. Um have had have put together a really strong season. I know they've been outside of our um our top 10 um for, for the majority of the season, but they you know went six and oh in area they finished above Barry, who Barry is has been has been has made made some playoff runs in the past few years. Seems like South South Lamar is clicking at the right time. I'm going to go with them. Moving on to our next matchup, you've got um, the Area Two runner up Elba, um, and they'll be on the road visiting the Area Five uh, winner Central Haneyville. This series will get started on Friday at two o'clock, and then Game Two will follow at four, and then get the if necessary game will be on Saturday. Um, at 6 p.m., um, uh, Elba uh, has an eight and two record, like I mentioned, finished as the runner up behind uh, Florala in area two, and then Central Haneyville um, won area five. They, I don't know if that 10 and 0 record is right. Um, I agree with you, yeah. So, um, but we'll go with it now. They won their area, um, finished above Calhoun and, um, uh, finished above Calhoun, Elwood, Christian, Keith, um, some of those teams. I believe they swept through their area. So, um, but I'm gonna go. I'm going with Central Haneyville. Um, I don't think they're ten and zero, but um, you win. I mean, these first round matchups, and we'll, we're going to talk about it a lot on our next few podcasts. The home home field advantage is such an important aspect in the playoffs, especially in these smaller schools. Um, you know, you, you, you think of the smaller schools, you know, a lot of the towns kind of buy in and, and, uh, and, and go support their team. And, and I think central Haneyville, I, I think they made a good run last year. Um, I, I think they won a, a couple of series. Um, so I'm going to go with central Haneyville. I like the home field advantage and, um, but, um, yeah, you, you, Elba, you know, finishing as, as the runner up to Florala. I mean, how you never know how good they, uh, I see. I see your pick right here. We've got we've got our sheet we're working off of. You uh, just so. stole my thunder. Yeah, I went with Elba, and the reason why I went with Elba is I did search search some game changers last night, oh, man. And, and I'm not saying that they they played Florala tough, but we think Florala is a legitimate contender in one A, and and Elba finishing runner up to them I think says a lot. You know that's a tough area to win with them in there. So I, I went with Elba, uh, the two a the the area two runner up here. I know it's on the road. I know it's going to be a difficult environment, as you said. But I went with Elba here uh, to 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 advance here. This is probably going to be one of those tight area series um, in one A. So we split that pick, 
And we'll move on to the next one. Our next matchup has Lochapoca. They are the Area 7 runner-ups. And I just like to say that, Lochapoca. Lochapoca. Yeah. Makes, they me, will want be, to pick them. Makes it, me want to pick them. <laughs> they will be traveling to the winners of Area 4, and that's Sweetwater. The Bulldogs come in with a 14-11 and 11 record after winning um, Area 4. They have been ranked pretty much – they did drop out a couple weeks, I believe, but they've been ranked pretty much all year in our top 10. They, they finished the season ranked eighth. They, as I mentioned, they come in with a 14-11 and 11 record. Man, I'm going to go with Sweetwater here. Again, we've talked about their consistency throughout the season, and really it's a consistent program. It's a historically strong 1A program. Um, I, I like Sweetwater here. I think they get it done this week, and um, you know I think it may be it may be convincingly, but we'll see. Uh, give me Sweetwater. Yeah, I like Sweetwater as well, and I think I think it, it you know possibly could be in two games as well. You talk about Sweetwater and, and just the their track record, their success they've had at the one A level, um, making deep playoff runs, and um, and and I like I like the Bulldogs once again this season, um, and. and you know, could could they, they've got a pretty tough road ahead of them, looking at potential matchups. Um, but I, I like them here in this first round matchup against Lochapoca. Moving on to our next um, next matchup in one A, you've got this is a pretty good matchup here. Yep, you, you've got Billingsley traveling to Leroy. Billingsley finished as the area six runner up behind Maplesville. Um, they are 13 and six. Like I mentioned, they'll be on the road to Leroy, who we have ranked number seven in our in our final 1A poll. Leroy is 17 and nine. This series is going to get started on Friday. Games at four and six thirty, and then the if necessary game on Saturday at noon. Um, Leroy, starting with Leroy, um, you know, winning that area, something that kind of got snuck under the rug, maybe. Well, we we were we saw it. Um, uh, about a few weeks ago, Leroy played Mill Millery and was able to sweep them and eventually help them win the area championship, which was, was a big win. Um, Billingsley um, Billingsley has been ranked inside our top 10 for the majority of the season. I think they made the they may have made the final four last year. I know they made the elite eight. I think they got to be by Hackleberg. Um, but Billingsley turns returns a lot back. Um um, I know the sh the shoemate kid, um, a couple of kids who came to our events this past summer, that they're back. They've got some talent back from last year's roster, um, um, and then but Leroy winning that series over number one Mil Millery was a huge huge deal. I'm gonna go. Uh, I wonder. I don't know if you called an upset, but I'm gonna go Billingsley here. Mm -hmm. um, I like Billingsley to to take two out of three in a series that I, I definitely think could go three games. That could get to Saturday, um, so I'm, I'm going to go with Billingsley here to to pull off maybe what you would call an upset. I, I think that might be an upset. Yep, uh, you know, I and and again, here's another one. I, I I echo the same thoughts as you. I think this has a. I think this could be an interesting series. Would not be surprised surprised at all if it goes three games. Um, but you said it. You know, Leroy really caught our attention with that with that uh, area series win over Millery. We think, Colton, how you doing, man? We think uh, Leroy uh, is, you know, that, again, that that caught our attention when they swept, or not swept, but they won that series uh, from Millery. And the the home field advantage, again, is is crucial here. So we're going to split this. I'm going to go with the seventh, with seventh ranked Leroy here again, and I would not be surprised one bit if Billingsley doesn't doesn't win that should be an entertaining series. You know who Ooh. lives down the road from Leroy? Who's that? Juju. Oh man, <laughs> Juju's. I didn't know. Okay, she maybe. I think she I think she's going to this game. Oh okay. Oh that'd be that'd be a sight right there to see Juju there. Yeah. So, no doubt. So uh, we split that. I went Leroy. You went Billingsley. Our next playoff series. This one will begin on Thursday at two thirty. And 4.30 with the if necessary game on Friday at 2.30. That's the Area 5 runner-up Calhoun. I uh, believe their record's 10 and 4, maybe off there. Calhoun, again, Area 5 runner-up. They will be traveling to third ranked and 16 and 1 Florala, who won Area 2 uh, this year. Man, I'm, I'm, you know, again, this starts on Thursday. Uh, 
I, I think this could be the year of the Wildcats. One hundred percent. And I'm trying not to. We don't want to disrespect any team. Don't want to look too far ahead. But man, I, I think Florala has a legitimate. I mean that they've got a chance uh, to win it. And little sneak, man. I, I filled out my one A bracket. Never know. I may have picked Florala to win it all. Mm. But um, I've got Florella winning this one pretty handedly. Um, and, you know, we've already talked about this. If they are able to handle business and the next matchup that we are going to talk about goes in a certain direction, we've got a chance for a really heavyweight bout in area two and one A, or excuse me, round two and one A. So give me Florella to advance this week. <clears throat> yeah, I think, I think Calhoun is, I think they're around 10 and four because. Man, last week, like I said, I was scrubbing game changers. Some of these teams don't have game changers, so I'm scrubbing Facebooks. Uh, and I finally found Calhoun's, I think it was their coach. They said that they they started off 0-4, but I think that they won like 9 or 10 straight mm. um, going into playoffs. Um, uh, let there me, we go. There. Let, right me there. Let, me, let me interject something um, about Florala. Florala's 16-1, and and that only loss was coming to an out-of-state team from Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Brad says I had the Billingsley Ferrella second round matchup last year. It was a fun series. They've uh, that, that whoever honestly, whoever, you know, if Florella is able to get past this series, um, either Millery or Maplesville because could, you know, that would be a fun series as well. So yeah, no um, doubt. But they still got to take care of business here in the first round. Um, but I I think Ferrella's pitching is just such a strength. You start with um, Cody Walsh and then his his little brother, Easton Walsh. Yeah. Um, I think Cody's been up to like 90 this spring. Easton has put up some big numbers. Uh, and then you have Dalton Jackson, who also can pitch, but he's he's known for, for doing damage in the middle of that order. They've got some other guys too as well, but those are kind of the headline guys. Um, so I, I like Florallo here uh, pretty convincingly to, to get this get – this, get off on the right foot in the first round of the playoffs and set up a potential big time matchup in the second round and moving on to that, that second uh, or that next first uh, first round matchup in class one, a you've got the area one runner up Millery. They'll be on the road to the six winner Maplesville. This series will get started on Friday with games at four and six 30 and that game three being on Saturday at one Millery. Like I mentioned, finish as the runner up, um, as the runner up behind Leroy, like we just talked about, Millery is 23 and three. I think they may be 24 and three. I'm not sure. Um, I think they've got 24 wins. Um, but uh, I think they, they got off to a 20 and 0, 22 and 0 start um, before losing to Leroy. Maplesville kind of been under the radar a little bit in 1A. They've been, I think they've, they've been outside our top 10 for the majority of the season. Closed out the regular season with a big series sweep over Billingsley to, to capture that Area Six championship, um, but I and in, in the end I think I think it's Millery here. I, I like Millery to to uh, to go on the road here. Um, won't be a will be a tough environment to get the series win. Could potentially see it going three games. Maplesville obviously has shown the ability to beat quality teams, um, and they're going to play a quality team in this first round matchup, but. Ultimately, I'm going to side with Millery, um, a, a perennial power in Class 1A. Um, give me Millery here to set up a, a potential big-time matchup in the second round. I agree with you there. And, again, that's no slight to Maplesville. You know, big you know, big area series win um, over Billingsley. Um, you know, and they've set themselves up to host this big first-round matchup. Um, you know, but it's just hard to, it's hard to go against Millery, even though they are on the road, even though they did finish runner-up. Uh, you know, we've got them ranked number one for a reason. Um, and, and and they're a team that could go all the way. So, but again, uh, going all the way, they may be eliminated in the first round. Yeah, they may not get out of the first round. Um, and, you know, and I, I would not be surprised if this one goes three games, but I think we're both going to side with Millery uh, in this one. Our next matchup in 1A uh, will feature the Area 4 runner up, University Charter. They come in with a record of 12 and 7. They will be tra They finished runner-up to Sweetwater. They will be traveling to Wadley, and this game will be played pretty neat for both teams. Pretty cool. Played at Southern Union Community College. If you've never been there, it's a really impressive 
uh, junior college facility. This one will get cranked up on Thursday, beginning at one o'clock for the doubleheader. And then the if necessary game would be Friday at 3.30. Um, Wadley comes in with a 99 record, but of most importance, they won that area. Um, man, I, you know, I'm I'm going to go with maybe a – I'm a switching. I think I'm, I'm with you. I'm going to go with University Charter. And the reason I'm going with University Charger uh, Charter, <laughs> University Charter, is because I think that they played in a – fairly difficult 1A area. And again, we've talked about scheduling games. We've talked about playing tough games. I think that that bodes well for University Charter, a pretty new school. Um, you know, and, you know, in Wadley, again, area seven winners, uh, quality team. They they did what they've got to do to host an area of uh, the first round of the series, the first round of the playoffs. But I'm going to go with the 4A or the Area 4 runner-up. I'm going to go with University Charger, Charter to possibly, uh, if you want to call this an upset, to go on the road and win this series. I'm going with the University Charter as well. I just switched my pick. I had Wadley, but now I I'm noticed going to, that. I noticed that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I've got University Charter schedule pulled up here. They played Millery. They played Demopolis, Hale County, some higher classification schools, Washington County. Um, and and outside of Miller, you know, they played lost seven to nothing and five to one against uh, against Sweetwater in their area series. Um, not bad losses, and then they they've swept the their other other four um, area matchups pretty handedly. Um, so I think Sweetwater is, uh, uh, University Charter. Um, I think University Charter goes on the road here to 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 take two of three against Wadley. Um, think this could be a, a pretty entertaining series. Uh, pretty cool venue uh, that these teams are able to go play at Southern Union um, and and expect it to be a good series, but I like University Charter like you. Going into our last matchup in the South uh, in Class 1A, you've got Barry. Um, they'll be on the road traveling to Brantley. Barry finished as the Area 8 runner-up, um, finishing 7-13. and 13. They finished um, as the runner-up, um, finished as the runner-up behind South Lamar, who we talked about um, we were pretty high on on, on South Lamar. Brantley, um, last year's state runner-up in Class 1A, finished behind Appalachian in a, in a very entertaining series. Um, Brantley is the Area 3 uh, winner. They come into the playoffs with a 14-5 and record. This series is getting started on Friday at 4.30 and 6, um, with the Saturday, if necessary, game um, being at 1 o'clock. But... I like this series to get wrapped up on Friday. Um, I think Brantley is uh, is one of those teams, and I think that there are a few of the few of the teams who have a legitimate chance to to uh, to win Class One A, and I think Brantley is one of them. Obviously, they made the One A uh, state finals last year. Um, had a chance to force the deciding game three. I know you weren't there, um, but it was a very inter they had a big lead going to the bottom of the seventh against Appalachian, and kind of. That not throw it. I mean, they kind of kicked it around a little bit. Appalachian was able to score some runs, and then Appalachian was able to walk it off on a single. Um, but Brantley, they, they bring back Jaden Parks. Um, Cooper Layton is another guy in the middle of that order. John Kilcrease. Um, so they've definitely got some experience back from last year's team. I like Brantley um, to uh, to to potentially sweep this matchup and, and move on to the second round. I agree with you. Um, uh, Brantley, a historically strong 1A program. You mentioned the state runner-up finish last year, 14 and 5. They've been ranked in the heart of our rankings all year long. Um, I think it's just too much Brantley uh, this weekend. And, and like you mentioned, it I would not be surprised if this one is you know goes two games. Um, I do like Brantley here fairly, fairly, you know fairly confidently. Uh, so I'm going to look for them to advance uh, to next week to face the winner of University Charter and Wadley. That'll wrap us up in the south part of 1A, moving up to the north. And I was just looking, taking a look. It's pretty ironic that uh, the way the rankings finished, there are five ranked teams in the south in 1A, and there are five ranked teams in the north in 1A. That's that's pretty, pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, it's not like that in all the other classifications. But moving to the northern side, uh, our first matchup, We've got Covenant Christian. Covenant Christian, they won uh, Area 16. They will be hosting uh, Addison. Uh, let me go back to Covenant Christian. They are 
It says eight and 16. I don't know if that's right. I think it's more eight and 11, or eight and 12, but they've played a very difficult schedule. Uh, some, a, a lot of larger schools, um, Covenant Christian, again, they won area 16. They are hosting the runners up from uh, area 11. That's Addison. Addison is 12 and 13. This series will get started on Friday at 4 30. That Saturday would be the F necessary game at 11 a.m. Um, man, I listen, I, I, I think, I don't think you need to get I, Covenant Christian is one of those small schools where you cannot let the record scare you. Uh, they've played a fairly challenging schedule this year. And, and again, I've always said it sets you up for the playoffs. And due to that challenging schedule they've played, I'm going with Covenant Christian here uh, to, to take care of Addison this weekend. <clears throat> Adam McGee disagree disagrees with you. He said he saw Covenant in person this year. Think Addison will coast. Do you want to message? Did your series just pop up? Got activated. Austin, I think you're muted. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, your audio kind of yes. messed up too when you were talking. But um, yeah, well, I had a, I my, somehow my Siri got activated somehow. So uh, so did mine. Like yeah, a minute yeah. ago. Um, okay, yeah. But I'm gonna go. I'm going with Covenant Let's, Christian too. What? No, go ahead. I just want to throw our guy Adam's comment up there if you can. I did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He thinks Addison's going to coast. I hear. Well, I, I, hey, I love to hear it, man. We don't know who's going to. I love to hear it. If you disagree with us, let us know, please. He's making me want to take Addison now. Something I don't you know. You want to change your pick, man. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm going Addison. I'm going oh, Addison. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm going Addison. Uh, yeah, I'm going Addison. I was going to go Covenant, but my, my guy Adam McGee talked me into it. I'm going Addison. <laughs> that's 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 all I got. Uh, going on to our uh, next matchup in 1A, our second matchup in the north. Um, you've got uh, Hubbardville, who will be on the road at Coosa Christian. Uh, Hubbardville finished as the Area 10 runner-up um, and come in with a 9-10 and 10 record. Uh, Coosa Christian won Area 13. Um, uh, they finished with a 13 and 19 record. Um, like I mentioned, the area 13 winner this series will get started on Friday, um, uh, starting at one with the if, if necessary game being at 11. Kusa Christian, uh, I'm going to go with Kusa Christian here. They're kind of like Covenant Christian coming into the playoffs with not a great record, but I would not let that record fool you. Um, I think they made a pretty deep playoff run last year in 1A. Um, um, but Hubbardville has been outside of our top 10 for most of the season. But ultimately, I'm going to go – I'm going to side with Kusa Christian here in this matchup to uh, to go and play the winner of Covenant Christian and Addison. Sorry, man. Had a, Just had a text from Coach Smith at Spain Park, so I had to answer that real quick. So moving on, uh, as you said, you're going to go with Kusa Christian, and I'm going to do the same here. Again, I think that's a team that you mentioned. Uh, they played a you know, fairly tough schedule. The winners of Area 13, as you also mentioned, with the 12-18 and 18 record, they've been pretty much outside of our rankings all year long. Uh, but give me Kusa Christian this week to advance um, over Hubbardville, and that would set up a fairly intriguing matchup next week if both of those things, uh, both those matchups play out. Moving on to our next, uh, moving on to our, our, our next matchup, You've got uh, Area 15 runner-up, uh, Skyline. They come in with a record of 6-10. and 10. Again, finished Area 15 runner-up. They will be traveling. They've got a pretty tall task, in my opinion. They're traveling to the winners of Area 12. That's the, our number two ranked team in 1A, Appalachian. Appalachian comes in with a 19-2 and two record. This series will get started on Friday at 4.30 with the if necessary game on Saturday at 1. Man, I, I think that this is – I think – it's hard to, you know, I'm not, I don't want to beat around the bush here. I think that this is Appalachian written all over it. Um, two losses on the year. Uh, again, another historically strong 1A small school power. Man, give me Appalachian to advance here, and I think it could be rather convincing. Yeah, I agree. I like the Eagles in two games. Last year's defending state champ, they bring back Camden Moore. Um, I think it's Lucas Harvey, um, another player, another uh, middle of the order player for them. Um, they've got a strong, strong uh, amount of production back this year, and um, I, I like them pretty, pretty convincingly in this open opening series. Um, 
to uh, to to possibly you know uh, defend their their state championship in one A this year. We'll see how it plays out. Our next matchup in one A, you've got the area fourteen runner up Bell Green, who comes into the playoffs with with an eleven and eleven record. They'll be on the road this week, um, facing the area nine winner Victory Christian. Victory Christian. Um, just snuck into the top 10 um, in our final poll in, in Class 1A at number 10. They come in with a 16-14 and 14 record, um, dominated their area, swept through their area. And then Bell Green um, uh, was in the same area with Hackleburg, and, and they won the, their first game, the first game of that area championship against Hackleburg. Uh, against Hackleburg. Um, but uh, Hackleburg was able to win games two and that deciding game three. So it's Bell Green finishing as the runner-up, but that kind of speaks to how good um how good bell green is um but i'm gonna go uh i'm going with victory christian here um coming in with a 16 and 4 record they've swept through their area they've they've um had a, a strong season up to this point and last year they uh, they made the made the i think they won their area once again last year made a, a a little bit of a run i'm gonna go with victory christian here in a in a very i think this is a one of the better matchups in class one A this year, this uh, week's, but I'm going to go with victory Christian here to uh, advance to the second round. I agree with you on an interesting first round matchup. Adam says, Adam McGee, again, we appreciate it. Bell green has multiple eighth graders playing big roles, bright future for them. Well, guess what, Adam, you got Austin to change his, change his pick earlier. I'm not changing my pick. I went with bell green from the get go. So you and I are thinking the same. Adam may need to be our 1A insider. <laughs> he might need to be. That, we may put him out covering some 1A he, games. He, he may He may just be just completely lying, but we're believing it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but, no, I picked Bell Green from the get-go, and I'm going to stay with that. And you mentioned it. I, you know, And I don't want to sound like a broken record on this podcast because this can be said multiple times throughout. But preparing your team, getting your team in big games to prepare them for the playoffs. And I do believe – that Bell Green, you know, and we think Hackleberg is really good, uh, you know, playing the, winning a game and playing that series so tightly contested. That's why ultimately I sided with Bell Green, but I appreciate Adam's vote of confidence there. Um, that's who I went with, and I'm going to stay with Bell Green there. Uh, so, again, we split that. That's an interesting series to follow. Moving on to our next matchup, all right, uh, you have uh, the area 13 runner-up, Cedar Bluff. They come in with a record of 17 and 12. They will be traveling to ninth-ranked Lynn, who come in with a record of 13 and 7. They are the winners of area 10. This series will get started on Friday at 4.30 with the, if necessary, game on Saturday at 11 a.m. I think this is another matchup in 1A that is fairly intriguing. Um you know, both of these schools have made noise in 1A in years past. Both of them have, you know, come in with, with pretty good overall records. Um, but I ultimately went with Lynn here. Um, I think Lynn gets it done at home. Again, there's that home field advantage. Um, I think they get it done and advanced and advanced to next week to the following week. So give me Lynn in this 1A matchup. Yeah, I'm gonna go um with Lynn as well. Um, we talked about how, how good we think South Lamar is. They've, they've beaten South Lamar, yep. um, uh, swept through their area. Uh, they've beaten Cordova, who's a 4A school, um, played a close game against Hackleburg. So they've um, played a, a pretty challenging schedule up to this point. They're number nine in our poll. Um, but Cedar Bluff um, obviously finished as a runner-up in a, in a pretty tough area. We had Galesville ranked. Spring Garden is is notoriously a, a solid team. I'm not sure how um, what their season was like this year, um, but they and I saw that that um, uh, Cedar Bluff was able to win a I think it was a deciding game to punch their ticket in the playoffs against Spring Garden at Jacksonville State. So that's a pretty cool pretty cool setup there. Um, but I'm going to side with Lynn just like you in a pretty close series. Um, moving on to our next uh, next playoff matchup, we've got. The area nine runner-up Talladega County Central, they'll be uh, they come in with an eight and six record. Um, they'll be on the road, um, tr uh, traveling to the area fourteen winner Hackleburg, who's at twenty and six. This series will get started on Friday at three and five, with the if, if necessary game being on Saturday at noon. Um, I'm going to go with Hackleburg here, um, pretty convincingly, with 
you know, Aiden Beard, Edge Weeks, a um, couple other guys for Hackleberg. Um, I think I could see them once again making a, another deep run. Um, I think Talladega County Central is closing their school, um, uh, which is something I learned when I was researching. They finished at the <laughs> area rope. Um, so the, pretty cool to see their baseball team making the playoffs. And I, I do pray – keep the rain away this for this Sunday at Talladega. That's the one thing I I, I asked for Talladega County Central. So I assume, that's in, I assume that's in Talladega. Every morning when I get up, I check the weather. And this morning it was up to 90% chance of rain Sunday. So I'll be there Monday. Hey, so will I, so will I. So yeah, I, I'm no offense to Talladega County Central. I think this one could be one-sided. Um, Hackleburg, man, die. deep run last year. Uh, you know, that's a community that's used to winning in baseball, man. I, I, I like them. Um, give me Hackleberg to, to take care of this one fairly easily again, you know, and again, we mean no disrespect to teams when we make our predictions and, you know, if they prove us wrong, then that kudos to them. I think this next one could be an interesting one as well. You got the area 12 runner up Jacksonville Christian. They come in with the record of 10 and 10. They will be traveling to Athens Bible, uh, who come in with a record of, of 10 and 12. Jacksonville Christian was the runner up to Appalachian in area 12. Athens Bible, they won area 15 over Skyline. Um, you know, and I think Athens Bible, I believe it was, yeah, they went five and one. They won the, the, the them and Skyline were both five and one in their area, but uh, Athens Bible had the tiebreaker. Uh, Athens Bible sits right outside of our top 10. Uh, in our latest poll, this series will get started on Thursday at one o'clock for the doubleheader. And then game three would be Friday. The if necessary game would be at three o'clock, man. I went back and forth on this one because Jacksonville, Jacksonville Christian uh, finishing runner up to Appalachian. There was a, you know, that, 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 that really had that. I really took that in consideration because we think Appalachian obviously is a contender to possibly make it back to the state championship series again this year, uh, you know, and could possibly win it. Um, but I'm going to go because I remember last year I picked against Athens Bible early and I know they won like one or two series. I believe I'm almost certain of that. If it wasn't last year, it was two years ago. It all runs together after a while. And so I learned my lesson. So by the slimmest of margins, I'm going to go Athens Bible here to advance to round two in 1A. Yeah, um, I agree like you. I think this could be a very, very close series. Um, but I'm going to side with Athens Bible coming in. Um, they played some some quality teams up in that area. They played Schultz, they've beaten Schultz Christian pretty handily. They got B8 7 by West Limestone, a higher classification school. Played Lindsey Lane. Um, um, Whitesburg Christian, so they they played some quality teams, um, and and seem to be hitting their stride here down down the uh, um, down the stretch. I'm going to go Athens Bible just like you, but Jacksonville Christian would not be surprised, like you mentioned, in that area with Appalachian. They they've seen quality teams and and won't be surprised this week um, if if they're able to to get this win. Moving on to our last last series in Class One A. You've got the Area 16 runner-up, Shoals Christian. They'll be on the road to the area at the Area 11 winner, Summerton Christian. We have Summerton Christian ranked number five, and they've been in they've been in the middle of that 1A poll for the majority of the season. They they sit at 16 and four. Shoals Christian is seven and ten. This series gets started on Thursday at one and three thirty, with the Friday if necessary game being at 10 a.m. Um, I'm gonna go in Summerton Christian here. Um, I think Summerton Christian is 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 very solid. Um, we've seen a couple of their couple of their couple of their players at our events in the summers, and and it's easy to see what makes them so so successful as a program. They've got some good players, and I like I like Summerton Christian to uh, to win this series, um, possibly in two games. But um, I like Summerton Christian here to advance to the second round. And the name of the kid slips my mind right now, but they've got a big old top of that rotation. Hits yeah. right-handed, yeah. throws left-handed. I forget yeah, his name. That's right. And uh, man, I, I, is it okay if I label everyone a dark horse to make it to one of the finals? I yeah. feel like I've done that several times, but I, I wouldn't sleep on Summerton Christian this year. Austin Hubbard. Yes, yes, that's the name. Yep, yep. 
good arm for Summerton Christian. Hey, and by the way, Summerton Christian is going to be in our first ever small town showdown next year. Um, yeah. You know, and so we're looking forward to that. But I like Summerton Christian here as well. As you know, I, again, I think it's a team built to to make a deep run. And, uh, you know, I, I like them in 1A or excuse me, in the first round. Uh, to to advance to the uh, to, to next weekend. So I, I'm like you. I think this is impressed with Summit and Christian. So I think they've got a shot. So that will wrap us up in 1A. Man, a lot of, lot of information there. We appreciate people getting involved there. We're going to move on to 2A, if, if you're good with that, Austin, as we keep yep. moving through these 1A through 6A brackets. Um, we'll go ahead and jump to 2A. Um and our first matchup in 2A, you want to go ahead and throw that 2A bracket up? Oh, my bad, my bad. You're good. Trying to, all good. Trying to pull up Cottonwood's preview there. And I just there want y'all to know there is a lot of stuff going on, on for live <laughs> for a live production here, man. We've got sheets everywhere that we've got our notes. We're going back and forth on uh, Google Drive sheets that we've got. So bear with us as we try to get through this. But we're moving on to 2A. And in 2A, our first matchup, this one will begin on Friday at 4 o'clock. That's the doubleheader. Uh, the If Necessary game will be Saturday at 1 o'clock. You've got the Area 3 runner-up. Excuse me. Yeah, Area 3 runner-up, Cottonwood. They come in with a record of 14 and 12. They will be traveling to the winners of Area 8. That's Ranburn. Ranburn comes in with a 12 and 14 record. Um, you know, I... I, I'm I'm going to be perfectly honest with you here. This is another one that I went back and forth on, back and forth on, back and forth on. But I think the deciding factor for me, and I, I guess you can call this an upset, all right, because I'm going to go with the road team this week. I'm going to go Cottonwood because looking at their schedule, they finished runner-up to Wicksburg. And Wicksburg is a team in 2A that's been as hot as anyone the second half of the season. And as we, this is probably the fifth or sixth time I've already mentioned it. Being prepared for the state playoffs is important. And I think being in those, that series with Wicksburg and other games that they played, I think that bodes well for Cottonwood. Uh, give me Cottonwood to advance to round two. Give me Cottonwood as well. I like the Bears led by, they've got two strong R's at the top of their rotation in Braylon Morris and Austin Miller. Um, two two-way players who uh, who are juniors, and then outfielder Cleet Meadows is another uh, another junior in that order that helps lead them. I like Cottonwood, like you mentioned. You know, we had someone at our covering that uh, Wicksburg and Cottonwood series, and it seemed like it was a, a a pretty competitive game until I think Wicksburg may have pulled away late. Um, but Cottonwood, they, they've they've you know, when you're a small school down in that Dothan area, there are a lot of talented small schools in Dothan, and Cottonwood's played a lot of those teams. I like Cottonwood here to go on the road and get this win against Ranburn. Moving on to our next series, um, that will be down in the uh, down in the Dothan area. You've got or in the Troy area, you've got the area two runner up Ju Blackshear. They will be on the road traveling to the area five winner Pike Liberal Arts. Um, who we have ranked number two. They've been number two, number three, number one. They've been inside, been inside our top three for the whole season. J.U. Blackshear is 12 and 10. Pike Liberal Arts is 22 and 5. This series will get started on Friday at 4 with the necessary game. Uh, game three being on Saturday at 1 o'clock. Um, give me Pike Liberal Arts. Um, just, you know, and, and we'll, we'll talk more about them in, in later podcasts if they're able to win this win this series. But, Pike Liberal Arts has the talent um, in, in Class Two A to to win it and be one of those one of those main teams that um, have a, a, a serious chance to win the Class Two A championship. I like them to get off to a good start here in in, in the first round. I like Pike Liberal Arts um, to win this series. I, I do too. Just too much talent, man. That's a talented group. You know what? Well, this is their second year from AISA, correct? Yeah, yes. yep. Second year from AISA. Man, that's a talented group there. Pike Lib, obviously we've got them ranked two. You mentioned it. We've had them top three all year long. And I'll tell you, you know, I went to a Vincent game um, earlier this year in an, an area series they played. And there were several people, because I think Vincent's another team that we'll talk about in the North. That's another team that can make a deep run again. Um, but there were several people asking me at that Vincent game, how good is Pike Lib? I said, they're really good. You know, it very well could come down to those two teams. But 
Uh, that's a team that that people know about, a team that is going to be a hard out for anyone to beat. Um, and speaking, and again, I'm going to side with you. I'm going to go with Pike Lib. And speaking of someone being a hard out uh, for someone to, you know, knock them out, our next matchup is another one of those teams that you can't talk about 2A baseball, baseball without talking about the GW Long Rebels. Uh, this week, the GW Long Rebels will be at home. They come in with a record of 16 and 9, and I proudly say that. They come in with a record of 16 and 9 because we've got the right, the correct record for them. Uh, they currently sit at number four. This year, uh, I'll get to that in just a second. They currently sit at number four. They won area four over Ariton. Um, Figure it out. I, I got it. I got it figured out, man. That was the PBR national office call me. So I'll have to, I'll have to get, uh, I'll have to, to get back with them. I'll, I'll put them all for a second. Pike all right. So there. back to where, back to what we were, we were talking about um, GW long, they will be hosting. They're the area four winners over um, Ariton. They will be hosting Aliceville. Aliceville comes in with a record of nine and two. They're the runner-ups in seven in area seven. This series will get started on Thursday at four o'clock with the if necessary game on Friday at four. So both the start times will be four for Thursday and Friday. Man, I just listen. I, I think that this one is a fairly easy pick. Uh, GW Long, obviously, they are perennial state powers. Um, they, they seem to be, they seem to have really been clicking the last two weeks, which is what you want to do. Coach Miller does a great job down there. Uh, obviously a year in, year out, just a notoriously tough baseball team and toughness goes a long way. I like GW along here, fairly convincingly to move on to round two. Yeah, I, I like GW long as well. And, and. You know, it it looks you know those those three teams down in that Wiregrass area with um, GW Long, Ayrton, who we'll talk about, um, and Pike Liberal Arts. You know, it, it, those those three teams have a legitimate shot. Um, Bryson McCrea, Blaine Wood, who's a, a sophomore, um, who's really talented. Cohen Pritchett, some of those guys that GW Long leans on. Um, I, I think it's too much talent here in this first round matchup for Aliceville. I'm going to go with the Rebels. To advance to the second round, well, they will match up with the Area 6 runner-up, Thorsby, who will be on the road um, traveling to the Area 1 winner, Bayshore Christian. Thorsby is 20-9. and nine. Bayshore Christian is 12-11. and 11. This series gets started on Friday at 1 and 3.30 with game, two, or game 3 being on Saturday at noon. Thorsby, like I mentioned, with a 29 record, they finished as the runner-up to Realtown. Um and, and Bayshore Christian, like I said, is 12 and 11. Bayshore Christian's in uh, a two team area against St. Luke's Episcopal. They won that, they swept that, the, won those first two games to clinch their area championship. Um, Bayshore Christian, led by guys like Jack Malone. Um, you know, Jack Malone is a kind of a, a two way prospect for them, hitting in the middle of that order. Um, and then Thorsby uh, finishing as a runner up to Realtown, um, coming in with that 20 and 9 record. Obviously, very talented as well. This is a very good series, I think. Um, one that could, could very well go uh, three games. But ultimately, I'm going to side um, with Bayshore Christian here at home. Bayshore Christian's played some higher classification teams and have played some of those teams tough. I'm going with Bayshore Christian. The the Eagles have, have made deep playoff runs the last couple of years, last few years. May not have the, talent, the same type of talent that they've had over the last few years, but um, winning is in their pedigree. I'm going to go with Bayshore Christian here in this first round matchup. I'm, I'm sort of surprised I'm doing this because I really like Bayshore Christian. And as you mentioned, their pedigree, it, winning is in their pedigree. But man, I'm going to go with the area six runner up, Thorsby. Um, maybe a little bit of an up, maybe a little bit of a off the wall pick here, but I'm going to go with Thorsby. Um, this, this, I guess maybe this could be my upset special of the week for all classifications. Oh, Jonathan, thank you. And I'm not just – put Jonathan's comment up there. Um, I picked Jonathan, Thor Jonathan's our two-way insider. Yeah, he's our two-way guy. That's right. 
Jonathan, I picked Thorsby simply because of what you said. I looked at their game changer, and they had played some larger schools throughout the year. And, you know, finishing runner-up to Realtown in that area is nothing to be, you know, not, not too shabby. And maybe, again, it's hard to go against Bayshore Christian's success in previous state and state playoffs. But there's just something about me that says Thorsby may get this done on the road. And because of that, that's who I'm going to go with. And that's who I went with earlier. But, again, I appreciate the support from Jonathan. I hope you and I are both right. But we'll wait and see there. But, that that's again, that's an entertaining series uh, in 2A. Our next matchup features the Area 5 runner-up, Luverne. They have come in with a record of 10 and 13. Again, they finished runner-up in Area 5. They will be on the road at the winners of Area 2. That's Washington County. Washington County comes in with a record of 13 and 17. This series gets started on Friday at 5. Man, I, I, I really wasn't sure about this one. And, I know, and, and let me go back. The uh, if necessary game would be Saturday at noon. Man, I wasn't real sure about this one, about which way to go. Part of me wanted to go with Laverne because they were in that area five with Pike Lib. But Pike, Pike Lib, you know, beat them fairly handedly. But they're going to be live. Five to four and seven to one. Well, the, uh, that's true. Well, the, the one, that's right. One of the games was five to four. I'm probably going to be wrong here. Now that I look at it, but I'm going to stick with my guns because I think the worst thing you can do is is change your pick. And I've got I've already made this pick, so I'm going to stay with it. I'm going to go with the home team, Washington County. I think you're probably going to disagree with me here. That's perfectly fine. But I'm going to go with Washington County in an upset here. Maybe I'm wrong, but we'll see. I have a feeling you're going Luverne. I am going Luverne. Um, uh, and. and I was wrong. They, they got beat six to five in game one by Pike Liberal Arts, and then got beat eleven to one in that second game. But I thought it was one game. Yeah, I thought it was yeah, one, one game that was tough. Yeah, but you, I mean, you look at their schedule. They played the Houston Academies, the the Andalusias, the Ops. Um, may not have beaten those teams. They played Satsuma three times, um, and, and that's probably why the record is what it is. And and same with Washington County as well, playing some some good teams like Millery and. They played Baldwin County and Thomasville. Um, so this 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 is kind of two similar teams, I think. Um, but ultimately, I'm going to side with Laverne here. Um, just, I mean, really no rhyme or reason, honestly. I, th it's just, I think this is a 50-50 matchup where you can flip a coin and Great. whatever whatever it lands on. So I'm, I'm going to go with Laverne. You're going with Washington County. Our next matchup uh, features the Area 1 winner. Area 1 winner. St. Luke's Episcopal, they'll be on the road this week traveling to the area. They finished runner-up. St. Paul's. St. Area, yeah. that's right. area one runner-up, St. Luke's Episcopal. They'll be on the road traveling to the area six winner, Realtown, who we snuck in, um, making their debut in the final week of the polls at number 10 in Class 2A. St. Luke's Episcopal is 9-14. and 14. Realtown is 18-9. and nine. This series is getting cranked up on Friday at 4.30 and 7.00. And the if necessary game being on Saturday at noon. I'm rolling. I'm rolling with Real Town. I saw Real Town play earlier in the season, about a month and a half ago. Went to go watch our guy Jamarcus. Jamar I had to go watch Jamarcus throw. He it was 88 91. For those who don't know, that's a freshman. Get used to the name. Um, but the, you know, that outside of Jamarcus, they've got some other players as well. Um, I think Blake Smith is is a name who's who's committed to Huntington. Um, some of the guys at the top of their order I was pretty impressed with. Um, and I think they've got another arm behind Jamarcus as well. A left-handed left arm, yep. Yeah. So, Real Town's built – I mean, they've, they've got a, a solid team this year, obviously. Um, good mix of juniors and seniors and, and Jamarcus being a freshman. Um, so, I like Real Town here. Um, I think, you know, just on the mound, those two arms, that two quality arms at the top of the, top of the lineup for Real Town – I'm going with Railtown here in in their first round matchup. I hate to just say because of what you said, but it is it's because of those arms that I'm going with Railtown. Obviously, man, and we we think highly of Jamarcus. And if Jamarcus is in the zone consistently, good luck hitting him and good luck beating him. 
Um, you know, and, 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 and he's going to be in the zone. He's, you know, he will lose the zone at times, but his stuff is completely electric. You know, you, you mentioned it, 89, 91 mile an hour fastball. So oh, did you see the article where they, they he's up to 96? 96. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I, I hear you. But you know what? Regardless if it's 89, 91, I don't think it's his best pitch. Mm-mm. His best pitch is that wipeout slider. I mean, it's filthy. It's an advanced breaking ball as a freshman. Um, and, and that's why I go with real – that's part of the reason why I go with real time. He makes up part of that pitching uh, rotation. So give me real time as well to advance. Moving along, here's another. This this may be one. This may be the premier matchup in two A. You've got the runner up, uh, Ayrton. It was the Purple Cats. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, the Ayrton Purple Cats. They are the area four runner up. We've already mentioned them. Uh, finishing runner up to GW Long. They come in with a record of 20, 20 wins, seven losses, and a tie. They finished the year ranked number five in our Class 2A poll, they are on the road at number nine and Area 7 winners, Tuscaloosa Academy, who finished 21 and 10 this year and also finished ranked number nine in our final poll. Again, this is a interesting, interesting 2A matchup. Two teams that, let's just be honest, quite frankly, it's a shame that they're meeting in round one, okay? Because these are two teams – that have that, that that have a legitimate shot of advancing. Um, I, I'm listen. The people at Tuscaloosa Academy, man, they are. We appreciate them tagging us and keeping us up to date throughout the season with their games. They do a great job of keeping us updated. But man, I I, I have to go with Ayrton here. Um, Ayrton in that Do- down in that Dothan area have played some. They played some larger schools. They played. Uh, they played some good larger schools and have held their own. Again, we talk about their battle every year with GW Long. That happens at least one series. Sometimes there's two series that go on, and that could very well happen again this year. It's hard. It's hard to go against Ayrton. I know it's on the road. It's going to make it more difficult for them. And they're on the road against a quality team. Uh, Tuscaloosa Academy wouldn't surprise me a bit if they win this, but I've got to go with the Purple Cats of Ayrton. Yeah, me too. Last year's state champion, um, the Air yeah. Purple Cats. They lost uh, lost some key pieces, but they bring back guys like Caden Collier, who I love some Caden Collier, Lawson Legier, um, a couple other guys for the Purple Cats. I think they're they're built um to make they're they're and, and they have been for the last few years, but Ayrton is 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 built for the playoffs. Um they know how to win. Um Finally, getting over that hump last year over GW Long and, and going on to winning that entertaining series against Vincent to win this two eight state title. Um, I think this week marks their um, their first step of defending that two eight title. Um, going to be a it's going to be a, a tough road, um, but I, I I like Ayrton here to to go on the road and and take this first matchup first uh, first round matchup against Tuscaloosa Academy. Our guy Jonathan is back. Tuscaloosa Academy, normally pretty solid, and when you play there, they're normally hard to beat them there. Love it, man. That's that's great. Love it. And, and again, you know, Jonathan, to your to what you say, you know, we, we've had Tuscaloosa Academy ranked all year. We think they are really good. It's no disrespect to Tuscaloosa Academy. Ayrton is just one of those teams, man, and, and that, that just – continue to win when it counts. And this was a hard pick for me. <clears throat> Sorry, Austin, didn't mean to interrupt you. Our last matchup in the South in Class 2A, you've got the Area 8 runner-up, Horseshoe Bend, who is 8-15. and 15. They'll be on the road this week at uh, the Area 3 winner, number 3, Wicksburg, um, who comes into the playoffs as one of the hottest teams yes. in Class 2A. Um, I think they're 18 and three. This series could start on Friday at 4:30, and then 6:30, and then the if necessary game would be on Saturday at noon. I could be wrong, but I think Wicksburg started like one and three or something. Uh, I don't I mean, know. I may be wrong. I may be wrong. I'm gonna try to look it up while you're while you're talking. Uh, it's not gonna be long. I, I, I like Wicksburg here. <laughs> uh, give, give me Wicksburg. Um, they I'll, I'll try to ad lib while you look it up, but I, no, I'm good. I don't need to look it up. I don't need to look it okay. up because I'm the same way as you. And again, 
please understand, we don't mean any disrespect towards any team that we pick for or against. But, man, I, Wicksburg, I mentioned it earlier in the podcast, they're as hot as anybody in 2A uh, the last half of the season. They've got a chance. I mean, you know, how many, time, how many teams have we said that about already in 2A? That's about four teams in the south and hadn't even yeah. got to the north yet. So. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a it's a wide open uh, classification, but yeah, we both like Wicksburg here, and I, and I, I don't want to speak for you, but I think we both like Wicksburg uh, fairly convincingly this week. Wicks, winner winner of Ayrton Tuscus Academy in Wicksburg would be a, that's a big matchup. Yes, it sure would, and I bet our guys in the Dothan area might be at that game, be at that series, whoever it is next weekend, because yeah. um, they'll be out and about this week as well. So we'll move to the north. In the north, you've got the. Uh, Area 11 runner-up, that's Winston County. They finished runner-up uh, to Lamar County this year. They are on the road this week. They are traveling to the winners of Area 16. Uh, that's the number seven-ranked Mars Hill Bible. They come in with a record of 18-7 and seven and seem to be playing well of late. Um, this series will get started on Thursday at 3 o'clock with the doubleheader. The if necessary game would be Friday at 3 o'clock as well. Jonathan's you, got Pike coming out of the South. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? I, I probably shouldn't say this, but when I went and I made all my picks on paper, I put a star by who I thought was coming out of the North and the South. And Jonathan, I'm not going to tell you we're, we're the same, but um, I've got Pike possibly pencil coming out of the South. And then Tyler chimes in. I like that. Uh, Vincent behind Aiden Poe, watch out. That kid and team are special. Saw them earlier in the year. We will get to Vincent here in just a second as we get in the north. But, Tyler, we agree with you completely. Thank you for chiming in. But let's go back here. As you've reminded me several times, Austin, I picked Mars Hill to win the state at the beginning of the year. I don't know that I – and I don't know that I feel as strongly as I did early, oh. but I do think Mars Hill Bible is set up for a deep run. How can I not pick them when I picked them to win it earlier before the season started? Give me Mars Hill to advance here, and I think they may advance fairly convincingly. Yeah, I, I like I like Mars Hill as well. I like the Panthers. Um, uh, Jackson Poe, Cam Isbell, uh, Brooks Campbell, a, a, a freshman, getting it done on the mound. He's a He's going to be a good prospect to follow for Mars Hill. Just signed then, up for the Yellowhammer State games a couple of days ago. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, that's yeah. The, Mars Hill's got got and and same thing every year. They're they're talented. Um, they're at home this week. I like them in this matchup against Winston County. Give me Mars Hill. Our second matchup in the North pits the Area Ten runner up Altamont. They'll be on the road at the Area Thirteen winner Collinsville. Um, Collinsville sits at 23 and five. They're our number six team. Um, and Air, uh, Altamont is eight and eight. Uh, our Adam McGee says he seen Campbell pitch in person. He's stout. Campbell's good. Yep. He um, is. Collinsville and, and you see Collinsville at number six, man. We, we try, I mean, yeah. to move them up multiple times, but just the one through five and two, a just kept winning and winning. Um, Collinsville, they could easily be ranked number two or number three in class two A. Just speaks to kind of how top, just top heavy class two A is. A lot of good teams. Um, yeah, Austin, Austin, we we talked about you. We we picked you. Yep, we did. We, we both picked, we both picked you, Austin. We picked Cottonwood. Um, but I I like Collinsville. Will Edmondson, um, uh, junior, who came to our North Alabama preseason All State. Really talented, and then Gavin Lang, that uh, freshman who's one of the top freshmen in the state. Collinsville winning that area that has been notorious. Dothan's been coming out of that area, winning that area. Collinsville was able to um, to sweep their way through through that area this year. I like Collinsville, and um, I, I like Collinsville to make a pretty deep run here. I, I think they're very talented, um, and uh, it'll be interesting to see. But I, I like Collinsville in this first round matchup. Yeah, and I don't want to say this about. Every I don't want to say this about every classification, man, but man, 2A, it may be there may be more quality teams in 2A than any other class. I mean, we've said this several times. You just do that up there. Uh Colby Lang says, Don't sleep on Collinsville. My Asheville boys played them twice this year. 
Wouldn't be surprised if they win it all. Man, you know, Colby, just like Austin just said, look for them to make a deep run. And I agree with both of you. I'm going to go with Collins. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm going to go with Collinsville as well. Um, you know, and you mentioned it beating Donahoe, who has, you know, who is a uh, another notoriously strong 2A program. Collinsville at 23 and 5. You've mentioned it. They've won a ton of games, you know, uh, this year, 23 and 5. We've tried to move them up, but nobody in front of them lost. So, man, I'm going to go Collinsville. Um, and, and I like them fairly easily this week, I guess you can say. I don't want to, I hate to use that word, but we both go on Collinsville. Our next matchup, our next matchup will feature the runner up from Area 15. That's Fife. The obviously Fife, that football program just churns out winners and state champions running that wing tee, I think it is. Um, Coach Benefield up there at Fife. They come in with a record. Coach Benefield in football, I apologize, but they've had some success on the baseball field as well. You know, winning breeds winning, I guess you can say. Uh, Five comes in as the 15 air 15 runner up. They come in with, you know, you know, they got multi sport players up there a hundred percent. And again, winning breeds winning. You got to learn how to win, and they know how to win at five, 18 and 11. The area 15 runner up, uh, they will be on the road this week at the area 12 winners, Locust Fork, who comes in with a record of 11 and 11. This series will get cranked up on Thursday with the doubleheader beginning at 4.30 and the if necessary game on Friday at 1 o'clock. You know, Fife finished runner-up to North Sand Mountain, and North Sand Mountain is a team that's been hot of late as well. Uh, Locust Fork, they beat Holly Pond in Area 12. Uh, Holly Pond finished as the runner-up. You know, most of the time, I guess it's an upset if you don't pick the area winner, the team that's hosting. But, man, I like Fife in this one. And, again, um, it, it, I guess you can call it an upset. I don't think it's an, I don't think it's an upset. But I think, you know, a, a non-area a, a non winner that could su- su- surprise people. We've already talked about Ayrton in two-way, a non-area winner. I think Fife is another one of those non-area winners from Area 15 that can make some noise. Give me five to, to take care of Locust Fork this week. <clears throat> Logan Hunt says, "Real towns: Jamarcus Smith and Hagen Lewis. That's that's the that's the other arm, Hagen Lewis. It's a tough duo on the mound with more arms to go with it. We agree with you, Logan. We and we talked about it. We Real towns got a shot this year, and then Jonathan comes back and says, probably the best matchup in two A. There are a lot of them this week. Yep, a lot of them, and they're going to continue to be a lot of them. Um, but like you, I'm going to go with five. Um, you know, and you talked about finishing as a runner up to North Sand Mountain. They split those first two games. North, North Sand Mountain obviously won the game three tiebreaker. So that speaks to how close those two teams were. Fife has played some really good teams all year long. The Red Devils, um, they've, they've played, uh, um, hold on, my page is loading. They've, they've played, they played North, North Jackson, North Jackson, Plainview, New Hope, um, Cedar Bluff, who, um, is a playoff team. They play Cusa Christian, um, and, and they've you know really hit their stride down the down the middle part of the season. I'm going to go with five to advance here uh, to the second round. Our next matchup is another big one in Class Two A. You have the Area 14 runner-up Lindsey Lane Christian will be on the road to the Area Nine winner Vincent. Uh, Vincent is our top-ranked team in Class Two A and have been for the majority of the season. Vincent is 22 and four. Lindsey Lane Christian is 18 and seven. Two really good teams here. Um, Lindsey Lane has been ranked at that nine or ten spot for for the most most of the season. Vincent has been one or two. This series gets started on Friday at 4:30 and 6:30, and then Game Three on Saturday at noon. Um, I'm uh, and it, it's another. This is like another matchup that you know it, it sucks that this is taking place in the first round. Um. Because both these teams are both these teams are sweet could make it to the you know, Lindsey Lane could easily make it to the Sweet Sixteen or Elite Eight or Final Four. Vincent obviously has you know one of the top resumes and are one of the favorites in two A. Um, but I'm going to go with Vincent here. Um, you know they've already our comments have already talked about it. Aiden Poe, I think he's got only five walks again this year, over 100 strikeouts. And I want to say in his first start he had like three walks. Yeah. And so he's like down the stretch, he's been 
been really good and, and has been. And then one of our underrated, we think who probably is one of the more underrated prospects in Alabama, Case and Fields, um, yes. is a yes. is a is a baller. Um, oh God, I'm forgetting the left-handed hitter for them. Out Grayson Gould, Grayson Gould, I think is how you say it. Left-handed hitter, outfielder, the, um, catch, the catcher. Yeah, yep, Camden Cobb, the, uh, Vince, fresh, the freshman arm. I saw that day. I can't remember his name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they've got pieces and more. I mean, back I mean, plenty back from last year's team. Vincent, you got to feel pretty good if you're Vincent um, about a another pr- another deep deep run in, in class two A. But they're going to be tested out of the gate this week with Lindsey Lane Christian. Will be a good matchup, but I'm going with Vincent here um, to uh, to to get a, a big series win um, in in the first round. Having covered a couple of Aiden Poe's starts over the last couple of years, I would love to play defense behind the guy because he gets it. He's on the mound. He's ready to throw the next pitch. I mean, it, he works quick, and he doesn't hardly ever get into a three-ball count. I believe you mentioned it, like his totals over the last two years, over 220 strikeouts and eight walks. Think about that. 220-plus strikeouts and eight walks in two years. Man, that's, that's impressive, uh, you know, as, as most of you are aware, you know you, you win that freebie war. A lot of times you're gonna you're, you're gonna you're gonna win games, and and because of that, and again, I agree with Austin. It's a shame this matchup happens this early, but I'm gonna go with Vincent. As I said, I went to see them in an area game, and I thought they were every bit as good as they were last year. Um, they've got a legitimate shot to make a run, but again, Lindsey Lane's gonna go down there, and you know this is probably gonna be a um, a competitive series, but I think it's just. You know, just cannot it's, – it's hard to go against Vincent um, right now, our number one team. But moving on to the next uh, playoff series in Area 2, you've got the runner-up from Area 13, Donahoe. They come in with a record of 11 and 13. Uh, they're sitting right outside of our top 10. They will be on the road at the winners of Area 10. That's Southeastern. Southeastern is 11 and 13, and they sit just outside the top 10 in our 2A rankings. This series will get started at, on Friday, um, Friday at one o'clock. Um, yeah, the series gets started Friday at one with the if necessary game on Saturday at noon. Um, I think this is an intriguing matchup of two programs um, that that are well known in two way. Uh, we talked about Donahoe earlier uh, losing that that area series to Collinsville. Um, you know, and we mentioned that Donahoe had sort of had a stranglehold on that area for the last couple of years. Um, you know, they're back in the state playoffs again, Southeastern. They beat Altamont for the area championship. This has got, this is, this is a quality series. I think this is two teams that are very similar as well, but I'm, I guess, it, again, I, I don't know if it's an upset or not, but I'm going to go with the road team here. I'm going with Donahoe to get to get this get get the job done. I fully anticipate this one possibly going three games, but I like Donahoe to win out uh, to win this series. I do too. Don- Donahoe was ranked preseason in, in class two A. Did not didn't get off to the the best start. You know, yep. the, the good start as they wanted to, but it looks like that they've really put it together down the stretch. Um, and uh, and you know it's all about getting into the playoffs, and now it's just about surviving and advancing, and you know just being being the better team, being the best of the two teams that's on the field. You don't have to worry about any of the other teams; it's just about surviving and advancing. And um, Donahoe is, and it's not like they they are very talented as well. Um, you look at guys like Hayes Farrell, Kai Kleckler, um, Blake Sewell. Um, God, what's the the sophomore? Um, Marcus Lawler, um, yeah, middle infielder. Yep. Yeah. So they, I mean, they've got some heavy, they've got some good hitters in their lineup. Um, and uh, I like, I like Donahoe here to, to go on the road and what could be a tough series, but I'm going to go, I'm going with Donahoe here. Um, another, another program where winning is in their pedigree. And I like, I like them here in this first round matchup. Our next matchup pits the Area 9 runner-up, Fayetteville. They will be on the road at the Area 14 winner, Whitesburg Christian. Fayetteville is 14-14. and 14. Um, Whitesburg Christian is 17-7 and seven and are ranked number eight in our most recent 2A poll. Whitesburg Christian 
was um, inside the top 10 for the early part of the season, kind of fell out losing an area series to Hatton, but uh, but quickly avenged that, winning their area and jumping back in and uh, to number eight in our most recent poll. Um, um, this series will get started on Thursday at five with game three on Friday at five. Um, I like Whitesburg Christian here, White's, you know, led by Luke Holbrook, who who's gotten some big hits for them down the stretch and has been a big arm for them uh, working into the upper 80s on the mound. Evan Dodd is another guy committed to Gadsden State uh, a couple weeks ago, right-hander, um, who's thrown some big innings for them. They've got other pieces as well. I know they've got that freshman that you, that you know you you were pretty impressed with going to see them earlier this spring. I liked Whitesburg Christian here um, to to p- potentially make another deep playoff run like they did last year. I agree. I'm going Whitesburg Christian as well, but I think Fayetteville's a team that you know we we have we've talked about Fayetteville multiple weeks this year when we're putting our rankings together, and that's a team that has that has played quality baseball. That's a team that. Uh, you know, they, they are, that's a, you know, that, that's a, that's a quality team. Uh, and I don't think this is going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination for Whitesburg Christian, you know, Fayetteville, um, they finished runner up to Vincent, um, in that area nine. And that says a lot there, uh, you know, swept through their way, the rest of the rest of the area series, but man, I just, you know, I think Whitesburg, you mentioned they've got some really good young talent, Andrew Summers. You know, there's a lot of – they've got a lot. And I don't want to – I don't like to call out a bunch of players because you're going to miss somebody. But, man, I just – I like Whitesburg Christian's youth. Uh, I think that's a – I think that's a program that's only going to continue to elevate itself and get better and better. Uh, I think they got – I think Vincent beat them last year in either the Elite Eight or Final Four. I can't remember. I think it was the Final Four that you were at. I was there. Yes. Um, I, it might've been the final four. Um, and, and Whitesburg Christian returns just about every piece of the puzzle from last year and, um, have added some quality depth on the mound behind Holbrook. So I'm going to go with, uh, Whitesburg Christian here to advance to the, the second week. Our next matchup, uh, Holly Pond, they come in as the area 12 runner up. They come in with a record of six and 17, uh, they will be traveling. We've already talked about this team to the area 15 winners, North Sand Mountain. North Sand Mountain comes in with a record of 19 and nine. They sit just outside of our top 10. This series will begin on Thursday at 4:30, and then the if necessary game would be Friday at five. Man, I, I tell you, I like the way Saint North Sand Mountain has been playing of late. I think they are a really hot club going into the uh, into the playoffs. Um, you know, they had some guys with some big weeks last week that you'll see in the diamond notes that will be re- released later this afternoon. I like North Sand Mountain here convincingly to advance to the second weekend of the playoffs. Me too. You you think of guys like Jackson Burgess, Nolan Moore, um, Luke Reed on the mound, some of those guys who had big weeks. Um, the kid that just moved in from Georgia moved in from Georgia last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. They've, you know, definitely, definitely and a lot of those guys have experience from last year. Um, North Sand Mountain, could, they could be a, a sneaky team to watch for in two-way. We talk about a bunch of these teams, but North Sand Mountain is, is very talented. Their record speaks for itself, 19-9. Caden Moore is his name. Yeah, I, I said yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, at home this week, I, I, I like Collie Pond pretty convincingly, and, um, and um, I like the Bison here in this first-round matchup. Our last matchup in Class 2A, you got the Area 16 runner-up, Red Bay. They'll be on the road visiting the Area 11 winner, Lamar County. Red Bay is 13-6. and six. Lamar County is 10-13. and 13. This series gets started on Friday at 4.30 and 6.30 with the Game 3 being on Saturday at 2. Um, and we had a listener on Monday's podcast say Red Bay is flying under the radar. They're a sleeper. Did more research, looked at you know their resume, and, and Red Bay is is definitely they played some really good teams. They have a good record. Um, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna take the, and you finish behind Mars Hill Bible in your area. I mean that's nothing to hang your hat hang your head on. I like Red Bay going on the road in this matchup. I think um, like he like our listener said, credit to him. I think Red Bay is is another team like North Sand Mountain who could could make some noise. Ooh. People aren't aren't making. People aren't expecting them to do so in two way, but I, I think that they could be a team to watch for. So I'm going to go Red Bay. Man, every time I hear Red Bay, I think of Van Tiffin. 
You don't even know who that is, Austin. He's a kicker. He was a kicker. That's right. At Alabama. That, yep, absolutely. Um, and man, I, I, I agree with you. I'm going Red Bay this week, and and uh, you know they're on the road simply because of an airy runner up. But man, I, I think Red Bay. I, I think that this could be a two game sweep for them. We know we'll wait and see there. Um, you know that is a team to keep an eye on. And you mentioned they're similar to North Sand Mountain. Well, if those two teams take care of business which we both think they will, we wouldn't have picked them, then that would be an interesting 2A matchup next week. Um, and uh, again, you know, Lamar County, you know, winning that uh, area 11 uh, championship over Winston County, you know, have had a great season. But I think that um, I, I think that Red Bay, I think Red Bay gets it done. And Adam says Red Bay's 15 and six. OK, we had him at 14 and six, hopefully setting the stage for North Sand Mountain in round, round two. You know what? And that's just what we just said. That could be an interesting matchup of two teams that I think are very, fairly similar. So uh, I'm on side with Red Bay with you as well. So hey, before we get in, before we get into three, a we've got over got over a thousand listeners once again. Um, come put put in the comments where you're watching from. Yeah. Yeah. See Let us know, man. We won't necessarily call you out, but. You know, uh, we want to know where you're watching from, um, you know, and we, we may break this up later. I don't know if you're going to Austin so that people can listen to the different classifications yeah. on Twitter. But we appreciate all of you hanging in with us. You know, we could go through this and just pick, 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 pick. But we want to try to give the due diligence to these matchups. And that's what Austin has has uh, has continued to, to talk to me about. Let's make sure we give these teams their due diligence. But we will move on to 3A. Again, we see some some locations coming in. We appreciate all of you following along where you, wherever you are across the state. Uh, so we'll bump to 3A here, our first 3A matchup. Uh, Austin, if you can put that 3A bracket up for us, please. Yeah, my bad. You're good. Our first 3A matchup um, is an interesting one. I think it's an interesting one straight out of the gate. You've got two teams sitting right outside of our top 10. Um, You've got Houston Academy, a notoriously strong program in 3A. You know, not as many wins this year, but that doesn't mean, again, at this time of year, records, throw them out the door. Doesn't mean a thing. Houston Academy comes in at 10 and 11. They finish runner-up in Area 3 to a quality Providence Christian team. They will be on the road at Oakman. Oakman won the Area 8 um, they won the they won area eight this year. They come in at 16 and six. This series will get started on Friday at 4 30 for the doubleheader. The if necessary game would be Saturday at 11. And let me add, we are proud to announce that both of these teams will be in our small town showdown next year, uh, the third weekend of the season at beautiful Sand Mountain Park. So we are uh, thankful to both of these teams, both of these quality teams that will be part of that. Uh, that that our first ever small town showdown next year for classes 1A through 3A teams. Man, as I said, this is an interesting, interesting um, matchup. I think these are both teams that uh, you can see, you could see one of the other winning. Um, Houston Academy is on the road at Oakman. And I think both of these teams are similar. But I went with the home team. I based it off that, off that that home team atmosphere. I'm going to go Oakman uh, to maybe surprise Oakman. Again, nothing disrespectful towards Oakman, but I don't think maybe they're a name in 3A baseball as much as Houston Academy has been. But I'm sort of going to go for a little upset here, if that's what you want to call it. I'm going to take Oakman. I don't guess it's an upset, but I'm going to go Oakman here, maybe a surprise pick. <clears throat> I'm going to go Houston Academy um, on the road. Um, you know, you, you have guys like Cam Dyer, Adam McGee, I think is his name, coming back from last year's team. Cam Dyer is a two-way player for them, big impact player. Um, um, on the road will be tough at Oakman, who's got a great record, but I, I like Houston Academy, the defending 3A state champs. Lost a good bit from last year's team, have been around the 500 mark for the Majority of the season, but they've got enough guys from last year's state championship team um, could help with that experience, could help them uh, make a little bit of a run here in Class 3A. Going to our next matchup, you have the Area 2 runner-up, Strawn, 
will be on the road visiting the Area 5 winner, Thomasville. Strawn is 12-11. and 11. Thomasville is 22-4 and four in our ranked number three in our most recent uh, Class 3A poll. The series gets started on Friday at 5 and 7.30 with the if necessary game being uh, on Saturday at 1. I'm going to go Thomasville here. I think Thomasville, um, and, and we'll talk about it, there are a few teams in Class 3A, just like 2A, a few teams in Class Class 3A that have a chance to win it. And, and Thomasville, especially the last two years, you know, I, I think of Thomasville, I think of that big big upset over Bayside Academy two yeah. years ago. Um, and then I think they made a pretty good run last year. Um, and I think that they're set up once again to to uh, to make another potential run and, and make a run for the state title in Class 3A. So, and, and I like them in this first round matchup at home. I think it sets up well for them. I'm going with Thomasville here um, to, to get a win. Um, in advance of the second round. I agree with you. I'm going Thomasville as well. They have ascended rapidly in our poll the last half of the season. You know, they have won a bunch of games, as you mentioned, 22 and four, I believe it is, ranked number three. Man, I think that this has, I think this has Thomasville written all over it. I like them convincingly this week. Um, give me Thomasville to advance, uh, to take on the winner of Oakman and Houston Academy next week in the second round. Our next matchup, man, is, you know, is is one that I think it could be interesting because Daveville's got some players. I know they've got a catcher that can really swing it, um, you know, but let's talk about Where it. Where do you know that? Where'd, What's you that? that? Where'd you get that info? Man, I've got a secret text right here. And let me just share with you. I've got a secret text. I've got video. I've got information on Dadeville. Um, six, Cooper Harden is his name. 6'1", 200 pounds. Um, has, uh, has, has been throwing of late. Struck out 16 of 18 recently through a no-hitter. Striking out 10 in a must-win game they had to have. Uh, man, I, I, I've been doing my due diligence, man. Then you got to uh, pick him. You got to pick him. <laughs> But let's let's talk about the matchup real quick. Um, it is uh, it is set to begin on Friday at four thirty. You've got the area seven runner up Dadeville, as I just talked about, twelve and seven. They're at the area four winners op op comes in with a record of seventeen and six. They're ranked number nine in our latest poll. You know everything says take op take op because you know they're ranked and I, op is a team that the last three or four weeks we've really taken notice of, and I'm gonna take op. Um, I'm going to take op because I don't want someone to release one of them rattlesnakes on us that we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. but I don't think this is just a, this is not a cakewalk um, for op, uh, you know, outside of, of who I just mentioned, Cooper Harden, you know, they've got some, uh, um, they've got some other guys, Davis McKelvey. Uh, he's a freshman utility guy. You got uh, no idea who these players are. You just reading off your phone. No, no, I do. I mean, look here, man. Look, I've got video and everything on these guys, man. I've got video. Jacob Patterson is a freshman left-handed pitcher. Uh, you know, you got to credit, you you credit your source, though. I, I can't. It's it's all undercover, man. It's all undercover. But this is this is how we try to be tied in throughout the state. Not that we're saying that we know everything because we don't. You'll probably see from our picks. But man, I, I I surprised you with my Dadeville info, didn't I? Yeah. But unfortunately, I I've, got, I've, got go I've got to go up. I've got to go up. I'm yeah. I'm going to go up. Uh, we talked about up past couple of podcasts. Up was. Started off 0-4, and, and I think they won 14 or 15 straight. Um, and those some of those losses down the stretch, you got beat 4-3 to three by Muscle Shoals, 2-1 to one in nine innings by New Brockton. And look I think – uh, Look at our comment, man. <laughs> I need to get I need to get Jonathan's number. We need to and and when he needs to give me some info because you're getting some info. I don't know where you're getting it from. So I need, <laughs> I need, I need or something. Uh, but going back, uh, New Brockton dropped the first game or Op dropped the new the first game of their area championship to New Brockton. I think New Brockton's got a pretty good arm on the mound, mid eighties arm. That uh, New Brockton was able to win that game two to one in nine innings, but Op won those those last two games by scores of ten to ten to nothing. And twenty-one to two, so they really hit. They really put it on, put them on them uh, offensively in games two and three, and then 
in a tune-up game. They they were they got to be by Enterprise, who's a seven eight team, but um, Op looks like they're returning back to form. Um, they've had strong runs over the past few years, may, maybe not in the last couple of years, but in the years prior. Um, I like Op here. They're they've been really hot down the stretch, and I, I like them to continue to to uh, to continue that trend here in cla- in the in the first round. Our next matchup, we've got the Area 6 runner-up, St. James, who will be on the road uh, traveling to the Area 1 winner, Flomaton. St. James, who we have ranked number 10, been ranked inside top, inside the top 10 um, in, in 3A for the majority of the season. They're 17-10. They'll be on the road to Flomaton, who's 15-11. This series gets started on um Check Friday. out Camden. We yep. get Camden to love. Oh, yeah. Like, like the Yellow Jackets this year. A hundred percent. But this series gets started on Friday um, at five and seven thirty, and then the if necessary game would be Saturday at one. Um, I'm going to go with St. James here, going on the road. Um, I've seen St. James multiple times, led by um, Tabor Alford, who's a one of the top uncommitted two way players in the 2025 class. He's a uh, a big right handed bat. Um, and then, uh, as a South pole in the mound, he's mid eighties. Um, uh, Jonathan, I'm, a, I'm sorry. We're going to, we're going to disagree on this matchup. Um, <laughs> we'll get together after this week and we'll, we'll get, we can, uh, we can talk about next week. Um, but I'm going to go St. James here. Um, I think that, and they, their lead off hitter, I think his name is Clint Hauser. Last name is Hauser. I think he's going to North Alabama. He's going to UNA to be a wide receiver. He's really athletic. Um, Charlie Cutler is another big time arm for them. Big right-handed pitcher, a sophomore who's mid eighties as well. Hit one over the scoreboard two days ago. Did you see that? I saw that. I saw yeah. that. So St. James has the pieces. They finished as a runner up to Prattville Christian. Who's, um, who's also ranked inside the top 10. Um, so I like St. James in this matchup to go on the road and could be a two, could be a three game series. Uh, but ultimately I see St. James, um, getting this win. This is a matchup I went back and forth on, went back and forth on. Um, you know, Jonathan, I'm sorry. I, we're gonna. I'm gonna have to side with Austin here. I'm gonna go St. James as well. Um, Austin saw them earlier. Called me. Said they are solid. They're solid. And I know uh, Flomaton is as well, winning that area one over over uh, Cottage Hill Christian. Uh, but I'm gonna side with St. James here also. Um, again, I think this is a definite three game series. Um, we'll see Flomaton. You know, somebody could win in two. But I've got to throw this out there, man. Anytime I see Flomaton. There's one person's name that always comes to mind. My college head baseball coach, Jerry Green, used to be the head coach at Flomaton and had a college teammate from uh, Flomaton named Scott Hammond. I think he was the principal there. He may still be. I'm not sure. So just had to throw that out there. Um, but moving on, we both going to take St. James there. Moving on, our next matchup, our next matchup uh, will feature – uh, the Area 5 runner-up south side of Selma. Not sure about their record. Um, it's listed at 4-4. Four and four. Not exactly sure about that. They are the Area 4 runner-up. They will be traveling to the winners of Area 2. That's XL. Uh, XL finished with a record of 16-9, and nine, and that was a team that we monitored all year that was outside of our top 10 just about all year, finished right outside of our top 10. Um, this this series will take place on Friday, beginning at four o'clock, with the if necessary game on Saturday uh, at noon. Man, I think XL really handles business here. That's a team that could really could 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 surprise some people. Um, you know, I, I think I think there's just too much XL this week. I think that they win this one, and I think they win it really. I think they win it handedly. Jonathan says. Um... Haven't seen them. Haven't seen them lately. Lost to to MA, which is uh, Montgomery Academy. Though Montgomery Academy did not make it because of them losing to ACA. I was at that game where St. James got beat by uh, Montgomery Academy, um, but ultimately um, St. James was able to 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 sneak into the playoffs. Um, but I, I I like you. I like I like XL. Um, they played some some big time teams down there in the southern part of the state. They played Sarah Land, Baldwin County, Thomasville. They've beaten Wicksburg. They've got beat four to three by St. Paul's Episcopal. Um, 
and yeah, they played UMS right. They played some of the bigger teams down in that in that mobile area, and I think that's going to better prepare them for the for the state playoffs and and especially this first round matchup. I like them pretty pretty easily here in this first round matchup. So I'm going with XL. Our next matchup, you've got the area one area one runner up Cottage Hill Christian, who will be on the road uh, traveling to the area six winner Prattville Christian. Cottage Hill Christian is eight and sixteen. Prattville Christian is nineteen and nine and um, are ranked uh, at number seven in our uh, final top top ten poll in Class 3A. Uh, they've been inside the top five all year long. Um, I like Prattville Christian here in this, this series pretty easily at home. We talked about how good we thought uh, St. James was. Prattville Christian won that series over St. James in a best of three. Um, you look at guys um, like Bryce Masters, um, who who's back healthy on the mound for them, um, and and then they've also I'm blanking on some of their their other names. Um, their catcher is a, is a solid player. Um, uh, I, I like Prattville Christian here in, in in this matchup. I think Jonathan, we're finally on the same page, man. Because Austin and I are both going to go with Prattville Christian as well. I think they handle business. Uh, I think they handle business fairly easy this weekend. Um, and you know, if them and XL both win, that sets up an interesting matchup next week. Cause again, I, like I told you, I think XL is one of those teams outside the norm, maybe that could make some noise, uh, moving forward in three, a, but give me Prattville Christian as well. Some, you of, know. Those, some of those Jack Dyfender, Luke Lawson, Connor Williams, um, their catcher, I think, is Cody Baker, left-handed hitters. They, they've got they're, – they're pretty talented. And I do want to say, man, there's thousands upon thousands of players across the state. We try to remember all of them, but, you know, it's hard right here. We can't have seven different tabs open looking at everything. So, we try to remember these names. But we, again, we're, we're trying to focus on the teams here as well. So, again, we're both going Prattville Christian, which will take us to our next uh, matchup in 3A, and that is – uh, the area four runner up, New Brockton. They come in at 17 and 11. They finished runner up to OP, a, as we've already talked about what we think of OP. New Brockton comes in, as, the, as I said, the area four runner up at 17 and 11, sitting right outside of our top 10. They are traveling to Beulah this week, who are the area seven winners with a record of 11 and 11. This series starts Friday at 4 30 with the if necessary game on Saturday at noon. Beulah lost uh, to Dadeville. Um, uh, the, they finished runner-up to Dadeville in Area 7. Um, man, this is an interesting matchup as well, uh, one that I think could probably go either way. But I like the road team in this matchup. I like New Brockton. Um, they finished runner-up to Op um, in Area 4, could – you know, if they were in any other area, they might very well win it. They didn't. But they go on the road this week, and which is going to make it tougher. Beulah is a, obviously coming off an area championship. Um, but I like New Brockton here. Um, I think they've got some some arms on the front end of that. I know they've got one. You know, one I forget his name. They've got one big-time arm at the top of that rotation. Got it right here. Yep. Um, but I, I like New Brockton because of that pitching to go on the road and get a win because what do they say? Most of the time, good pitching is going to be good hitting and give me New Brockton. <clears throat> yeah, that and, and that arm. Uh, the, New Brockton also has Peyton Green, but that, that big arm for them um, who's throwing game one is Trent Smith, a senior. Yeah. Uh, he's 5-0, and oh, has thrown 47 innings, has 72 strikeouts and a 1.04 ERA. Wow. Uh, he's, he's mid-80s. And, and last week we talked about that 2-1 to one game, that 2-1 to one win over Op. He went eight and two-thirds, four hits, no walks. Um, and 10 strikeouts. So mm -hmm. he's a he's a tough arm right out of the gate. Um, and and a, he's he's a big reason and uh, as well as, as their other players why I'm going to go New Brockton here on the road. Uh, Beulah, and I, I think this is pretty cool, you know, covering PBRT tournaments that we have at Sand Mountain Park. Beulah has a – they I, th about, I think they have a, a lot of their players play together in the travel uh, in the summers, um, I think. Uh, because we we've seen a lot of their players play in the PBRT Alabama Open over the past couple of summers, they've got some some talented players as well. But I think New Brockton is is uh, is really solid, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with them to uh, to get a win on the road in the first round. 
Our last matchup in the South, we have the Area 8 runner-up, Indian Springs, who will be on the road this week, traveling to the Area 3 winner, Providence Christian. Indian Springs is 7-6. and six. Providence Christian is 15-8. and eight. This series gets started on Friday at 3.30, with the if necessary game, game three being on Saturday at 9 a.m. Um, mm. I'm going Providence Christian here, okay. who's been – been ranked inside our top seven or eight for the majority of the season in 3A, a notorious powerhouse down in the Wiregrass area. In Class 3A, Porter Dykes, I don't know his availability on the mound, um, but he can swing it as well. They've got some other pieces, um, um, uh, does Providence Christian. Um, and I, I think uh, I, I like Providence Christian here to uh, to advance over Indian Springs. I like Providence Christian uh... – I, I like them to sweep here as well. I think that's a really good team. Um, you mentioned it, notoriously strong program. Uh, give me Providence Christian here uh, to move on to round two. I, I, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but the left-handed bat we saw at the Birmingham preseason. Andrew round. Owens. Andrew Owens, that's right, yeah. Like him, uh, swinging the bat, got some juice. Um, give me Providence Christian possibly in a sweep this week um, as they take on Indian Springs at home. So that'll wrap us up in the south. Let's take a look at the North in 3A. Uh, the first matchup we're going to talk about, you've got the Area 11 runner-up. That's Glencoe. Glencoe comes in with a record of 16 and 14. They will be on the road this week at number one, an Area 16 winner, Lauderdale County. Lauderdale County is 19 and four and have really turned it on of late. Um, this series will get started on Thursday at 4.30 with the doubleheader. And then the if necessary game, would be on Friday at 1 o'clock. Man, I like Lauderdale County here. Obviously, Lauderdale County, I've got them penciled in as a possible state championship title contender. Uh, you know, you've got Miles Edwards, uh, the left-handed over. Skyler Tucker. Skyler Tucker that have really put up some incredible numbers on the mound. Tons of strikeouts, not many walks. You, you know, you, you get good pitching and you get – you get 13 Ks and you walk one hitter over seven innings, you're gonna win. You're gonna win a lot of games. We've talked about the freebie war as well. Man, look right there. Colin Chamlin said Looney has the Tigers rolling. He's biased. Yeah, he's biased. I, I have to agree. He is, but we, we need to get Landon, we need to get Landon Jones up in here too. He texted me and said, I got he said that Lauderdale County's making a run this year. Oh, I hear you, Landon. He 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 needs to be worried about Northwest Shoals, right? So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Northwest Shoals. That Landon's a, a student manager over there for their baseball team. Man, I, I listen. I like I like Lauderdale County. Man, I that that's again those two those front line arms they've got. Uh, you know, they don't give away freebies. They punch out a bunch of guys that you don't have to defend. Uh, a ground ball or a fly ball when you punch them out. I like Lauderdale County to win this, and I like them to continue for a couple weeks. <clears throat> One, yeah, one hundred percent. Especially at this this the, the class three A level, if you've got two or three just big time arms, so you can roll out, and they have a chance to to shut down opposing lineups. Um, was that Landon? No, but it's somebody. I'm not going to reveal his identity. Okay, but this person texted me and said, "Just now watching your podcast." You guys have it right. Thompson and T County did not play a third game. So if necessary, they will play Saturday. Gotcha. Okay. Well, never reveal my source. Man, I've got sources like crazy, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Lauderdale County, those you got those two arms, big uh Miles Edwards and Skylar Tucker at the top of that rotation. Um, both of those guys can swing it as well, and they've got other other players as well um in their lineup. I like Lauderdale County and, and a big reason, you know, we we moved them to number one in our class three A poll. There are some other good teams at the top in class three A, but we think Lauderdale County has a really good chance of making another deep run um here in class three A this spring. So I'm going we're both going with Lauderdale County. Our next matchup, you got the area 10 runner up, Walter Welburn. Walter Welburn, who'll be on the road traveling to the area 13 winner Plainview. Walter Welburn is seven and seventeen. Plainview is nineteen and seven. This series has, I think it's, it has been changed. Yeah, uh, they moved this series up to Thursday. Yep. Um, we'll get started at four, and with the game three being on Friday at four. Um, 
I'm going to go with Plainview here. Um, Plainview has been a, I guess you can call it an under the radar team. They they have a 19 and seven record. They've, you know, rolled through their area. I saw Walter Welburn earlier um, this this spring at Chocolaco Park. They're pretty big and physical, um, but ultimately I think Plainview is is a, a solid team. Um, and uh, you know they, they're they're another team who maybe not many people are talking about, but they've they're they're very talented. They've got a chance to make a, a run here in Class Three A, and, and I like it getting started here with a series win over Walter Welburn. I agree with you, Plainview, and you know, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, um, you know, that's a team that maybe we haven't given enough credit to. I mean, uh, you know, they obviously beat Sylvania. Sylvania finished runner up. Um, but I do like Plainview here, um, and that's another school where winning is in their blood. Um, that's in their DNA, if you want to say that. But, again, Plainview is uh, – I, I like them to win and advance. Um, looking at our next matchup, you've got uh, the Area 15 runner-up, Colbert Heights, which is – we had a difficult time, or you had – a difficult time finding the runner up in that area. We, we really used all of our resources to find out that it finally was Colbert camp, Colbert Heights. All, all three of those teams finished. There's a three team area. They all finished two and two. So we, That's right. we yep. hit the Facebook DMS. <laughs> yeah. We had them going Saturday night. So 15 runner up Colbert Heights coming with a record of nine and 19. They are at area 12 runners, Susan Moore, Susan Moore comes in at 14 and seven. This series will get started on Friday at 4.30. The, if necessary, game will be Saturday at noon. Man, I, I think this is this has Susan Moore written all over it, uh, winning that area 12, um, you know, edging out Su- – uh, yeah, excuse me, edging out um, J.B. Pennington. I like Susan Moore here. Um, I, you know, I, I think this – I just, you know, not to go on and on and on, but I, I like Susan Moore here. I think they're just maybe too talented here for Colbert Heights. Give me Susan, Susan Moore to advance to round two. Susan Moore's got a uh, really good left-handed arm, a junior who we've, we've seen in the summer, uh, Corbin Hamrick, who's a mid-80s left-handed arm um, who uh, I'm sure is at the top of that rotation. Um, and, you know, at – him and and just their their track record of success 14 and 7 winners of their area that home field advantage I'm going with Susan Moore as well in this matchup. Our next matchup, you've got the area 14 runner up Vinemont will be on the road traveling to the area 9 winner Gordo. Vinemont is 18 and 5. Gordo is 18 and 6 and our number 5 in our uh, most recent 3A poll. They've made a steady climb over the past couple of weeks. Um, this series gets started on Friday at 4 and 6.30. Game three will be on Saturday at 1 p.m. Um, give me the green wave in this matchup at home. Um, another another team that winning is in their blood, winning is in their DNA and their pedigree. Um, um, will Whitley, Landon Fike, both of those guys just signed to, to go play baseball at uh, at Bevel. Will Whit, uh Gordo obviously finished as the runner-up last year in Class 3 at Houston Academy. Got to see them. They've got a good majority of those players back this year, and I like Gordo to potentially make another deep run here in Class 3A. But Vimon has had success as well, 18-5, and five, finishing as a runner-up to Decatur Heritage. Um, I just like Gordo and the way it sets up for them with how much they have coming back. They know how to win late in the playoffs, and I think they have another a chance to make another run here in Class 3A. Yeah, you know, I have to agree with you. I'm going with the Green Wave as well. And let me put in just a little another little excerpt here. That's another team that will be in our small town showdown next year. The Green Wave. They've already uh, they're they're going to be in that. Again, you you look at two teams. Both of them have impressive records coming in at 18 and five and 18 and six. Vinemont actually was. You mentioned that they were in that um, in that area with Decatur Heritage. Uh, Decatur Heritage beat them. You know pretty handedly in those two games. Um, and, you know, I just, uh, you know, I, I think, again, uh, Von Mont's had an impressive, impressive year. This is maybe another one, another series that, you know, maybe it's a shame this is happening in the first round with two teams with such impressive records, but it's hard to go against the green wave, especially at home. 
that had, they have had some raucous atmospheres there in years past. And I'm sure this week uh, will be more of the same. So give me the, the green wave to roll into the next weekend. So we'll both take Gordo there. Moving on to our next series, you've got area th 13 runner up Sylvania. Sylvania comes in with a record of nine and 15. They are traveling to number four, Piedmont. Uh, Piedmont is 20 and 10. They won area 10 over Walter Welburn. We have them, as I mentioned, we have them ranked number four. They've been as high. I believe we had them at one this year, maybe. I know they've been top two. three or four. I think because Decatur Heritage has been number one. Else, yeah, outside. that's right. And what we've had Piedmont in the top three or four all year long, without a doubt. Um, and we have both seen Piedmont. Um, we've talked about teams with winning in their DNA. Uh, it's this, mm -hmm. that's what Piedmont is about. They expect to win. You know, I saw them play Russellville uh, earlier this year. You saw them over at Chocolaco playing Hewitt. Yeah, you saw them play Hewitt. And I guess I have to go ahead and mention Piedmont's going to be in our small town showdown is next year. So, man, that thing is shaping up to be a quality event with some quality smaller schools. Man, you really like Piedmont here. The Bulldogs, they know how to win. Um, you know, that again, that's a town that supports athletics at their school. Uh, you know, you, you've you got McLean Mohan. You've got the Holmesley kid, the left-handed arm. Brody. Brody, Brody Holmesley. Uh, you've got the Austin brothers. Um, you know, and, and remember, remember the name Cole Austin. Remember Cole Austin. I can't wait yes. to come back to this podcast in four years and he's committed to – whatever SEC school. Yeah. He's a stud. Yeah. The, they, again, that's, that is a, that is a, that is a tough, tough baseball team. And I, I, I think Piedmont rolls easily this week. Um, I, I think they do. Um, I, again, that sets up, you know, I hate to look forward, hate to look ahead, but look what could be setting up in, in week two of the playoffs. If, Piedmont Ooh. is fortunate enough to win. Yes. But give me Piedmont. And and go ahead and throw that comment up from Jonathan, please. Jonathan, yes, we would love to get them in that. It's and it's more, it's not a game. It's a it's a it's a two-day event at, at Sand Mountain Park where every team will get a single game on Friday. It's it's Friday, March the 28th, and Saturday, March the 1st, obviously of 2025. All teams will get a single game on Friday and a doubleheader on Saturday. So we need to connect so we can get in touch with the coaches and administration turf, at Prattville Christian. Turf fields, it's a it's a good it's gonna be yeah. a fun, it's gonna be a cool event. Yeah, it is. Sorry, Austin, go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm going Piedmont as well. The Bulldogs, like we've been saying, they're they're another team who uh who's got a chance and, and they've they've have a track record of making deep runs, making it to the state finals, winning the state finals. Um Piedmont once again has a chance this year. We'll see how it shapes out with that. You know, if you know if they're able to win this, I mean, the, the road doesn't get easier for them. But we've seen them be able to to win win big playoff matchups, and uh, I like I like this one. Um, I like Piedmont to get the, to get this win. Um, our next next matchup. Look at our Twitter DM we just got. I know. <laughs> our next. Uh, um, Next matchup, we've got the uh, Area 9 runner-up, Fayette County. They'll be on the road to the 14-winner, Decatur Heritage. Fayette County um, is 21-9. and nine. They finished as the runner-up behind Gordo. Um, uh, Decatur Heritage is the obviously their area winners. They're 21-7 and seven and um, ranked number two in our um, cl uh, last Class 3A poll, like I mentioned, Fayette County finishing as a run-up to Gordo. Mm. Gordo and Fayette County, they split the first two games. Uh, and then Gordo was able to win that that deciding deciding game three. So this is not going to be an, uh, just an easy matchup for Decatur Heritage right out of the chute. Uh, Decatur Heritage, led by Bo Mitchell, um, leadoff hitter, um, big arm for them, mid, mid to upper 80s. Reddy Wilson is another guy, um, an, an Auburn recruit, a junior, big right-hander. Hits in the middle of the order as well. Paxton Tarver, another junior who's got a really strong arm, could swing it for them as well. Um, I'm going to go to Cater Heritage. Just those three arms and and how it could how it could line up for them. Just their their line of arms that they have. Um, but it, I mean, Fayette County 
they've shown that they can play with the big dogs. Um, and they're, I mean, they're, it's going to be a tough matchup for them right out of the gate. Whoever, whatever team wins this is going to earn it. Um, but ultimately, I'm going to go to Cater Heritage. Just, just those arms that they have, um, give me to give me the um, to Cater Heritage. This oh. is going to be easy. You've already mentioned it. I mean, you know, if you're the number one ranked or number two ranked team, area winner, you go into a first round playoff series. A lot of times, you know, a lot of times you can get a cupcake. Decatur Heritage is not getting a cupcake whatsoever here. This is a really, really interesting first round matchup. I'm telling you, Fayette County is a quality, quality team. But there's the but, <laughs> but it's you, you, it's hard to go against those that the depth of those arms. You mentioned yeah. it um, I, again. I, be careful if you're Decatur Heritage. I mean, this is not something where you just look ahead and oh well, if we win this, we're probably going to play Piedmont in round two. Well, you've got to win this before you get to Piedmont. And you mentioned it earlier. You know, when you're these area, or excuse me, these playoff series. You just have to be better than one team on that day or over two over a two-day period. And Fayette County is going to give Decatur Heritage all they want, but I'm going to go with Decatur Heritage. We've seen them several times. They played the they played some big schools. They played in our North Alabama showdown. We like Decatur Heritage, but I'm just saying be careful. Don't look ahead. They, don't look ahead because Fayette County is a quality team. Moving forward, our next matchup in the North will pit the runner-up of Area 12. That's J.B. Pennington. J.B. Pennington will be on the road at the Area 15 winners, Colbert County. Colbert County comes in with a record of 13 and 14. This series will get started on Friday at 4.30, and the if necessary game would be Saturday at 1 o'clock. Man, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, these are, you know, J.B. Pennington. You know, they finished runner-up to Susan Moore. Um, you know, Colbert County won area 15 over Colbert Heights. We, we had to try to find out, you know, who was the runner up and all. We've already talked about that, man. I'm going with the home team here. Um, I'm going to go with that home team, uh, to, to hold serve and win and advance to round two. Yeah, me too. I'm going Colbert County. Um, you know, they've, they've beaten Hatton two games who, although Hatton didn't make the playoffs, Hatton was inside our top 10 for the majority of the season. Um, you know, they they played Madison County close, who's got a great record in 4A. They've beaten Red Bay. They beat, uh, played Lindsey Lane Christian close. They played Mars Hill, Dessler. Um, they played some of the better 3, 2A to, to 4A, 5A schools up in the north part of the state. And uh, and that, that track record of success, playing those big bigger schools, getting ready for the playoffs, that's a big reason why I'm going to go with Colbert County as well. Our next matchup, we've got the Area 16 runner-up, Elkmont. Um, we'll be on the road traveling to the area 11 winner, Westbrook Christian. Elkmont is 12 and 15. Westbrook Christian is 16 and 8. This series, this series gets started on Thursday, starting at 4:30 and then 6:30 with the if necessary game three being on Friday at 3 p.m. Give me Westbrook Christian. Um, big, you know, they Westbrook Christian has been inside the top 10 for the majority of the season. I think they fell out and then now they're back in playing really well. I think they were 12 and nine at one point. They've won four in a row. Uh seem to be clicking on all cylinders here heading here heading into the playoffs. Um they've you know a few years ago they won the state championship. Did they win the state champ when the when the Duttons were there? I know I remember they played GW long. I can't remember if they won it or not. I want um, to say yes, but I'm not sure. I'm not I sure. So, I can't remember. I'm sure some, uh, somebody can let us know. Some, yeah. Somebody from over there. <clears throat> uh, but they, they've been there. Uh, they have that another team who, who has a chance this year in, in 3A. Um, I'm going to go with Westbrook Christian here uh, to to get a to, to advance to the second round in 3A. I'm going with Westbrook Christian as well. I like they're playing very well of late. You mentioned it. And I guess I have to add again, here's another team that's in our small town showdown next year. So as you can see, man, we are putting together a great list of quality small school teams. Looking forward to that next year. But right now we've got the state playoffs to worry about. But I like Westbrook Christian as well. And Austin, I've got some more inside intel. You're going to be you're going to wonder where I got this from. Keep an eye on Braden Key. 
for Westbrook Christian, a quality arm that has really taken an uptick of late. He's been a key for them. I shouldn't. That, that's that's a pun. That's a, yeah. a call on words. But uh, yeah, that's another arm to add to Westbrook Christian's uh, already strong repertoire. So uh, I'm gonna go uh, Westbrook Christian to finish us, to finish us up in three A as well. Two hours in, we're halfway done. Oh my goodness! People are gonna think we are crazy. They okay. There's our answer. Sammy was a Sam. I guess was that Sammy because Sammy was he was out his junior or senior year, couldn't throw, but they won it in 2021. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they did win it. Thought they did. All right. So we've got three more classifications to go. We'll try to get through this as quick as we can, but also giving due diligence to the teams and matchups that we're talking about. So taking a look at Class 4A. Um, our first matchup in 4A, Geneva. Geneva's the Area 3 runner-up. They're coming with a record of 6-12. and 12. They will be traveling to the Area 8 winner, winners, Munford. Munford comes in with an 18-7 and seven record. I believe they were ranked for a couple weeks this year with us. They finished up ranked, or they finished up right outside the top 10 with others to keep an eye on. This series will get started on Friday at 4 o'clock with the if necessary game on Saturday at noon. Man, I think this one is all Munford. Uh, Munford is a team that that could that could su surprise some people uh, in 4A. I really believe that. Um, I'm going to take Munford. I'm going to take them fairly easily in this first round matchup. <clears throat> Yeah, you look at Mun Munford's resume. They played Oxford. Um, they've beaten Springville, who is number seven in five A. Um, they've, you know, they've beaten uh, Appalachian, number two in one A. Um, they've you know, played played a bunch of teams. They played Arab, um, some really quality teams down the stretch, in hopes to prepare them for the playoffs. And I remember last year they had a really good record as well, kind of similar to this year. Um, I think they won one or two series last year, and um, I like them at, at home this week, getting getting off on the right foot in the playoffs in this first round matchup. I'm going to go with Munford as well um, to advance to the second round, um, where they will match up with this uh, the next matchup. The area two runner up, T.R. Miller, will be on the road traveling to area five, the area five winner, Bibb County. T.R. Miller is 12 and 15. Bibb County is 26 and two, and are ranked number one. In our class, in our last class, four, 26 and three, 26 and three. Who they get beat? They got beat Shelby, County, Shelby County beat them this week. And man, uh, as I'm talking, as I'm talking, I get a text and it says Matthew Cash of Bibb County, best offensive player I've seen in, seen in at least four years. He's a stud. Yes. He is a stud. Um, yeah, Bibb County, 26 and three. They've been ranked number one in our poll in Class 4A since if, since the early part of the season. They've held that number one ranking and ride it into the playoffs. This series gets started on Friday at 4.30 and then Game 2 at 7. And the if necessary game would be at 3 at 1 o'clock. Give me Bibb County, the Choctaws, rolling into the playoffs. You, you've already said it, uh, Matthew Cash, uh, one of the top left-handed bats in the state. Um, sign with Jacksonville State. He's a he's a gamer, um, and it's and it's it's not just them two. Bodie Gideon's is another guy. Daniel Stringfellow on the mound has thrown some big innings for them here in the past over the past couple of years. I went and watched their playoff uh, matchup last year against Bayside Academy. Uh, Matthew Cash also throws for them as well. Um, and then, um, but I, I, I like Bibb County here pretty pretty easily to to move on. They've their, tr their record speaks for itself, and they're not just playing a cupcake schedule. They played some really good teams over there in the Tuscaloosa Tuscaloosa area. Um, give me Bibb County here um, to, uh, to to roll to the second round. I agree with you. Again, no disrespect towards, towards T.R. Miller, but there's no need in me restating the obvious things that you just talked about. You know, Bibb County, their, their, their body of work this year has been impressive. They've been there. They've been there for the last three or four years. Um, you know, with an impressive regular season and then playoff runs. I really like Bibb County to advance. And, you know, I, I think Bibb County is – I think their path, their path could – is a pretty good path for them. I mean, there's more, there's more, nothing. More favorable. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and again, I, I, I sort of stumble with my words there because, again, they – I mean, they're not guaranteed to win this week. But I think they've got a favorable – 
favorable path to, to advance a couple weeks. And that, you know, that, that elite eight matchup. Yeah, that's where I'm looking at. That's exactly where it was looking at. But moving on uh, to the next 4A matchup, uh, you've got Montevallo. They come in as the Area 7 runner-up. They currently sit at 9 and 16. They will be on the road at the winners of Area 4, Trinity Presbyterian. The Wildcats are spent a, a, a large part of the season ranked. They currently sit right outside of our top 10 in receiving votes. They're at 20 and 10. This series will get started on Friday at 1 o'clock, and then the if necessary game would be Saturday at noon. Man, you know, we've been to Trinity uh, the last couple of years for playoff matches and – or not matches, <laughs> for playoff matchups. Excuse me, we're not playing tennis. Um, playoff matchups. You're right, Jonathan. Coach Whittle, Coach Whittle. came back this year um, and is the uh, – got them, as you said, got them rolling. Yep, came back this year. Coach Whittle's been around forever um, and has always run a classy program. Um, he's got them rolling, and I think they roll this week as well. Um, I think they roll pretty easily. Um, you know, we'll have to wait and see that. But back to that atmosphere at Trinity Presbyterian, That's a, they let the students out. You know, it's at 1 o'clock. They don't have lights. So let the students out. They get down there, and it's a pretty raucous environment. And I will say this. Every time we go to Trinity Presbyterian, those people really take care of us. So we appreciate mm -hmm. it. And uh, look for Trinity to roll into round two. Yeah, uh, I, I like Trinity as well, and and it always seems like it, it just to me Trinity kind of in the middle part of the season they're playing really good teams may not be winning those games because they're playing some some strong teams. They're around five a they're around five hundred for the middle part of the season, and then you get into area play they sweep those series and and they get into the playoffs riding a hot streak and that and that's what the Wildcats seem to be doing here at twenty and ten. My man Brady Rascal, I'm about to about to talk about him. Uh, yeah, Brady Rascal, a, a big piece for the Wildcats. Cats are hot, and he's he's probably right. Um, Fleming Hall, another player for them, going to Auburn, or, or number two player in the 2025 class, can swing it. Uh, Walker McClinton, another outfield right-handed pitcher, a senior for them. Uh, mentioned Brady Rascal, Ross Sanders is a catcher for them. Xavier Bosswell, Brady Bennett, Cooper Bernier. Um, a host of those guys. They've they've got the, some some quality pieces, and I look for them to uh, like you to advance to the second round here over Montevallo um, here in, in Class Four A. Our next matchup, you've got the Area Six runner up, um, Northside. They will be on the road going down to the Mobile area to face off against Bayside Academy, who uh, won Area One. Um, Northside sits at 13 and 12 coming into the playoffs while Bayside Academy is 19 and six. Um, this series gets started on Friday at four and six 30. And then the game three, if necessary, would be on Saturday at one. Give me Bayside Academy here. Um, um, it, it, it's hard to match up with those, those big arms that they have on the mound. Um, starting it off, I think Carson Jordan has been throwing game one for them. You saw him up up to 92 at our South Alabama showdown, big, big right-hander hits in the middle of their order as well. He's headed to Louisiana Monroe right behind him is Teak Broadhead, another physical right-hander um, up to 93 um, who's headed to Southern Miss. So that's two, um, two division one commitments or signees who are in the low nineties with their fastballs. Um, if they're in the zone, they're, they're pretty, pretty close to unhittable. You got to like your chances going, um, you know, with with them games one and two, and then offensively, um, Gatlin Pitts, Cole Dean have have really led the way. Um, two Tate, more, two more Division one recruits. Yeah, Noah Kane, a sophomore, Tate Moore. They've got the pieces, and they have over the past few years. Um, Coach Limbaugh does a great job down there uh, for the Admirals, and and they've they really hit their stride down the stretch. They won the area championship against Orange Beach. Um, and they they beat Gulf Shores last week in a pretty cool matchup playing. I think it was at the Blue Wahoo Stadium um, where it was Joyner versus, I think, Connor Gear in a pretty good pitching matchup. Bayside Academy was able to win that series, win that game. So they seem to be playing their best baseball going into the playoffs, and that's what you want. Um, so I'm going to go with Bayside Academy. I am too. I'm going Bayside Academy. I, 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 again, that's a team that can win the whole thing. Um, those frontline arms. And again, they've got position players to match as well. Uh, they can bang it around the park. They can pitch it. Um, you know, maybe not. At, maybe not at their park. 
Uh, you're right. Is it based probably, on Academy of the Big Yard? Yeah. They probably enjoy going on the road and playing. Their hitters do. Hey, now I'd love to pitch in that park. Yeah. <laughs> I'd yeah. love the pitch there, but I wouldn't want to be a hitter at Bayside because your home run numbers are not going to be what they might be at a normal field, I guess you say. It's a deep park. So uh, I like Bayside there. Again, Northside, I think they can make it competitive, finish runner up to American Christian um, in area – what was that, area six? Yes. Um, but I do like Bayside. I think there's just too much talent there uh, for Bayside. Our next matchup um, – is the Area 5 runner-up, Hale County. They come in with a record of 8 and 16. Uh, they're, again, they're the runner-ups in Area 5. They are on the road at uh, at Satsuma. The Gators won Area 2. They're the winners there. They come in with a record of 19 and 7. Maybe a little under the, uh, under the radar, uh, the Gators are. Uh, this series starts Friday at 4 o'clock. Again, they're at 19 and seven. The if necessary game would be Saturday at noon. Man, I think that this one has Satsuma written all over it. Um, again, they've quietly put together a really impressive season. Um, and I, I like I like them to move on. Um, I, I think that they may, I think this one, this one could be a this one could be a two-game series. I I, I think that that's that's how this plays out. Um, give me the Gators to advance. Yeah, I'm going to go with Satsuma, but I, I I don't I don't know if it's as convincingly as you may say it. Um, uh, yes, mm-hmm. Satsuma has a great a really good record, but Hell County finished as a runner up, obviously to to Bibb County. Um, they've uh, um, had a strong season as well. Um, they've you know beaten Phil Campbell. They've They've played Oxford, Alexandria, Fayette County, Tuscaloosa Academy. Now they may not have won those games, but they've played. They've played the level of competition um, that won't surprise them here in the playoffs in Class 4A. You look at Satsuma um, beating some quality teams as well. But I like you. I'm going to go with uh, Satsuma, especially at home here. I like the spot. I'm going to go with the Gators here, like you, to advance to the second round, and that leads us to possibly one of the biggest matchups, possibly in the whole. Uh, first round in, in class 6A through 1A, one that we uh, should be at in the Tuscaloosa area this, this Friday. Um, and that is the Area 1 runner-up, Orange Beach. They will be traveling on the road to the Area 6 winner, American Christian. This is a top-five matchup. I think it's, it is the only top-five matchup in the 6A through 1A first round. Um, like I mentioned, this series gets started on Friday at 5 and then at 7. And then, the, and if necessary, Game 3 would be on Saturday at one and could not going to say I expect it to go to Saturday, but would definitely not be surprised if it goes to Saturday, that game three, because these are two really, really good teams. Orange beach uh, comes in with a 29 and eight record, a really strong, strong, uh, strong season so far for the, for the Makos coach Hoyle has done a great job down there. They've just continued to make leaps and bounds year after year, a newer school down in the orange beach area. Um, they facilities too, man. Woo. No doubt. Um, uh, but and the music, the music. No doubt. That's <laughs> they. They got everything down there. I, I I love going to Orange Beach and watching a game. Um, and uh, the twenty nine and eight record speaks for itself. They played some of the best teams down in the in the southern part of the state. Um, they've beaten Corner. They've beaten a bunch of other teams. They've uh, beaten Gulf Shores in that that pretty neat little matchup in our South Alabama showdown. Um, um, they've, they've got pieces, Rylan Gober, Trip Carter, um, Boyd, their catcher. Um, they've, they've, they're very talented. Will Watts on the mound. And then looking at American Christian, a little bit of a different story for American Christian compared to Orange Beach. Um, American Christian comes in with an 18 and 15 record, but do not let that record fool you. They have played tons of top, top, tons of Birmingham teams, class 7A, class 6A teams. They recently just beat Oxford, the number two team in Class 6A. They've beaten Spain Park, um, American Christian, led by um, the top uncommitted 2025 prospect in the state, Eric Hines, a talented multi-sport um, athlete, um, is a big power threat whenever he steps in the box. Bubba Lester is another big piece for them. Um, Jalen Crocker is a 20, talented 2026 hitting in the three-hole for them. I know he's throwing some – some important games for them as well on the mound. So they they definitely have the the quality of pieces to match up 
against Orange Beach. Um, I've been high on Orange Beach. I've been high. I've been high on Orange Beach. I've been high on American Christian all year long. I'm going to go with American Christian in this matchup. I um, think it's going to be a great series. A big reason why we're going to be there um, is just the high level. It should be a great environment. Um, excited to get to Tuscaloosa and check this one out on Friday. Um, one of the biggest, the biggest series, we would say, in, in the playoffs here in the first round. Give me American Christian ever so slightly by a thin margin. Would not be surprised if Orange Beach wins this one, but I'm going to go with American Christian with that home field advantage. I'm going to agree with you. Um, and, and I'll be perfectly honest. You know, you've told me all year long, American Christian, American Christian, American Christian. And <laughs> early in the season, you know, I, I knew they were good, but as you talk about how talented their roster is and don't get caught up in their record, I, I, I paid more and more attention to American Christian. And you mentioned it, you know, they've played the Oxfords, they've played in the Spain parks and the Oak mountains, and they've played all those teams. And we talk about it, getting prepared for the air, for the state playoffs. And little did they know with all of those games that they played here, they are facing a quality, a quality opponent, in round one. I mean, you know, this is, it, it's a shame. And I hate to say that, you know, uh, it's a shame that this one's happening in the first round. I mean, it's going to happen eventually, but first round, man, this is, I mean, this is as big as it gets in the state. Um, I think this one's going three games, man. I mean, I do. I mean, if it, if it's over in two, I'll be a little bit surprised. Um, Cause these are two teams that could, that are final four worthy and even, you know, state championship worthy. I mean, you you see by how we've ranked them, especially the back half of the year. But man, I just you, you've you've uh, you you've grown on me. You know, on your love. I don't want to use that, but how, what you feel about American Christian? I just think it's it's a it's too talented of a team. I'm going to go with American Christian in three games. Um, I think this is going to be tightly contested. I don't anticipate any of the three games getting out of hand or two games, whatever. And again, we're making plans to be there. We're still, we're still getting our schedule finalized on where we're going to be, but this is one where this is the, this is the game that we want to be at. Right? And I, I wouldn't be afraid to say whoever wins this matchup has a, a pretty favorable path to make it to the, to the final four. Yep. Yep. Not any, e not an easy one, but it's a pretty favorable, but it's not easy, but I agree. It, big matchup. Awesome. Yep. Hey, can you pre preview the next one? I got signed out of my Google account. I got to sign mm -hmm. back in. Can you yeah. preview the next one? Yeah. Uh, next matchup we've got is the Area 4 runner-up Montgomery Catholic. <clears throat> they will be on the road traveling to the Area 7 winner, um, traveling to Oak Grove. Montgomery Catholic is 9-14. and 14. Oak Grove is 18-10. and 10. Um, uh, We've got a – Catholic has some – Catholic has some very young arms, though they are very strong and can give trouble to anyone. Ethan Kelly comments, don't sleep on Oak Grove. They have a lot of pitching and have played some very tough teams on their schedule and have a bright future for some youngsters coming up. I agree with Ethan. Uh, at the top of that rotation, Nathan Winholtz. Apparently he's been up to 91, 92 on the mound, headed to CAC. Um, and here, here come the – and that's, uh, you know, people backing Oak Grove. That's a big reason we've uh, we've got them – uh, we snuck them in. They're, they're number 10 in our most recent Clats 4A poll. Uh, we were really impressed by their body of work, especially down the down the stretch at the end of the season. Um, they've beaten some really good teams. Um, Montgomery Catholic um, finishing as a runner-up to Trinity Presbyterian. Um, I'm going with Oak Grove here. Um, I, I, you know, the people in the comments have, you know, really backed up, you know, Oak Grove and, and we were very high on Oak Grove going into this podcast as well. And um, I'm going to go with them led by a, a bunch of, bunch of different, different guys. Jay Fuller, like Colby Lang says, um, Nathan Winholtz, who we've talked about, um, some younger kids as well. I'm going with Oak Grove here to, uh, to advance to the, to the next round. I am too. I mean, and, and again, we're not, you know, we, we went through and made our picks last night. And I think Austin's the only one that changed one today. <laughs> but we we did make our picks last night before we, you know, while we were prepping for this. And we both picked Oak Grove. And for the reasons that you talk about, we do like their frontline arms. Um, you know, that's a team. Again, they're 18 and 10. Austin mentioned they're on the back end of our rankings. Um, 
you know, I, I, we like Oak Grove, um, and, 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 and we, we think that's a team that, that can that move to the second round, move on to the second round, and that's why we both picked them. So give us both. Um, both of us will take Oak Grove there. Our final matchup, uh, our final matchup in the South in 4A, you've got the Area 8 runner-up, Hanley. I believe they're the Bulldogs. Hanley comes in with a record of 11 and 7. They'll be traveling to the winners of Area 3. That's the Andalusia, and I'm almost certain they're the Bulldogs. I could mm -hmm. be wrong. If I am for on Hanley or Andalusia, please let me know. Andalusia. Go, sorry. Going back to Oak Grove, I was thinking they beat somebody really good. They beat Sardis. That's right. They sure did. We were talking about that. Yeah, and we're really high on Sardis. Um, that's right. And Oak Grove, yeah, I mean, they're a team to be reckoned with, without a doubt. Uh, Andalusia comes in at 13-10. This series begins on Friday at 4.30 with the If Necessary game on Saturday at, at 11. Man, we have been watching Andalusia and uh, – Last couple of weeks, they've had a couple of big wins. Um, they they may be, I don't want to say turn their season around, but they may be peaking at the right time right now. Um, Andalusia, as they welcome Hanley in for the first round of the playoffs, uh, that's why we you know we've got them right outside of our top ten. I'm going to go Andalusia, um, and I have to I have to throw this out there, man. Anytime I hear the name Andalusia. I think a big shot Bob, that would be Robert Ori. You ever heard of all Robert Ori? Austin? You are speaking a different language to me. Is there anyone out there that knows who Big Shot Bob is? Obviously, it's Robert Ori. Who knows who Robert Ori is? All right, Austin, I'll turn I'll it get, over. Yeah, to you. I'm, I'm going. I'm going Andalusia here as well, Parker. Parker Adams is one of the, I think, one of the top uncommitted seniors down in the Wiregrass area for them. A, a talented outfielder. I think he's got four home runs on the on the year. Really good athlete. Um, has a lot of tools. He's a big piece in the middle of that order for them. Um, and and not just him, but Andalusia, just their body of work have have really played well down the stretch. I'm going to go with Andalusia here, like you, to advance to the to the second round um, here in our last matchup in the South. Don't think anybody haven't gotten any comments on Big Bob. Well, so. they're going to be they're, they're going to have to be older than probably forty years old. So, yeah, yeah. I, I can't well, believe no one, no one has mentioned Robert Ory, man. I bet he's got like I think he's got like seven NBA championship rings. So, right. oh well, oh well. Since we Moving got off, on. yeah, go ahead. You mean start us off in the north, or and I, I can do it. Okay. Um, our first matchup in the North, um, uh, we've got Hant, the uh, Area 11 runner-up, Hansful. Um, they'll be on the road traveling to the Area 16 winner, um, and that is Brooks. Hansful is 12 and 18. Uh, oh, here we go. Jason. Here we, here we go. Robert Ory from Andalusia, Alabama. That's right. Um, Hansel will be on the road traveling to Brooks. Hansel, like I mentioned, is 12 and 8. Brooks is 11 and 11. This series gets started on Thursday at 4, game 2 at 6, and then the if necessary, game 3 would be on Friday at 5 o'clock. Um, there you go. Here they go. Maybe, maybe a little delay. Yeah. Um, and it's Robert, it's it's H O O R Y. <laughs> it's pronounced Ori, but there's an H and an O in front. <laughs> Um, going back to this matchup, I would like to pick Brooks, but, but, but there, remember there's a, there's a big, remember last year, I've, I've, I don't want to oh, say, yes. I've been, oh, I don't yes. want to say I've been given orders not to pick, to, to not pick Brooks, but I've been strongly discouraged <laughs> to pick Brooks, but I'm going to, I'm going to have to pick Brooks here, at least for this, this first oh. round, I'm, uh, I'm going to go Brooks. So um, if if they lose, yeah, you are in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I, I automatically lose the whole the whole yeah. Um, Brooks led by Christian Chatterton and Seth Walton on the mound. Uh, Chatterton, you know, obviously one of the top pitchers in the state. Mid nineties arm can really pitch. Tough tough matchup out of the gate for Hansful having to face him, and then Seth Walton behind him, who's headed to Calhoun. Um, and, and, you know, the, the lines are also led by Andrew Edwards and 
uh, a bunch of other guys for for the Lions. So I'm going to go with Brooks here. Um, I hope our listener doesn't doesn't come after me. Uh, ho- hopefully the hopefully the Lions wins to to save my uh, to to save myself. So I'm going to go with Brooks. Well, we both got that text last week reminding you of that. So. I know. So, I know. I haven't we'll heard from him this week, so that's why that's why I went with Brooks. We'll have a text by the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with Brooks as well. Um, obviously, when you go into a best two out of three series, and nothing is a given, and th- there's nothing that is a given, but you have to like your chances of throwing Chatterton out there in game one, and uh, he gets a win. I mean, I'm, again, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but you got to like your chances. So how can you just get um, – how can you just find a way to win one of the next two games? Well, you've got Seth Walton. You've got other quality arms there. I'm going to go Brooks here. Again, this series gets started on Thursday. I'm going to go with the Lions um, to advance. Moving on to our next series in 4A, uh, you've got Area 10 runner-up Cordova. Cordova comes in with a record of 6 and 18. They will be traveling to Huntsville, the Madison area, to take on the Area 13 champions, the Westminster Westminster Christian, who come in with a 19 and 6 record and they have beaten some good 7A teams, Bob Jones, Huntsville. I think they lost to Sparkman. Yeah. I mean, so that's three of their, you know, that's that's three high quality teams that they played. And I know there are others. This series gets cranked up on Thursday at 4.30, and the if necessary game would be on Friday at 5. I'm going to tell you, man, Westminster, they sit in that three spot for us. And I'm going to say this about Westminster, and I've talked to some people about them. I don't know that Westminster has great pitching. I don't know that Westminster has great offensive lineup. I don't know that Westminster has – I. I my point I'm trying to make is Westminster does everything well on the baseball field. They are fundamentally sound. They, I know against Madison. Now this is an impressive stat. Last week they played Madison County in a big area series that decided the winner and the runner up in a seven inning game. Okay. Westminster did not strike out a Madison County hitter, and they only allowed two hits. They didn't strike anybody out and only allowed two hits. That lets you know that that is a fundamentally sound defensive team because a lot of times when pitchers throw no hitters, they're striking out 14 of 21, so you don't have to field 14 ground balls. Well, think about this. Allowed two hits and did not strike out a batter. Hey, man, just let the guys play behind you. And I think Hansville does all of that very well. I think they're a team to keep eyes on in 4A. I like them big time against Cordova this week. Yeah, I mean, Joe, I'm, I'm trying to pull – what uh, Sean Lipinskis, he's still at Westminster. He is Christian, a shortstop. Right? That's cool. He's at yeah. shortstop. And then the Lane oh. kid is one of their arms. Yes. They've got so they, uh, the, the friend uh, – they've got a friend kid that's going to Marion Military. Last name is Friend. He's going to Marion Military. They've got two brothers. Last name is Good. I think one of them's a catcher. One of them throws, plays center field. They're just a solid little club. And, yeah. again, when you do those three facets very well, you're going to win a lot of games, which they've done. Yeah, I'm going Westminster Christian, too. Um, I haven't – I've seen Sean Lipinskis, and Sean is – Sean's a, a really, really good baseball player going to play at UAH, Correct. That's UAH. correct. Yes, at UAH. Yeah. Um, so don't don't know the other players like you, the ones that you mentioned as, as quite as well with them being up near your area. But I've seen Sean Lipinskis; he's really good. Um, and uh, and just their record, their the the quality of teams that they've not only played but beaten. I'm going to go Westminster Christian um, here to uh, to advance to the second round. Our next matchup, you've got the Area 15 runner-up. Hamilton will be on the road traveling to the Area 12 winner, uh, Haleyville. Hamilton is 18 and 11. Haleyville is 14 and 9. This series will get started on Friday at 4:30 and 7, and the game three will be on Saturday at 1 p.m. Um, Hamilton finished. Uh, uh, Hamilton, I think we had Hamilton ranked in our top 10 at some part of the season. Go ahead. I left out a big kid for uh, 
for Westminster Christian. Uh, I think it's not Landon Collier, Logan Collier, maybe. He was on Diamond Notes last week. He's He's been really swinging it well of late. Sorry, just had to throw him out there. Yeah. Yeah, I think we had Hamilton ranked inside our top ten in Class Four A for for a couple of weeks. Maybe um, they finished behind. They finished as the runner up uh, to Deschler, um, and, and we know how good Deschler is. Uh, but Haleyville um, really is a team who really has started to play well down the down the stretch. Obviously, uh, they're fourteen and nine. They they won their area um, over um, trying to pull it up. Won it over Priceville and. Um, uh, East Lawrence and West Morgan. Um, so um, we, you know, know how how good Priceville is to be able to win that area. And I know that they, they've also beaten Russellville in the past couple of weeks. So Haleyville looks to be playing really well. Um, I, this may be an upset. I'm going to go Hamilton. I'm going with the Aggies. Um, um, uh, I forgot what's the kid's name at Hamilton. Um, Peyton Purser, um, left-handed hitter, can also pitch for them has been doing it for them over the past few years, been a big piece for them. I think he's a really good un- uncommitted senior. Um, I'm going to go with Hamilton here, maybe maybe in an upset on the road. I don't I just, uh, two, I think two pretty evenly matched teams. I like Hamilton to advance. You just said even. That's what I was about to say. I think these are very similar teams. Yeah. And I think they're both playing very well. Um, and, here's, and, and, and I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go Haleyville. And here's why I'm going Haleyville. I mean, you'd be surprised at how much time we try to put in this podcast. As I was looking at them, I don't know if you've noticed it, but Hamilton and Haleyville have played twice this year. Mm. Hamilton beat them early, I think like three to one or four to two, some other game. But Haleyville won the most recent matchup about two or three weeks ago, I believe it was. I literally, looking at both these teams, I literally – chose Haleyville because they won the most recent matchup. <laughs> That's why I'm going with Haleyville. Yeah. Again, I, I think this could go either way. I, this is a true 50-50 matchup, in my opinion. Um, both start they, with H. I mean, they're yeah, both start pretty, with H. Yeah. Pretty, pretty <laughs> yeah they're, both, they're both right outside the top 10. Um, <laughs> they, yeah, absolutely. But, and they've each won a game against each other. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to split here. Um, I'm going to go Haleyville simply because they won the last matchup. Could be an interesting one. Uh, again, this is a truly 50-50 matchup. Uh, moving on, our next matchup, um, you've got the runner-up from Area 14, the Chiefs of North Jackson. They come in with a record of 24-7. and seven. Again, they uh, finished runner-up to Etowah in a tough Area 8 which also included Cherokee County. Uh, They are on the road at Jacksonville. Jacksonville comes in with a record of 17 and 17 and 12. They are right outside of our top 10. North Jackson finished in the top, uh, finished number eight in our latest top, in our last top 10 poll. Uh, Jacksonville, they won their area over White Plains. Um, This is another matchup. I saw Jacksonville two years ago in the playoffs, and I, I really liked how they played. Hard nose, got after it a little bit. But I said this last week in one of my tweets when I was at Etowah, North Jackson. Etowah eventually won that game seven to four. North Jackson jumped out early four to one. North Jack- uh, Etowah fought back, won the game eventually. And I said in one of my tweets, these are two teams that can make a run in 4A, and I'm going to stand by that. I also was walking out of North Jackson, Stevenson Stevenson City Park last week, and I told somebody this might not be the last two times these teams play. I think it's a very possibil- a very real possibility that Etowah yeah. and North Jackson could play again. I don't know that. I do think Jacksonville is a good uh, – I, I do think that they can get North Jackson trouble, but I'm going to go with the Chiefs this week. I, again – Carson Smith, man, can really get – I'll tell you this. When I saw that game last week, Carson Smith came up with a man on second. Yeah, better. They probably they put him on. I, Hold up. The first fast – the first pitch he saw was an elevated fastball. Bam. Laser up the middle. All right. North Jackson takes a 1-0 lead. The next at bat, four straight – they didn't intentionally walk him, but he did not see a strike. The next two at-bats, they intentionally walked him. And the last at-bat, he was the tying run in a 7-4 game that loaded the bases. 
I mean, so you put the winning run at the plate, a guy could run into one and leave the yard and you're down a run. Uh, it worked out. I mean, great coaching move by Coach Bone and the Etowa staff. Yeah. But I'm telling you, Carson Smith can swing it, and he's not well, the only one there. I've seen North Jackson play once, and they played Deschler at Chocolaco Park. It was like a 9, a, 9 a.m. game. I, I was walking up walking up at 9 o'clock, and Carson Smith was up, run on second. He had a missile, scored a run. He comes up his next at bat. He's already got an RBI. They're getting beat like four to one. And he comes up with the bases loaded, two outs, hits a missile off the right field wall for a bases clearing double to give them a four to three lead. And I think he had like – this was after he won the player of the week that week for mm-hmm. however many like home runs and doubles he hit. So, man, if I'm an opposing coach, it would be hard for me to pitch to Carson Smith. And, yeah. But you're right. I mean, it's not not just him. They've got Nolan Jernigan. Um What's that left-handed left-handed Caden hitter? Win, win or win? Last name is Win. Yeah. Win, yeah. Caden, Caden, Win. Caden, Win, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then that that uh, shortstop, uh, Bodie Burnett. Bodie Burnett, yeah, man, he looked good when I saw him Saturday. Yeah, but I mean, you look at Jacksonville as well. Jacksonville has played Oxford. They played Alexandria. They've beaten mm-hmm. Hoax Bluff. They've swept Gadsden City twelve to nothing and thirteen to nothing. They got beat by one run by Ben Russell. They've beaten Donahoe. Um, so this is this is a really good matchup, I think, coming out of the gate. North Jackson, uh, I, I'm going to go with North Jackson um, just simply because, I mean, I've seen them and I think that they're really talented. Uh, but Jacksonville's body of work speaks for itself. Area winners played some really quality teams, beating some real quality teams. Um, really sneaky matchup out of the gate. Um, interested to see how this one plays out, but we're both going to go North Jackson. Our next matchup, uh, you've got the Area 13 runner-up, Madison County. They'll be on the road traveling to the Area 10 winner, Corner. Madison County is 23-8. and Corner is 22-6. and The series gets started on Thursday at 4.30 and Game 2 at 7. And the, if necessary, game would be on Friday at 4.30. Madison County um, has really had a late charge here in the late part of the season, have been in the, the 8, 9, and 10 spot in our top 10 in Class 4A over the past few weeks, ultimately fell out um, last week. But – are probably the the number eleven or twelve team in Class Four A. I think we would both say, um, you know, Memphis Scott has really started to really Memphis Scott has had a really good, really good season overall. But especially these last few weeks, I know you saw him and um, on the mound. Jake Thornton has been up to I think ninety or ninety one. You saw him, um, mm-hmm. who's um, a really really anchors the staff for them. Um, uh, Jay Stuckett. Jay Stuckett. Jay Stuckett, a freshman outfielder, left-handed pitcher who, who has some some really good upside. Nicholas Sharp, um, some other guys for for Madison County. And then you look at corner. Um, corner mm-hmm. is is led by the that that dynamic duo on the mound. Brendan Connor, um, a, a senior right-handed pitcher, third baseman, um, and then uh, right-handed pitcher, first baseman Brody Dunlap. Both of those guys are seniors headed to UAB can both get into the low 90s on the mound, and Brendan Connor is probably one of the best two-way players in the state of Alabama. Um, we are re- really think highly of him, and that's ultimately why I think um, that I like corner to advance in this matchup. Um, just those two arms out of the gate, um, Brendan Connor has done it at the highest level for year after year, and we've seen him in the summer. Every summer, he just continues to get better and better. Um and then Brody Dunlap right behind him has a chance. They both have a chance to shut down any oppo- any opposing opposition uh, offense. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm going to go with corner. They've had a really good season, and and they have a they have a chance also to make a run in Class Four A. So, but uh, really tough matchup out of the gate with Madison County. We'll see how it shapes out. But I'm going to go with corner at home. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to be right there with you. Um, you know, I. The pitching, they're built. I mean, and you know, you throw Eli Cannon in there. You know, Eli yeah, Cannon's headed I, to Wallace Hansel. Completely yeah. forgot about Eli Cannon. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look at those three arms right there. I mean, corner is built for a best two out of three series. Um, you know, that's a team that you circle that has a chance to make a deep run. I mean, yeah, you, you go into a series against them knowing you can't give up eight or nine runs. Because you're not going to – I mean, nobody knows what's – but the chances of you scoring eight or nine runs off corners' arms are, are, are not likely unless they help you out. Now, 
On the flip side of that, Madison County is a team that's put up an impressive record, has had a great year, um, you know, finished runner-up to Westminster Christian. They can swing it a little bit, um, but, you know, it's it's go, it's go it, this will be their toughest task facing these arms this week. And I just, you know, you, you have to go uh, – I'm not going to say you have to, but it's hard to go against those arms at corner. So we're yeah, both we, going to take corner there. Go ahead. We may, we may not be invited back to Sunday lunch. Lucy, yeah. Lucy Sharp is watching. And let's just make let's just say state the obvious. Our nephew plays for Madison County, but your your nephew. Oh uh, yeah, my, <laughs> my <laughs> nephew, your cousin plays for Madison County, um, and you know he's a starter, hits in the four hole for them. But again, you know we we're, we're not gonna we're, we're not gonna show any favoritism to them because of him or whatever. But um, let's just hope we can right. Let's hope we can go to Sunday lunch after church. So yeah. Uh, that's right. But again, we'll take corner there, but moving on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh no. It's an iffy matchup. I have to agree. You might, or you might not, right? That's an yeah. iffy matchup. Yeah. I hear you, Colin. <laughs> so moving on to our next matchup, uh, you have the runner up in area nine white plains. They come in with an 11 and 17 record. They will be at the winners of Area 14. That's the Etowah Blue Devils, the defending state champs, who come in with a record of 17 and 12. This series will get started on Thursday at 5, with the if necessary game on Friday at 5 as well. Um, Etowah, if you've been paying attention to our um, podcast this year, um, Etowah is a team, much like American Christian and Foray, that we've said don't pay attention to their record because they're going to go out and they're going to play the best people they can play. And much like last year, Etowah's record really wasn't that good halfway through the year. Well, they've started to hit their stride. All right. Won a, you know, lost game one of an Aries series against North Jackson on Friday night, but was able to come back and win game two with Jamison Sissom on the mound. Bailey Morrison, by the way, came in the seventh inning was 82-83 with a hammer breaking ball. Um, He was good on the mound. He was 82-83. I'll be honest, it looked a little quicker to me, but I got – man, it was 82-83. Um, you know, we talk about being in teams' DNA. It's in teams – it's in Etowah's DNA. They know how to win this time of year. When the playoffs click, it seems like a light just goes off with them as well. I like Etowah this week. Um, I, I like Etowah to possibly be right there in the end again, and let's look at what we've got in front of us if – Corners able to handle business, and if Etowah handles business, that's a pretty interesting second round matchup. Give me the Blue Devils to advance. Yeah, and I think that they matched up last year too. In the who was the Elite Eight, Etowah yep. was able to win that. But I, I agree. I'm going to go with Etowah. Um, you saw him last week, Jamison Sissom, um, uh, really good on the mound. Um, say Slade St. Clair, Damon Devine is another right handed pitcher who's apparently has some pretty good velocity and. Um, so they've, they've, they've really figured it out here down the, the Tracy you know, Gaddis has thrown well for them. Yeah. <clears throat> they figured it, figured it out down the middle part of the stretch and, and you knew they would. Um, but I'm going to go with the blue devils as well. Our next matchup, you've got the area 12 runner up Priceville. Um, mm. Priceville will be on the road traveling to the area 15 winner. Deschler Priceville is 20 and 10. Deschler is 24 and seven and ranked number nine in our, um, uh, most recent poll, they've been ranked inside the top 10 for the majority of the season. Um, looking at Priceville, led by Wes – Dylan Morgan. Dylan Morgan is is 100% um, Desher a sleeper. Um, looking at Priceville, you uh, – led by Coleman Gann on the mound, coming off a seven-inning, 18-strikeout performance. Um, you see quick. his name in the diamond notes today. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't for a perfect game, he would have been the pitcher of the week. But Coleman yep. Gann is a is a really intriguing, uncommitted right-handed pitcher. I think he's mid upper eighties on the mound. Um, Todd Borden. Todd Borden is another talented arm for them. Jake England, and then West. You think of West Walker, mm-hmm. switch hitting catcher headed to UNA. Priceville has got some pieces to make a run. Um, they've got a tough test out of the gate with Deschler, led by uh, Garrett Reed. Uh, Aiden Noyola is a freshman who's done some some big things for them so far this this spring. Um, God, I'm blanking um, for Deschler. Thornton. Price, yeah, the Price Thornton, sophomore right-handed pitcher outfielder, 
that's these are two pretty evenly matched teams yep. to be honest. Um, and and we'll have a we'll have someone there to cover the game. Um, so excited excited to be out in the in the Deschler area this week. So uh, we'll be there and, and looking forward to uh, to seeing how this one shapes out. But ultimately, I'm going to go with Deschler here. Um, definitely expect this this series to go three games. Would not be surprised if Price was able to win. Whoever I think whoever makes it out of this matchup has a chance to make a pretty significant run. Um, but ultimately, I'm, I'm siding with Deschler here at home. A, a pretty, I think they've got some pretty good facilities as well. So, yeah. So I'm going to go with Deschler. Yep, new facilities over there, and and I'm like you, man. I Dylan Morgan said Deschler's a sleeper. I don't know that I consider them a sleeper, man. I I think they're we think they're good, yeah. you know. And, and I know what he's saying. I, that's not a shot at you, Dylan, but I, we, we think Deschler is a really good team, but they're also matching up with another good team. I mean, you know, you went over the, those two front end arms for for Priceful, man. They're going to give anybody trouble. Wes Walker in the middle of that order. I mean, you know, I'm not giving away some big secret that coaches don't know, but you know, if you're a coach. You find the name and you circle the guy that you don't want to beat you, you know. So, uh, and it's obvious. I'm, I'm sure Wes Walker's not going to be thrown to consistently. So the guys around him are going to have to, the guys around him are going to have to get people on first and second with no outs. Where you can't throw around Wes Walker, and you've got to throw to him. Um, you know, and I think this is an intriguing series too. But you know, I, I think it's a three game series. I'm glad we're going to have somebody there. I'm going to go with Deschler as well. And again, this is a, I said, I think this is a three game set. I think it goes the distance in three highly competitive games. Um, you know, and, and I have to say this about Price because we talked about them at the beginning and our preseason polls, how much they lost from last year. And we thought that Price might be down a little bit because of so many pieces they lost. Man, kudos to them, kudos to Coach Potter and that crew for keeping things going. I mean, you know, they lost a lot, but they haven't missed a beat. And they're in one of the premier matchups in foray in the first round. So we're both going to go with Deschler there. We both do expect a very entertaining series between both of them. And our last uh, matchup in foray, the runner-up, very 16, West Limestone. They come in with a record of 12 and 17. They will be traveling to Asheville. Uh, the winners of Area 11, Asheville is 16 and 12. This series will get started on Friday at 4.30 with the doubleheader, and then the if necessary game would be Saturday at 1 o'clock. Man, um, this is – I think this is another matchup that can go either way. Um, you know, I, I – I know that Asheville has played a pretty tough schedule this year. I know most of the teams, most of the teams, thank you, Dylan. <laughs> most of the teams that um, that Asheville has played have been ranked. Um, and, and you're right. We just got a just got a comment there. The Layfield brothers are awesome. They've both been um, they've both been, you know, on our diamond notes. And I think one of them is going to be on there later today. Um, Dylan Palmer, Palmer, I think he's on there later today in Diamond Notes. Um, but you know, this is going to be a difficult matchup for Asheville because West Limestone is a, you know, that's a team that's had success in years past. And I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting the kid's name at third base for West Limestone. I'll find it in a minute once I the, it. the catcher is the, um, yeah, catcher going to UAH. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Braxton Griffin, not Griffin. catcher. He's yeah. a, Braxton Griffin's a third baseman. Yeah. Catcher is the Jaron Meredith. That's right. Yeah. 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 Really vocal leader. Really. Yeah. Good behind the plate. That's correct. I think this is going to be an intriguing matchup, man. And I, 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 was, I went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on this, but man, I'm going to go, we've talked about preparing your, not that West Limestone hasn't, but preparing yourself with difficult uh, games. I think I'm, I think I'm going to, by the slightest of margins, I think I'm going to go with Asheville to defend their home turf and advance to round two. Uh, we'll split on this one. I'm going to go West Limestone. Okay. I'm going to go West Limestone. Um, like you said, very evenly matched series. Both have played strong competition. Braxton Griffin and Jaron Meredith for West Limestone. You talk about, um, for Asheville, Dylan Palmer, their, their sophomore catcher. Drew Layfield is, um, senior, uh, senior, uh, infielder for them has had a really good season. Um, I definitely a series could go three games. You're going to go Asheville. I'll go West Limestone um, here in class 5A. So that moves us on to class um, 5A. 
Um, did we really take 54 minutes to go through 4A? Yes, we did. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, it's lunchtime. We need to get through these five and six. <laughs> you didn't You didn't have some Duncan for the podcast <laughs> on you. Uh, class 5A, we'll start off here. First matchup in the South, we've got the Area 3 runner-up, Rehoboth. We'll be on the road traveling to the Area 8 winner, Shelby County. Rehoboth is 16 and 12. Shelby County is 20 and 9. Series will get started on Friday at 4.30 and 7 with Game 3 on Saturday at 11. Shelby County, we talked about it on our Monday podcast. Shelby County probably is that number 11 team, and um, that's probably where Coach Hamrick wants to be, <laughs> kind of on the outside looking in, kinda trying to surprise some people. But Shelby County is really playing some good baseball. They won't surprise people. People yeah. know. Yeah. Gannon Fars, um, Sam Carter, um, a, a host of other guys. Um, for the Pennington, for Pennington. Pennington, yep. Um, they've got some Sam Carter. Uh, yeah, I said Sam Carter. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Shelby County is is really talented as they have been the last few years. I'm going to take them here uh, to advance over Rehoboth to advance to the the next round. I'm going to go Shelby County as well. Obviously, we think very highly of them, and you pro- you're going to be wrong on my source here. It's not who you think it is, but I got a text yesterday. That and we talk about strength. Why is everyone, why is everyone texting him? <laughs> Y'all text me. <laughs> but I got a text. No, this was Monday. I apologize. It was no, it was yesterday at 9 11 a.m. Of the 20, okay, Shelby County is 22 and 9. They won, they beat Bibb County this week, which gave them their 22nd win. So they played a total of 31 games. And this is not from who you think it is, just so you know. They played three out-of-state opponents, which means they have 28 games against AHSA competition. Of those 28 games, 18 of them are against state playoff teams. Mm. So, again, Coach Hamrick's done a great job scheduling, getting teams ready, getting his team ready uh, for the playoffs, and they hope that that, that, you know, that helps out beginning this weekend. I'm like you. I'm going with, uh, I'm going with Shelby County as well to advance to round two. Our next matchup in 5A, uh, Area 2 runner-up. Man, it sounds weird to say. Mm -hmm. Area 2 runner-up, Mobile Christian. The Leopards come in with a number five ranking and a 16-9 and record. They will be traveling to Demopolis. Demopolis won Area 5. They come in with a record of 11-9. and This series begins on Friday at Four o'clock with the if necessary game on Saturday at at noon. Austin, correct me if I'm wrong, but Demopolis surprised people and made a deep run. Final four last year. Final, final four, I think. Final I four. It was at least the elite eight. They yeah. had that series that I think kept getting pushed back. I think it was the elite eight because they had the series that kept getting pushed back, pushed back because of rain against. I can't remember. Yeah, but it was. Uh, so and I I think I picked against Demopolis almost every week. Yeah, I think I did too. I, I did, and and you know we love when teams make us when 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 teams prove us wrong. You know whatever we say or whatever you rank don't mean anything. It's on the field. That's where it's going to be won and lost. But I'm going to go Mobile Christian, man. That offensive onslaught of theirs, uh, Damian Gatson, Bryce Rivers. Bryce Rivers has been like 480. I saw oh. that. Yes. I don't know the status with Noah Blackburn yet. It was going to be a couple weeks. I don't know there. Um, I, I love the offensive fire, firepower. They've got some arms there um, as well. Um, you know, they did finish runner-up to St. Paul's, another quality team. I'm going to go Leopards to advance to round two this week. So, Demopolis, you've got another chance to make, to prove me wrong. Or maybe they're just excited because we – Lee Court were basically Lee Corso for for them yeah. picking against them last year. That's right. Uh, and you add in guys like Alexander Bennett as well. Our guy PJ Brown. Alex Alex is out. Yeah, remember arm. Is he? Yeah. No, that's Andrew. And I'm sorry, Andrew. I apologize, yeah. Austin. Yeah, Andrew. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Alexander's uh, Alexander headed to CAC. Big piece for them. PJ Brown, little super athletic infielder for them. Um, and um. Other guys as well. Uh, they've got pieces on the mound: Walker, Seaman, Zach, Zach McKinnon. Both of those going to JUCO. Both of those arms going to JUCO. Um, give me Mobile Christian as well. 
Our next matchup, you got the Area 7 runner-up. Marbury at, uh, will be on the road tr uh, traveling to the Area 4 winner, Tallahassee. Marbury is 21-6, um, and six, and Tallahassee is 14-7. and seven. This series gets started. Um, this series gets started on Friday at 5 with Game 2 at 7, game th and then Game 3 on Saturday at 1. Marbury didn't play last What did he say? Where did Austin, before you get into it, do you agree with me? Both of these teams came from both of these teams came from very tough areas. One hundred, yeah, one hundred, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Marbury gets here after uh, losing two out of three to Hopeville last week. I was there at game one. Um, Tallahassee was able a huge series series win over Elmore County. You know. Both of these teams, uh, you know, Tallahassee beating Elmore County, who we had ranked. Um, Marbury was ranked inside the top 10. I think they were as high as six last week, ultimately fell out, had to put Hopeville in front of them because they had the head to head. Marbury is very talented. They've got Jacob Driver on the mound, who was up to 89 when I saw him. Big right handed pitcher can hit. Uh, the Esco leadoff hitter, shortstop, um, Cohen Sampley, Benton Howell. First baseman, left-handed pitcher, um, and then uh, Tallahassee also has talented players as well. Yeah, who is that right-handed pitcher for? Um, um, for the no-hitter last last year, last summer at Lake Point, plays with SBG. Yep. Um, yep. God, I'm blanking on his name. Um, if but you, if you can, go ahead. If you can ad lib enough, I can find yeah, it. I'm gonna go. I'm picking um, Marbury. Um, on the road, I think this is a very evenly, even even matchup um, for 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 both the Chase Chumley. Yes, yes, Chumley. Chumley. Yeah. Yeah. And then Brew Milner is a highly ranked uh, prospect we have in the top twenty five in our twenty twenty seven rankings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Tallahassee has talent. Both these teams have talent. I'm going to side with Marbury um, on the road. You know, basically another fifty fifty series. Um, I'm going to go, I, I'm going with Marbury here to get the win, but would not be surprised if Tallahassee was able to, to close out this series at home. Man, you know, I, I hate to just sound like I'm just copying what you say, but I, again, I said this before you started, both of these teams are coming from very tough areas, four and seven. And, you know, Tallahassee was able to win the area over Elmore County. As you mentioned, Marbury lost to hopeful that you were there at. I mean, these two teams are pretty battle tested. Um, you know, they haven't played this year. Um, pretty close proximity to each other. Um, I think this is a definite three game series. And, I, you know, you mentioned it 50 50. I'm going to go Marbury as well. I mean, you know, just I think, and again, none of us, we, none of us know what's going to happen, but I think the, the luxury of being able to throw a Jacob Driver out there. I know he scuffled early at Hopeful when you were there, but then responded and was well on the back end of the game. Um, I, I think just the luxury of being able to throw a guy out like that in game one, if that's when he throws, I just you just like your chances. Um, but I'm going to go Marbury as well with you. It just doesn't – it's just Talis – I mean, Talis – is a team kind of been flying under the radar. Huge series win over Elmore I would not be surprised if Talisee was – it just feels wrong both of us taking Marbury. Uh, you're right. It does. And I hate that, too, because when it's such a closely contested, you know, because you and I, we're in competition with one another either. I'm not going to pick someone just so we each pick one and each pick. We, You know, we we have a running tab, me and you, who gets the most right. So I'm not going to pick someone just to make people happy or, you know, all that stuff. But, uh, you know, again, it's just uh, we both went in Marbury, but we know it. neither one of us will be surprised if Tallahassee comes out of this. Our next matchup in the South in 5A, the um, – let me see here. All right, here we go. Uh, the runner-up from Area 6, Beauregard, come in with a 12-10 and 10 record. They are on the road at the winners of Area 1. I think that's like – that's a ton of area championships in a row. Uh, for the Dolphins, the number three-ranked Dolphins of Gulf Shores, they won Area 1. This series will get started on Friday at 5 o'clock, and on Saturday, the if necessary game would be at 1. Man, let me tell you something. Um, Gulf Shores is quickly approaching that level of they just expect to win every time out. I mean, you know, they've got talent. Coach Jax does a great job. 
I think they've got some hard nosed players. I, you, you know, you've got Connor Gear at the front end of that. Mac Anderson, the kid going to Houston, pitches for him. Has also swung the bat really well for them this year. Gear is a two way prospect. We, you know, Stevens is going to Coastal Alabama South. You know, and there's other guys. Uh, Judd Harris. Yeah, Judd Harris. There's a fr- you'll see him on Diamond Notes today, um, and that's sort Alex of that's King. A, yeah, that's a good lead into what you said with Judd Harris. And we talk about winning and they expect to win. Well, you know what Judd Harris did in the fall, right? He was a starting quarterback for the 5A state championship football team. And, you know, there's just some – when you learn to win, it just becomes a byproduct that you expect to win every time you step on the field. And I think Gulf Shores baseball is quickly approaching that status of where it's an expectation to win. And I'm going with Gulf Shores this week. Obviously, we've got them. We've had them one, two, and three the last couple of weeks. They've got a chance. They've got a legit chance in five A. I'm going to go with Gulf Shores as well. But Beauregard, I saw Beauregard face when I went to go watch uh, Real Town when Jamarcus Smith was throwing 88, 91, and Beauregard did a really good, really good job of um, of waiting him out, not chasing at pitches, putting himself in good counts. Uh, obviously led by uh, Braden Pooler, who's our uh, number one left-handed pitcher, first baseman, anchor is the middle of that order. Have seen him swing it over the past few years really well. Beauregard is a pretty – not a sneaky team. They're a quality team. They're well-coached, hard-nosed. Um, so I'm going to go with Gulf Shores, but Beauregard is, is, is a solid club, but we both are going to go with the Dolphins. Moving on to our next matchup, you've got the Area 5 runner-up. Greenville will be on the road facing the Area 2 winner, St. Paul's Episcopal. Greenville is 10 and 9. St. Paul's Episcopal is 19 and 10 and are ranked number four after a big couple of weeks um, here in area sweeping Mobile Christian, vaulting them from number nine or 10 to number four. This series gets started on Friday um, at 3 and 5 30, and game three will be on Saturday. The if needed game three will be Saturday at 3 p.m. But I don't really see it. I don't know if I see it getting to game three. I, I I like St. Paul's. The Saints have really started to turn it on as of late, led by John Stowers, Edward McLeod, um, you know, uh, Brooks McDonald, Hayden Odell, um, um, the uh, guy, what's their uh, athlete, Cade Horton uh, on the mound. Bradley, Bradley Irish is a, is a really good arm for them. I think the Saints – have a legitimate shot to make another run. And we say that about some of the top teams, but it's, it's true about the saints. Um, they can, they can swing it. I think they've got the best offensive lineup in five. A we'll see how, if it's able to carry them here throughout the playoffs, but I like the saints in this matchup. I do too, for the same reasons you said, I mean, that's some young talent. You know, you mentioned Edward McLeod there. You can hit the ball at any part headed to Sanford. Uh, John Stowers, I think what 12, 13 home runs, I believe maybe 14, uh, you know, left-handed bat, sophomore headed to Auburn. Uh, you know, it's that's, that's a uh, you mentioned Bradley Irish real uptick in velocity last year or so. Um, you know, that's a that's a that's a good that's a good looking team. Um, you know, they that was an impressive um, series win over over um, Mobile Christian. Um, and you, it, it's hard not to put a lot of stock in yeah. St. Paul's right now. Do you think they're good this year? They're yeah. probably going to be even better next year because they all – Did we there. mention Tate Johnson? I don't even think we mentioned oh him. Yeah, I didn't even, mention, didn't even mention him. Sophomore committed to Auburn. Um, Elmore County took the only – you know, put that back up for me. Elmore County took the only game against Holt early in the season. The only game they played, three, two, they couldn't be – let's see. All right, we'll we'll uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. Yeah, that's our next one. Um. So, I'm going at St. Paul's Episcopal as well. So, moving forward to our next matchup. You've got uh, the runner-up to Gulf Shores in Area 1 is Alberta. We saw Alberta earlier this year. Uh, they went 11-17. and 17. They will be at the Area 6 winners, Valley. Valley comes in with a, an impressive record of 19-4. and four. They sit right outside of our top 10 in 5A. This series begins on Friday at 4.30 with the If Necessary game on Saturday at noon. I, I think the big thing here, and, and I, again – We've got thousands upon thousands of players with these teams that we've seen and know and all that. But we saw an arm from Alberta earlier this year, and I forget his name. He's a junior. Landon Adams. Landon Adams, that's correct. 
And he was really good. We went to see when they played Baker and Connor Gatwood was throwing. And Adams was up to 88 with a with a, a, a serious slider. I mean, it was filthy. And that's a name that we've remembered. I, apparently, I didn't remember it. Austin did, but uh, we saw him earlier in the year. Well, you look at El, you look at um, Alberta, and then you look to Valley. Well, obviously, Valley uh, they're highlighted by Jackson Sanders, a frontline arm, a possible MLB draft pick. Uh, I think you saw him up to 94, 93, 94 uh, earlier, or, earlier in the year. Uh, signed with Auburn. You know, may or may not finish there. We'll see. You know, we'll see if he gets drafted high enough. I think the big question here is if how do you match him up? That's right. If you're Alberta, when are you going to throw Adams? You know, is it against Sanders or are you going to throw off and then and then and then try to win that second game with him? You know, because it's going to be difficult to beat Jackson Sanders. Uh, it, it's tough. All right. Let's just be honest. Not again, not that it can't be done. I'm going to go Valley here. Uh, I went back and forth. Um, Valley's. Overall impressive season, I think, continues this week. I think they get the win at home. Um, and then that would set up an interesting matchup next week if it turns out to be St. Paul's and Valley. Those 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 hitters for St. Paul's against uh, Sanders, again, that's a, let's not talk about that. That's yeah. next week. But I'm going to go um, Valley this week. <clears throat> yeah, I, and I, forgive me if I'm wrong. I think Brady Cole Harrison, he pitches some as well. I don't know he's how much – I mean, so he's another option for – for Alberta shortstop also Brady yeah, I'm not sure what Valley and they could have plenty of arm but I just don't know how much what Valley has behind Sanders um I'm gonna go with the Rams uh of Valley um you gotta like your chances when Sanders is on the mound and then you gotta find a way to win um one of those last two games and I, I think the Rams are able to do it uh being at home helps um I'm gonna go Valley just like you our next matchup in Class 5A, you've got the Area 4 runner-up, Elmore County. We'll be traveling to the Area 7 winner, Holtville. Uh, Elmore County is 22-9, and nine, and Holtville is at 18-9. and nine. This series gets started on Friday at 5, and Game 2 at 7.30. And then the, if necessary, Game 3 would be on Saturday um, at 1 o'clock. And we will have somebody there covering this game. Um, one of the we think probably one of the top matchups in the whole whole playoffs in, in the first round. Um, you look at Elmore County; they've been ranked they've been ranked in the middle in the top seven or eight for the majority of the season. Ultimately, fell out um, losing that that series to Tallahassee. Uh, but no mistake, they're they're very talented. They're led by um, Shea Darnell and um, God. I'm forgetting the other the other brother's name. The Darnell plays first base. Uh, Brandon White is another big time outfielder, physical three hole hitter for them, um, and they've got uh, they've got a, a couple other left handed bats. They're they're really really a solid lineup up and down that order. Uh, does Elmore County have? And then you look at Holtville, <clears throat> last year's defending the defending Class Five A state champ, led by Dre Barrett, who's headed to Southern Miss. Um, but uh, it looked and they've got Marcus Broderick. Um, Braxton Potts, a uh, few other guys back from last year's team as well. Um, McCutcheon is a left-handed pitcher, first baseman, who's, who's through game one against Marbury was very good. Um, I think Dre Barrett has thrown game two or three for, for them as well. So, and, and hope it was kind of the same thing as last year, Holtville, kind of during the middle part of the season, around that 500 mark. People, not people writing them off, but people kind of forgetting about them. And then here comes Holtville in the first round. They go out and they beat Mobile Christian. They beat Headland. Next thing you know, they're in the state championship and they win. Um, and not saying that that's going to happen again, but it, it, it it's kind of lining up the same way it did last year. Um, and they've got another tough matchup coming out of the gate. Um, but and, and Holtville is such a hard place to win at. Um, they know how to win. It's, it's a pretty cool park. Um, they've made some upgrades to it since winning the state championship. Um, I'm going to go with Holtville. The Bulldogs seem to be putting it together at the right time, playing really good baseball. Coach Tufts does a great job there. I'm going to go with the Bulldogs getting a, a big series win. Um, would not be surprised to see it go three games. Elmore County is equally as talented, um, but I'm going to go with the Bulldogs simply because of the home field advantage. <clears throat> hmm. 
I hate, I, to say this. I, I, I hate to say this because that's what I was going to say. That home field advantage at Hopeful is a difference maker. Um, Elmore, Elmore County's beaten them earlier in we, the season. Yeah, and we just got a message. Yeah, and we, and we knew that they beat them three to two this week, uh, or no, excuse me, this year, earlier this year. But we've even said the same thing. And man, Jonathan seems pretty tied in with that central part of the state. Uh, we've said the same thing, and you just said it. Hopeful is playing without a doubt the best they played all year. And again, that's obviously what you want to be doing. Um, you know, I, I I went back and forth on this one, but I'm going hopeful as well. And again, I, I just mentioned it, that home field advantage. I think, I think it, it says a lot. Now, would I be, would I be surprised if Elmore County sweeps? No, I would be surprised one bit. I think these are two evenly matched teams, but I'm going to go with maybe, not that Elmore County doesn't have tradition because they do. Their winning percentage the last three or four years has been really high. But Holtwell coming off that state championship, led by Dre Barrett, you know, obviously a two-way talent. Uh, you know, I, I like Holtwell here. I like Holtwell in a three-game series. So we'll both side with Holtwell there, again, both by the slimmest of margins. Our next one, we'll also have someone at this one, at this uh, matchup this week as well. You've got the Area 8 – uh, yeah, the Area 8 runner-up, Central of Clay County. They come in with a record of 11-11. Eleven eleven. They are on the road at the winners of Area 3, the Headland Rams. Headland comes in with, with a 14-11 and 11 record. This series will get started on Friday at 5 o'clock with the doubleheader. And then the, if necessary, game would be Saturday at noon. Obviously, Headland has, has really had some success of recent in the state playoffs. You know, that record that you see for Headland, 14 and 11, it's not the most impressive record in the world, but I can tell you that they had some injuries early in the season. There are some talented players there. I'm going to let Austin talk about those in just a second. Obviously, headlined by the Shelley brothers, both committed to Auburn. Um, I think Headland is, I think Headland is, I think Headland wins this pretty convincingly. And I think that they, uh, I think that they're, they're playing well at the right time. And again, you don't want to look ahead, but you got to look ahead at round two. If Headland were to win, whoever comes out of that Hopeville Elmore County matchup would be a really interesting second round matchup. Yep. Uh, I'm going with the Rams of Headland as well, um, led by the uh, uh, Evan Taylor at shortstop, right handed pitcher, headed to, uh, to Wallace Dothan. Um, Trey Scott, another Coastal oh. Alabama South commitment on the mound and in the outfield. And then the Shelley brothers, uh, both are back healthy. Wade, um, 2025, both of them headed to Auburn. Wade being a junior, Wyatt uh, a uh, sophomore. Wyatt is a big addition to that the middle of that order now that he's back healthy. And Wade as well, too. Both of them have game-changing ability. Um, and uh, they've got some other pieces as well, but those are sort of the headliners for the Rams. Central Clay County is is interesting as well. They took one of the two games from Shelby County in area, so this won't be a cakewalk for Headland. Um, but sh- uh, Central K- Central Clay County is a solid club, and um, you know, but we're both going to side with Headland here in our final matchup in the South in Class Five A. Yeah, I, I think I like to throw in some interesting little tidbits. Central Clay County, you may not know this. That's a football powerhouse. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Won, yeah I yep, absolutely. Yeah, they've won several state championships, and I believe their head football coach is still Danny Horn, longtime, very successful coach. So, and I may be wrong there, but that's a they've won a lot of state championships in football. <clears throat> Our first matchup in the north in class 5A, you've got the area 11 runner up Fairview. They'll be on the road traveling to Madison Academy, the area 16 winner. Uh, Fairview is 19, 10, and 1. Madison Academy. Um, Madison Academy is 19 and 13. This series gets started on Friday at 5, game two at 7. The if necessary, game three would be on Saturday at 1. Don't look now, but the must looks like the Mustangs are starting to get hot. Um, Madison Academy probably get, didn't get off to the best start that they probably had hoped, uh, but they had played some some big time, some 6A, 7A teams. They Split with Best Davy Hills, they played some really good teams here in the early part of in, throughout the throughout the season, um, led by you know T. Foster, Keaton Keaton Watson, um, Jack Doyle on the mound, um, Shane uh, Duke, Shane Duke, Duke. yeah, Miles Johnson, Miles Johnson headed to Eastern Kentucky, 
the Mustangs have the pieces to make another run this year. I like them over I like them over Fairview um, in this matchup. I think the Mustangs are getting hot at the right time. Yeah, when I went to watch Madison Academy, I was impressed with their catcher, Mac Meadows. I believe that's his name. Yeah, 2024. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was impressed. Had some really impressive arm strength from behind the plate. Um, I just – I was impressed with him. I, I'm like you. I, I Again, no disrespect to Fairview, but I – you know, Madison Academy does this every single year. Um, they schedule the hardest people they can schedule, this year being no different. Um, they're at 19 and 13, and they played the Huntsvilles, the Grissoms. The, I believe they played Bob Jones. You mentioned they split with Vestavia. You know, they, they play a lot of a lot of larger schools, and 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 just for for what they're gonna what they're gonna come up with here, um, you know. And um, so, you know, I'm gonna go Madison Academy. I'm gonna go with the Mustangs here. I saw them. I really like them. They're solid in every facet as well. Um, they do a lot of things well, and, um, you know, I, I like them this week fairly convincingly. Checking out who uh, who they would play if they win, if they're fortunate enough to win this week. They would get the winner of our next matchup, which is the Area 10 runner-up, Moody. Moody comes in with a record of 17 and 14. They're right outside the top 10 uh, receiving votes. They will be traveling to Sardis. Sardis is currently our number two team in 5A. They sit at, I believe they're now 17 and 11 because they won a game yesterday. I think Carson Gilliland went went back, went two bombs. Uh, I think they won like a a, a, a um, postseason tune-up game, I guess you can call it. But they are our number two team, winners of Area 13 as they beat Boaz uh, two games to none in an Area series. They won Area 13 as I just talked about. Man, you know Moody, Moody is a Moody is a name that's that's well respected and. Has, they have really put in. You know, they, they've put some. Uh, they've been impressed. They've been impressive. They've been consistent uh, this year and in years past. But I, let's let's make no mistake about it. I think we both really, really like Sardis. We both think the Lions are a legitimate state title contender in five A. I do expect them this week to win. Uh, you know they've got a lot of pieces. I mentioned Carson Gilliland. Obviously, you've got to start with Blaze Gerhardt. Um, saw him in game one against Boaz. Was up to 92 early with a hammer slider. I mean, it's it's filthy. Can and I'm gonna tell you this. I, um, there was a college coach that was standing beside me uh, that was watching some of Sardis's players, um, and I'm not so sure I've seen a pitcher that will throw in as much as Gerhardt does. He will not let hitters take away the inner inner half of the plate. He will bust them in, and in our day and age now, a lot of a lot of pitchers are scared to go in there. Well, he goes in there and he can hit. You got Land Landon um, Landon Carroll. Landon. If you're a if you're a college coach and you need a 2024 uncommitted player, Landon Carroll is your guy. Yes, sir. That guy can go and. You know, you've got um, Connor Lowry. I mean, there's, you know, Russell Wiggs headed to Sneed. Uh, you know, that, that that team, we think, you know, they brought back eight of nine Trey, stars last year. Trey, Trey Thornton. Trey Thornton. Yeah, Trey Thornton. Um, you know, they, they brought back eight of nine starters and Connor Lowry moved in. So, I mean, you know, they've got a shot and I like them against Moody this week. <clears throat> yeah, really, make no mistake about it. Really, I mean, I, Sardis's goal is to to make it back and and to they have unfinished business. They want to win the five A state championship. This is pretty much the same roster from last year. Um, had a great series against Holtville, entertaining series, but uh, ultimately came up short. The goal stays the same this year. The Lions are looking to to make it back to the state finals and win the state championship, and and they certainly have the talent to do so. The path is not going to be easy, and it wasn't easy last year, but they were able to do it. We'll see how it shapes up this year. But also, I mean, you look at Moody, I mean, led by Landon Cherry, uh, one of the top uncommitted 2025 catchers. Brady Dodd is a talented Southpaw 2024, and then right-handed pitcher Bryant Harden is a, uh, a 2026 um, big right-hander who's thrown some big innings for them so far. So Moody's got talent. Uh, but we're ultimately going to side with Sardis um, here to move on to 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 the next round. 
Our next matchup, you've got the Area 15 runner-up, Douglas, who will be on the road traveling to the Area 12 winner, Alexandria. Douglas is 15-10. and 10, Alexandria is 21-8. and 8. This series will get started on Friday at 4.30. Game 2 at 7, and the, if necessary, Game 3 will be on Saturday at noon. Um, I'm going to go with the Valley Cubs. Um, probably the pretty easy pretty easy pick for both of us. The, the pitch and staff that they've built with Andrew Allen, Tripp Patterson, Bray Good has thrown some good innings for them as well at the plate. Uh, Samuel Henniger, Ian Cartwright, um, Evan Snow, you know, the list goes on. They've up and down that order. Uh, Aiden Bruner uh, behind the plate as well. I mean, they they have they like Sardis. They have the pieces back as well, and, and they got beat in the uh, the Elite Eight last year in a great series by Arab. Probably the, the, their main goal is to is to advance and to win the Class 5A state championship. And, and 5A is absolutely wide open, and there are some really good teams, and, and, and Alexandria is one of those good teams. So I'm going to go with Alexandria. I'm not going to be long here. I'm going to agree with you, Alexander. I'm going to say this. We've talked about being built for – Eric. For we've talked about being built for two out of three series. Alexandria is built for two out of three series. Pitching depth, pitching depth. So I'm going to go Alexandria there. Again, Douglas, runner-up to Arab in Area 15. I just think it's too much Alexandria uh, this week. Our next matchup uh, is – our next matchup, Pitts, the runner-up from Area 14. That's Lawrence County. They currently sit at 15 and 16. They are traveling to the Area 9 winners, John Carroll Catholic, who who come in with a record of 19 and 12. This series will get started on Friday at 5 o'clock. That's the doubleheader. And then the, if necessary, game would be Saturday at 2 o'clock. Um, uh, you know, John uh, – excuse me, Lawrence, Lawrence County uh, finished runner-up to Russellville, I believe, I may be wrong, I believe Lawrence County took a game from Russellville. I may be wrong there, I think so. I think but I so. think they did. And that tells me all I need to know about oh. Lawrence County because I've seen Russell Russellville, and as we mentioned on a couple podcasts, Russellville is typical Russellville. Um, they are getting hot when it counts. They're going to be a tough out. They're going to be a contender. They, they're going to have a chance to make some noise. Well, Lawrence County, I'm almost certain, defeated Russellville in one game. Obviously, Russellville ended up winning the uh, area championship. But then you look on the other side, and John Carroll with Aiden Malpass leading the way, um, University of Missouri recruit. That is a team that you and I have talked about that maybe we should have given them some more love during the season because they played some, uh, they played a, a, a formidable schedule and held their own, obviously going 19 and 12. Um, I think it's in an, it's an athletic team at John Carroll uh, playing a lot of those Birmingham area schools only helps them. And because of that, I'm going to side with John Carroll Catholic this week to advance and then possibly play number one Alexandria next week. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going with John Carroll Catholic as well. Um, you mentioned guys like uh, Noah Smith, um, uh, 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 Aiden Malpass. Uh, Noah Smith is another uh, senior prospect who is headed to Southern Union, I believe. Um so uh, John Carroll Catholic is really talented, um, but uh, yeah, Lauderdale County did get one game from Russellville, um, so could be a really good series. A series I could very well see go three games. I'm going to go with the Cavaliers of John Carroll, like you, in this matchup. Next matchup, you've got the Area 13 runner-up. Boaz will be on the road at the Area 10 winner of Leeds. Boaz, who's ranked number eight in our poll, sits at 18 and eight and leads is at 17 and 14. Um, this series gets started on Friday at five, game two at 7.30, and the if necessary game three would be on Saturday at one. Boaz, uh, you, you've seen Boaz led by Tyler Pierce, a 2025 shortstop right-handed pitcher, and they've got other players as well. Leads led by uh, Connor Nelson, who's – I think a 2025 who's got uh, getting close to double digit home runs. I think on the year they've got a couple other guys. Um, um, I think two left handed pitchers who are going to pitch at JUCO. Um, so a pretty pretty evenly matched series. I'm going to go with leads here. Um, I'm taking the Green Wave. Um, um, 
I think they played some really good teams. I'm going to go with Leeds to and a very well a series that I also could see go to three games, but I'm going to go with Leeds here uh, to get this uh, first first round win. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go with the Pirates, and again, only by the slimmest of margins. I just think Tyler Pierce on the mound gives them a formidable a formidable arm. All right, and you got to try to figure out a way to win another game. Um, you know, they Boaz played the game I was there. Uh, played Sardis very competitively. Um, obviously, Sardis won both games. A team that again don't want to go back to Sardis again, but Boaz has reeled off win after win this year, 18 and eight. Um, a, a really, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're solid. Um, I, I thought that, you know, I forget the kid's name that threw in game one for them. Uh, Mac, last name was Max something. Hey, you know, he really spins the breaking ball. Well, he's not going to light up a radar gun, but he was able to miss some barrels and, and keep the pirates in the game against a, a really physical Sardis team. Um, I think that 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 Boaz does enough to get it done this week at Leeds. Going to Leeds will make it even tougher. Um, this one, again, would not be surprised um, if this one goes uh, three games. I think it's two uh, teams that are very similar. But you're going to go with uh, Leeds, and I'll go with the Pirates of Boaz. Um, the next matchup features the runner-up from Area 9. That is Pleasant Grove. They come in with a record of 17 and 13. They are traveling to Russellville, who we have ranked number six in our last poll this year. They sit at 22 and nine. And this series will get started on Thursday at five o'clock with the doubleheader. And the if necessary game would be Friday at five if there is an if, if there is a third game. You know what's new? What's new? Russellville hosting a first round playoff game. That's just what they do. Um, Pleasant Grove, uh, they finished runner up. In Area 9, they did lose to John Carroll Catholic. Um, and I, I think I think this one is all Russellville. Um, they have scheduled a difficult schedule. I think they played like eight games over spring break. At one point, they had won like 11 straight after scuffling just a bit out of the gate where they dropped out of our top 10. But then, obviously, they're right in the thick of it now. Um, I think this one has all Russellville written on it, written all over it. Um, you know, um, you, you, I, I think it's a really, I think it's a really good team. Uh, you've got Brant Cummings, you've got the second baseman. Um, holy cow, I'll figure out his name in a minute. Daniel Askew. Askew, yeah, you'll see him in the diamond notes today. About you your boy, Big Red. A Big Red, man. Let me tell you something. When I saw Big Red, let me tell you something. Big Red can swing it. Also a big time division one recruit in uh football. Um, but may I just and, and there's more pieces, obviously. You've got the Sappington kid. Uh, I know I'm leaving some people out. You'll probably bring some of them up in a minute. Um, I, the 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 two young kids, there's an eighth grader and a ninth grader at Russellville. I, mm. I like Russellville uh fairly handedly this week um at home against Pleasant Grove. Yeah. Death. Texas and Russellville getting hot at the right time and making a run in class 5A. I'm going to go – I'm going with uh, Russellville once again. Uh, yep, there's your name. Ingle Ty, yeah, that's, your, that's right. Yep, and then the – I remember uh, Trip Cleveland. Trip Cleveland's the other one, yes. Engel yep. Ingle, Halter is a eighth grader. Left-handed Cleveland's hitter. a ninth grader, yeah. Well, is, that the, is that the left-handed hitter? Okay, yeah, Engelhalter is the left-handed hitting outfielder. Yeah, Cleveland is the shortstop right-handed yeah. outfielder. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm going Russellville. Um, yeah, we'll both go Russellville. Our next matchup, you've got the Area 12 runner-up, Southside Gadsden, who will be on the road traveling to the Area 15 run, uh, winner, ARAB. Um, the uh, Southside Gadsden comes into the playoffs with an 18-15 and 15 record. Arab sits at 16 and 13. Both these teams are outside of the top 10 looking in. Uh, Southside Gadsden uh, finished, obviously finished behind uh, Alexandria in their area. Um, uh, they finished behind Alexandria in a, getting beat in the, in the area championship last week, but they're uh, played some really good teams. Um, Arab um, won the area championship on the final day. Um, 
So uh, another another year, another area championship for the Knights. Southside Gaston led by um, Corbin Driscoll, uh, 2025 catcher, physical hitter, anchors in the middle of that order. And then for A-Rad, you've got Drew Puccio, Landon Carroll. Is it Andrew Carroll? Andrew Carroll. Yeah, Andrew Carroll, uh, their catcher. Uh, They've got a a host of other players you may talk about that you know a little bit more. But uh, this may be a little bit of an upset. I'm going to go with Southside Gadsden here to go on the road to – and and what Arab's shown the ability to make a raucous environment and make a big playoff atmosphere. I'm going to go with Southside Gadsden to go on the road and and maybe a little bit of an upset to get a a first-round win. Man, that's weird that you said that because I looked at our picks last night after I picked mine, I saw that you picked Southside Gats. I'm like, mm, mm-hmm. I don't know, you know, but I'm going to stick with a rab. And, and part of that was part of that was because of that environment. I was there last year, man. It was awesome. And they'll be back again this year. And, and I, and again, I saw a rab against Russell this year. Yeah. And it was a, an extra inning affair where Russell will came back to beat them. But there's something about that Arab team, man, that they lost so much from last year that they're, but they seem like they haven't missed a beat. Are they as talented as last year? No, they're not because, you know, you had McCain and Moon and those guys leading the way on the mound. And, and I don't, and again, this is no disrespect, but I don't think they've got that guy that you just give the ball to and you're expecting seven innings of two hit baseball. You know, it's going to be 86 88. But th- they've got pieces that they put them together. They fit them in the right spots, and 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 because of that, I'm gonna I- I'm gonna go the other way. I'm gonna go Arab. You mentioned some of those guys. Evan Brazelton um, is another kid. Hagen Stewart. I may be wrong, but I think Hagen Stewart is the football recruit that's headed to. I forget where he's headed, but he can re- he can fly. Lane Edwards has thrown some big innings for them. Luke Hudson. And you know, I'll tell you this, man. Luke Martin too. That's another. Who's that? Luke yeah, Martin. Luke, yeah, I was going to get to Luke Martin in a minute. Yeah, he stoned some big innings for him. Number ten, playing first base. Um, yeah, you got I, you got your little stat sheet by, that they gave you, right? Uh, yeah. Arab always gives us a stat sheet, you. and that is awesome. Yeah, I, I, we love it. I got it right here. But I, I'll say this: you know, when we go to games, sometimes, you know, there's no way we can get every hit. There, we're going to miss a home run. We're going to miss a triple. That's going to happen. But nothing made me more sick. And I guess this is a public apology to the Arab people. When I was at Arab in Russellville, man, uh, Luke Hudson, his first at bat, first pitch, pow, double left center gap. So I'm like, okay, I'll get him next at bat. So I get over to get ready, and someone comes over and talks to me, and I miss it. And he had another double. And I just felt terrible that I didn't get either one of them. Yeah, but you should. Yeah. I get, yeah. <laughs> I guess this is just a public apology to the people of Arab that I didn't get a tweet out on Luke Hudson, but we're going to split this one. Austin's going south side, and I'm going Arab. Should be a highly competitive series and a great environment. And our final 5A matchup, final 5A matchup. You've got the runner up from Area 16, Yardmore Tigers. They come in at 18 and 13. They are traveling to Springville, who come in with a record of 22 and 9 and a number seven ranking. They won Area 11 this year. This series will get started on Friday at 4:30, and then a game, and that's the doubleheader. And then a game three, if necessary, would be Saturday at one o'clock. I saw Ardmore. Um, I saw them against Madison Academy, and uh, Noah Stafford there at the top of their lineup is a I like really. That. I do too. Maybe a little undersized, you know. I mean, you look at him; he's undersized, but that, that's not. That, I mean, that's that doesn't mean anything. Um, but he doesn't play like he's undersized, man. He's got a little, got a little dog in him. Uh, again, hitting out of the leadoff spot. Um, but man, we've talked all year about Springville um, and their pitching staff. Um, I, I think I, I like Springville. I think it's the Tigers. I'm almost certain. I like Springville with those frontline arms they have. Um, I like them this weekend, and and I do think, you know, they are ranked. But but I think it's a team that maybe we haven't talked a lot about. We've talked about them some, but maybe not one of the top contenders in 5A. Springville might be that. Springville may be that sneaky club that not many people paid attention to that can make a run. And because of that, I'm going to pick them to win round one and advance to the winner of Southside and Arab next week. Yeah, they won a state, they won a state championship about yeah. five years ago, didn't I think first ever state championship series we covered. Yeah, who Chase was that? Right? Chase yeah. Isbell. Yeah. 
was yep. like 96 or something. 96 on the gun at Riverwalk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go Springville too. Carter led by Carter Samuelson on the mound. I think he's been inching closer to 90 right-handed pitcher. I think he hits for them as well. Um, you talked about Armour. I was really impressed with Noah Stafford as well. A little sophomore looks to be a little gamer. And then they got, um, God, I'm blanking on their left-handed pitcher, first baseman. He, he, little left-hander who threw against, uh, Hoax Bluff and I went and saw him was really good. Um, uh, I'm blanking on the name if somebody can help out, but uh, Ardmore was 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 solid. I think it's too much Springville here. I like Springville here. They they've shown it all year long to be consistent. Won over 20 games in the regular season. Um, I'm gonna go with Springville. Are you pulling up game changer or something? Yeah. Once you get the first six A matchup, and I'll get that name for us. Okay. God, it's on the tip of my tongue. I'm... Um, moving on to Class Six A, the final classification as. We approach the four hour mark. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Um who did you see him play? Uh Hoax Bluff. Okay, go ahead. You can keep going. I'm looking for it. Okay. Um start uh, look uh, switching to class six A, our first matchup in the south at the top. You've got the Area 3 runner-up, Stanhope Elmore. They will be on the road traveling to the Hueytown Golden Gophers. Go, Golden Gophers. Uh, Stanhope Elmore goes into the playoffs with a 10-23 and record. Not the uh, uh, flashiest of records, but they've got talent. They've got some uh, a strong stable of arms on the mound. Hueytown is 20-15. and 15. This series gets started on Thursday at 4.30 and 7. Um uh, and then uh, the if necessary game would be Friday at five. Stanhope Elmore really led by um, Ethan Walls at the plate and on the mound. On the mound, man, he is he uh, nothing stays straight, it's everything moving. I mean, he can manipulate the baseball. Fastball has been up to 90. Uh, when I saw him back in the I think their first regular season game he threw was up to 90. Uh, really, really good wipeout slider. Uh, physical left-handed bat as well, and that's that is the brother of Colton Walls. He's hit in the middle of that order for for the past couple of years. Um, they've also got Jackson Stallworth, uh, another 2025 left-handed pitcher, first base outfielder, Tyler Woodham. I don't, I'm not sure his his availability what it has been this spring, but um, he's another key arm for them. Jordan Jones in the middle of that lineup. Hayden Anderson, a 2026 shortstop, is a is a, a multi-year starter. Um, there we go, Austin. No, that's that's Springville. Um, yeah, Alex. Uh, okay. I think they're mean Alex. Another pitcher for Springville. Gotcha. Um, Stan up Elmore. Uh, like I mentioned, Hayden Anderson, a multi-year starter, going back to his eighth grade year playing second base. He's now over at shortstop. Um, looking at Huey Town. Uh, Huey Town is is. Uh, and we we talk about it. I mean, Huey Town. Are they? Probably the most talented roster in six A. Probably not. I mean, they've got they've got talent, but maybe not as much as the Heart Souls and the Oxford. But it always seems like um, he he always gets them ready to play. Um, Seth so, Frame. Seth Frame. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it all. Do what? I'm sorry. I interrupted you. So yeah. Uh, Huey Town, they always seem like they start playing their baseball at the end of the season. Um, Cole Payne is is a left-handed hitting infielder we really like. The Bradbury brothers. Baker Davis is a physical presence in the middle of that order. Um, on the mound, Braden McCrary. I think he got maybe a little bit banged up towards the middle part of the season. He's back now. Yep. Yeah. He shared a video with us the other day, and he looked really good. So Yeah, so yeah. he's going to be – they need him to, to have quality starts in the playoffs and – um, pretty sneaky little, uh, good, good, uh, first round matchup. Um, uh, I'm going to go with Stanhope Elmore, uh, in this match. I think it's a pretty, maybe two quality teams. I know Stanhope Elmore doesn't have the best record. Um, but I, I still think they've got a, a pretty quality stable of arms. Um, you mentioned Hayden Anderson walls and Stallworth in the middle of that or, I'm going to go with the Mustangs to possibly. I don't know if you call it an upset because they're they're pretty evenly matched. I would I would say in terms of talent, I'll go with Stanhope Elmore um, to go uh, on the road here and get two out of three. 
That's a that's a pretty uh, impressive pick there. All right. Okay. I, I'm at, and that, again, I, I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm going to go the other way with Hueytown. You know, I, I wonder if Cole, Cole Payne has been injured here of late. Um, and I don't know if he's back or not, um, but they've got other pieces. I know the Bradbury brothers just both committed to Stillman, I believe it was. Um, and, and, and we saw, we've seen Hueytown several times this year, but the last time I saw him was that was in our North Alabama showdown. They came up and played James Clemens. No, they, I can't, they, they played, came up and played somebody on Saturday and I was talking to one of their assistant coaches before the game. And I said, man, I said, I hope you take this the right way. Cause this is in no way a shot at your team. I said, man, but when I look at Hueytown, the first thing that comes to my mind is blue collar. I said, man, y'all just got a bunch of blue collar players that get after it. And they all seem like they're invested in the team. And I like Hueytown this week. I like them to win at home to, to, to slide past Stanhope Elmore. I like them to win. I do. I think that the home field advantage will help them. And I also know this, Austin, they're playing at home. So Coach Chandler will not have to drive the bus this week. I know. I don't know if he, I don't know if he likes that or if he <laughs> – Cole Payne is back in the lineup. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. he, he was he was hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And you talk about other – O.J. Seeley, Sam Vaughn, Jarrett Kahn, Cam Lee, I think through like a seven-inning – like 70 pitch outing to clinch their birth in the playoffs. So, um, yeah, Huey Town's playing good baseball. Yes, they are. So, our next matchup, we both go with, uh, excuse, I'm sorry, Austin went with Stanhope. I'm going with Huey Town. Our next matchup, I think, I think the next matchup's an intriguing one. I, I mean, to a degree, let me explain this. Uh, you've got the runner up of area two, Baldwin County. They come in at 22 and nine. And they are traveling to Helena, where they will face off with the number four ranked Huskies who won area five over Calera. Helena comes in with a 20 and 12 record. Let me also let you know that Helena, uh, those 32 games they played, they played some of the best teams in the state. I mean, they've, you know, they were in our kickoff classic. They played all those big Birmingham schools in seven, a um, Helena is, I, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. I'm going to pick Helena simply because we think they are a really talented, really deep team on the mound and positionally. And Austin has seen them a couple more times than I have. I'm going to let him talk about them. But the thing that I the, – the reason I brought this up about it's an intriguing matchup is, man, Baldwin County, they have come a long way in a year or two, man. They are a scrappy group. I saw We saw them in the South Alabama Showdown. Uh, they played two games on Saturday. Uh, they've got a – you know, uh, their shortstop, Quincy Walters, he's headed to Coastal South. Man, that guy can play. He's also a back-end arm for them. And then you look at a guy like Eli Woody behind the mound, um, got all, or behind, the, <laughs> behind the plate, excuse me. Eli Woody, a guy that has, has only been there about a year, um, is a cleanup hitter for him. He's headed to Coastal South as well. Um, you know, I know that two, Coach – Two left-handers, Jackson, yeah, Jackson yeah. Schuler and Landon Walker. Landon Schuler's Walker, going to Bishop. Yeah. Walker's going to yeah, Montebello. Landon's going to Montebello. That's correct. You know, and I know Coach Pruitt, when I was at their game on Saturday, Coach Pruitt told me we got to steal an Eli Woody. Um, that guy can hit. He can hit. Yeah. And, you know, and as impressed as I was with him, you know, I was just as impressed with, with Quincy Walters that day. And you mentioned the two arms they have. Again, I'm picking Helena because that's a legitimate 6A state title contender. But, but Baldwin County can make it interesting. They 100%. can make it interesting. So I'm going to take the Huskies and pass it on to you, Austin. Yeah, this is a pretty tough first-round matchup out of the gate uh, for Helena because Baldwin County is – I saw Baldwin County when they played uh, Brian with Christian last year, had most of the same players, uh, lost a little bit. But Baldwin – I mean, 22-9, and nine, they've in – that, in that area down there with Spanish Fort and Robertsdale, McGill Tulin um, – to you know, to finish the runner-up. I mean, that's no, no, no. I mean, you got to be, you've got to play some quality teams to to make the playoffs. And Baldwin County's been able to do that. Um, I think Baldwin County and Helena probably play the same kind of brand of baseball, kind of scrappy, hard-nosed players. Both coaches do a great job, Coach Higginbottom and and Coach Guy at Helena. Um, but like you, yeah, I'm going to go with Helena. You, I mean, you talked about Baldwin County. Helena's got 
you know, Jarrett Scott, Ty Strickland, Reese Mims, uh, Nick Peters, uh, Hayden Berry, um, a bunch of other guys for, for, for the Huskies, uh, uh, their uh, pitcher, I'm blanking on his name, going to Lawson. I throw, saw him throw last week. Um, Not Barry. Um, no. Doc throws game two, and then um, game one is – guys got a really good slider. Uh, Logan Barber. Logan yes, Barber. yes, yeah. yeah. So the Huskies are – I mean, they, they're really, really good lineup, one through nine, uh, two solid pitchers on the mound, and, and I've got some solid options out of the bullpen. I'm going to go with the Huskies, but expect it to be a, a pretty competitive series. Going to our next series – you got the Area 7 runner-up, McAdory, who will be on the road to the Area 4 winner, Pike Road. McAdory is 14-10. and 10. Pike Road is 22-9. and 9. This series gets cranked up on Friday at 5 and 7.30 with the If Necessary game on Saturday at noon. We saw McAdory play, play at Pelham. Um, pretty Ath- athletic. Athletic, yes. Top of that order can really hit. Sawyer Pierce saw uh, Aaron Bailey. I'm, I'm blanking on their, their catcher's well, name. is and then we got Walls, Cooper Walls, yeah, yep. shortstop hit a home run. So did Pierce Saul, and then um, uh, their catch. I'm blanking on their catcher's name, but he was he was pretty athletic in the in the three hole. Um, and then Aaron Bailey throws game one for them. Has I think he's been up to 88 or 89 or 90. Uh, big two way player in the 2026 class. Pierce Saul, super athletic. You look at Pike Road, Hudson Franks on the mound. I think he's been throwing. The uh, majority of the innings for them, a 2026. You've got uh, Drew Britton, a senior infielder, headed to Baylor. A um, uh, bunch of uh, they've got. Um, God, I'm, I'm blanking. Um, Eli Payne's the kid from McAdory. Eli Payne, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Pike, uh, the Patriots. Um, their little uh, second baseman, I forget his name, was really. Uh, Herbert Reyes. Yeah, there you go. Appreciate it, uh, Ross. Yeah. Cody, Cody Markham, center fielder, uh, going to Troy. Um, um, the, the Patriots, Hunter Martin, a physical corner infielder for them. I think he's thrown some innings as well. Um, so Pike Road has been in and out of our 6A poll. They've uh, obviously been, been Russell to win the area championship. They're 22 and 9. Um, McAdory, I think McAdory's top. Of the, Top of the lineup, I think, is is really strong. Um, we'll be interested to see. I mean, they'll they'll have to 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 carry some of the weight offensively. I'm going to go with Pike Road here. Um, just their their quality of depth. They've got some good options on the mound and in relief. Uh, balanced one through nine lineup. I'm going to go with the with Pike Road here to uh, to advance to the next round in Class Six A. <clears throat> I went with Pike Road as well. I just think that the, the quality of depth. Um, that they have. Um, again, you mentioned it, the McAdory, uh, the, the the top of that lineup, really athletic. Um, you know, Aaron Bailey, uh, obviously two-way guy. Um, you know, he's going to give them a shot. But, I, again, Pike Road, I think, has, has a little bit more depth. That's the biggest thing that I, that I, that I thought was the difference here, the depth that Pike Road is going to bring positionally in the batting order and on the mound. That's what, That's why I went with Pike Road. Uh, to ultimately win and advance, I do think this could very well go three three games. Uh, I kind of butchered that. Kind of butchered that Pike Road. Pike Road's also got Jack Revis, their catcher. I think he hits cleanup for them going to Lawson State. Runner Stripling is another infielder. Jackson Fuller hits in the two hole for them. Left handed bat. Chase Bass is a solid reliever out of the bullpen. Um, they've got some other pieces as well. So Pike Road is is uh, is talented. Our next matchup. On paper, it may not look to be intriguing, but I think it's very intriguing. You've got one of the you got you got a team that we think is is as good as anyone in six A. All right, and that's Faith Academy. The Rams they won Area One this year um, by beating Sarah Land, and they've won a ton of games in a row. They currently sit at twenty one and five, and they're ranked number five in our last poll. Again, one Area One. They will be at home, and they will welcome Hillcrest Tuscaloosa. Hillcrest Tuscaloosa was a runner-up in Area 6. They were edged out by Northridge. Hillcrest Tuscaloosa comes in with a record of 22-10, and 10, and they sit right outside of our top 10. And as mentioned, they're the 6A runner-up. This series will get started on Friday 
um, down at Faith Academy at 4.30 with a doubleheader, and then the Saturday, if necessary, game would be at noon. I, I'm, I, I'm just going to go ahead and get straight to the point here. I'm going to pick Faith Academy because they've got frontline arms, Eli Driscoll, Brody Wilson. Riley um, Hall. Riley Hall, that's the one, yes. They've got frontline arms to beat anyone, and they've also got – uh, they've also got plenty of offensive firepower in, in, in their offensive lineup. I will say this though, Hillcrest Tuscaloosa is notorious for making deep playoff runs, including last year. And I don't want to say they were written off last year, but we didn't talk much about them last year. We learned our lesson and we've had them, you know, in the thick of, our rankings or right outside our rankings. We did drop them after they lost to Northridge. This could be, I'm telling you, Faith Academy is a state title contender, but if you're looking ahead to next to the second week at Faith Academy, I think you're 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 mistaken because I think this could be a really interesting series. Now, I do want to make sure you understand Faith Academy's talented. Faith Academy can win the whole thing, but Hillcrest is known to win when it's time to win. So I'm going to go Faith Academy, but not in what you, not in something that it's going to be a blowout. Yeah, it's going to be a good, a well played series, competitive series. Faith Academy, Carson Ratliff, Gavin Pruitt, Trey McDonald, Brody Lambert has gotten some big hits as a sophomore, Holden Redding. You mentioned Brody Wilson, Carson Ortiz, Taurus Caesar, Cooper Smith is another sophomore. You mentioned Eli Driscoll. They've got talent up and down the roster. Looking at Hillcrest, sort of led by Evan Williams, their left-handed hitting catcher who's headed to Northwest Shoals. Um, Jackson Henderson as well on the mound and at the plate. Physical right-hander who's headed to Shelton State. Brooks Tunnel, um, a, a host of other guys um, for, for the Patriots um, look to be playing their best baseball down the stretch. But I like you. I'm going to go with Faith Academy as well, ranked inside our top 10 for the majority of the season. Look to be getting back to the form that they have been over the past few seasons. Um, you know, they they have seen that swept Saraland and area, have beaten some really good teams, obviously only with five losses. Um, I'm going to go with the Rams, but expect it to be a heavily competitive, competitive, a highly competitive series down in the Mobile area. Our next matchup, you've got the Area 5 runner up, Calera. Will be on the road traveling to Spanish Fort. Uh, the area two winner, Calera, is 14 and 15 and 11. I think they beat Jemison yesterday. Spanish Fort is 21 and 10. This series, um, this series gets started on Friday um, at five with the second game at 7 30. Uh, and then the, the game three, if necessary, game would be um, on Saturday at 2 p.m. Um, uh, Calera obviously is, is, uh, Really talented. I think Landon Ash is a is a, uh, a talented hitter for a good hitter for them in the middle of that order. They've got other pieces as well. Spanish Fort on the mound. John Henry Winstead, Ethan Kick, um, a host of other guys. Jack Holly in the middle of that order. Braden Cooper, another arm for them. Just thinking off the top of the head, Nemo Hickson. Um, they've got they've got talent. Um, Lakeland Ray, um, another junior for them. You know, Spanish Fort coming off of last year's uh, uh, state runner-up finish, return a lot of those pieces. Um, um, we'll see. They they obviously have a lot of those those guys who know how to make a, a, a deep run in the playoffs. Um, we'll see. But I, we both like I like them to get off on the right footing here in the first round. I like them to go, uh, to take uh, two out of three against Calera at home. Yeah, well, you, you just spoke for me. You <clears throat> said we, we like Spanish Fort, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to go Spanish Fort as well. I mean, that, you know, we saw that team early this year, second weekend of the season, and they were getting through some injuries at that time, and they were they were not the Spanish Fort of of what Spanish Fort is right now. Um, you know, they obviously won area two, um, playing very well. You mentioned those names, um, you know, and and, and we also talked about it, you know, that 6A state champion state championship series run last year, ultimately losing uh, to Oxford, um, you know, new coach this year, Tommy Walker's back. 
Um, you know, but the the Toros continue to roll, and I think this weekend is no exception. I do like them uh, to beat Calera this week, this weekend, um, in advance. Uh, you know, and you also, they, and you also, sorry, you also got to mention uh, Newton Gardner, another returner for them as well. So that's right. And you know, when you play at the heel there, it makes it tough for opposing opposing uh, teams. I know last year when they beat uh, Sarah Land in the final four, it was a crazy, crazy environment. Well, don't look uh, ahead. So, yeah, that, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, so we'll both take Spanish Fort. Our next matchup, and this is also one that we're trying to get things planned on where we're going. There's a possibility that we're at this matchup as well. It's, a, it's one of the more intriguing matchups in 6A. Uh, you've got the runner-up. From area one, they did finish runner up to, as we mentioned, to Faith Academy. The Spartans of Sarah Land, they come in at number eight. They're 24 and seven. They are on the road, as I mentioned, at the winners of area six. That's Northridge. Northridge comes in at 17 and eight. We mentioned them winning that area over Hillcrest of Tuscaloosa. Northridge is a team that has gotten hot of late, as I mentioned. They're at 17 and eight. This series begins on Friday at five. And as I mentioned, uh, we are currently working on our schedule and that's one of the games that we might be at on Friday. Um, I think this is two evenly matched teams. You know, you look at someone like Sarah land, Austin, if you want to touch on the Northridge guys, I'll touch on Sarah land. If that's good with you. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a lot in both. Uh, you look at Sarah Land, you've got guys like Brooks Womble, an athletic third baseman shortstop, Cam Warren, a two a two-way guy for the Spartans who has, you know, produced for the long haul for them. Uh, Cameron Lafitte uh, is a guy that's put up some big offensive numbers for them. You know, and I'm probably going to miss some people. Uh, Dietrich Butler is a young arm, left-handed southpaw that, you know, may factor in this week, give them some innings. Evan Hilliard is another guy for the Spartans that uh, is a competitor on the mound. He's a bulldog. Um, he also, I think he was six and zero last year. Uh, also, you know, can hit a ton. Fuller Chisholm, uh, Hudson Robbins behind the plate, catcher. Um, Jacob Rowell is a Miles Davis. Miles Davis, another catcher. Jacob Rowell is an arm that has a lot of upside. Um, long, slender, tall build. Um, you know, there's my, uh, you mentioned Miles Davis. You can't talk about Sarah Lamb without talking about Sante, um, dual sport guy, you know, leading rusher on their state championship football team. Uh, you know, Mike uh, Smith, Jamison yeah, Mike Curtis, Smith, Mike Smith, and who Jamison Curtis, they just committed to Steelman, right? Mike, Mike Davis just committed to Miles. Miles. Jamison Curtis is going to play football at Vanderbilt. That's right. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's right. I knew one of them had come in baseball this week. That's an impressive, impressive lineup. All right. Austin, you wanna you wanna give our the guys from Northridge and we'll make our picks. Is that good with you? Yeah. Um start I mean, looking at the Jaguars. Um, hold on one second. My thing is froze. Didn't mean to put you on the spot. You're good. Um Anthony Messina um uh, is a uh talented uh, prospect for them. You've got Jack Sanderson, a left-handed pitcher who's going to Auburn. Evan Malone, um, I think, is an X factor for them. It looked has has looked to really have thrown the ball well as of late. A sophomore who can get into the upper 80s with this fastball. Uh, Milo Obradovich is a 2020 talented, uncommitted 2024 prospect, a catcher for them. Mason Elam, uh, 2026 shortstop, hitting the leadoff spot. Thomas Wolf, uh, first baseman for them. Logan Caldwell. Outfielder, right-handed pitcher, Cal Nunley. Um, so there, there's talent up and down this roster, one through nine, um, and, and and the same could go. Same goes for Sandland. I mean, this is a one through nine, no easy, no real easy outs in either order, um, and and both teams have pitching. So um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take uh, Sandland to go I'm on going, the road. I'm going Northridge yeah, at home. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I know. I'm gonna go Sandland. Um, wouldn't be. I'm sure we both wouldn't be surprised if the other team won. Could definitely see it going three games. This is going to be a highly competitive series. Um, and like you said, we both plan to. We're, one of us plans to be there. Hopefully um, on on Friday. So another another top ten matchup happening in the 
in the Tuscaloosa area. So moving to our next matchup, you've got the Area 4 runner-up, Benjamin Russell. Um, they'll be on the road traveling to the Area 7 winner, Brywood Christian. Benjamin Russell is 15-10. and 10, Brywood Christian is 14-10. and 10. Um, uh, This series will get started on Friday. Um, first game at 4, game 2 at 7, and then if necessary game would be on Saturday at 5. Um, you look at Benjamin Russell, I, I saw them um, earlier in the season led by um, quarterback prospect, right-handed pitcher, can swing it as well, Gabe Benton. Um, who's who's uh, been up to 90 mile per hour with his fastball. Um, he kind of leads the way for them. I'm pulling up uh, their roster right now. Looking at uh, Benjamin Russell, you've got Ryder Mobley, um, Owen Dye, Jackson Hay, who's Jackson Hay has been up to 90 with his fastball. Um, Charlie Morgan, Chance Lumpkin, um, uh, talent up and down the roster for, for Benjamin Russell. And then you look at Briarwood Christian, sort of uh, led by um, uh, Jake Souders, um, a, a talented 2024 prospect. Uh, we've got him ranked pretty high in our in our rankings. Um, uh, you look at other guys like um, mentioned Jake Souders, uh, Houston Hartsfield, um, uh, Will Clark, a bunch of other guys for the Lions. Uh, another evenly, evenly um, – uh, yeah, another evenly matched series we think could go either way. Yep. I'm going to go with the home field advantage um, of Briarwood Christian. I think that they find a way to do it, uh, find, a, find a way to do just enough to take this series. Could definitely see it going three games, but I'm going to side with uh, with Briarwood Christian in this matchup. I am too. I like Souders on the bump, man. Um, I, I, I like Briarwood Christian here. But you mentioned those arms at Benjamin Russell, man. That's that's you know, it's going to be competitive. I, I do think that Benjamin Russell can go in and win this series easily. I mean, I do. But again, when it's that closely contested and that much of an even matchup that you mentioned, I mean, you know, it, it's hard not to go with the home team. So give me Briarwood uh, to advance to the uh, second round in the six A playoffs. Our last matchup in the South, you have the runner up from Area Eight. Brookwood, they finished second to Hueytown. They will be on the road. Uh, Brookwood has a record of ten and eighteen. They will be on the road at the champion uh, at the uh, Area Three champions, Wetumpka. Uh, Wetumpka comes in with a twenty and thirteen record, and they sit right outside of our top ten. Um, this, I think, could also be an interesting matchup. Um, I, I will say I, I do think Wetumpka, I think Wetumpka scuffled a little bit early. I think they found their way and they're playing, they playing, they're obviously playing their best baseball of late. Spoke to uh coach spoke to Coach Diz the other day, man. We were just talking me a little too. bit. Did you? Okay. Yep. Yep. Talked to Coach Diz. He reached out to me and we talked a little bit. And he's a good dude, man. He's a really good guy. Uh, he's one of the true guys that, you know, lead his lead his program with integrity. Um, and you know. I, I do like them. I like Wetumpka this week. Um, you know, they they seem to have been a little fl- – and, again, I mentioned they got off to a little bit of a slow start, but I think they've righted the ship of late. I think they are playing their best baseball. Um, you know, and and they did take two or three from from Stanhope, as you, you know, as you, as you see here. Um, but um, I do like them. Uh, to win this week, I think maybe they're just. Uh, I think they, you know, athletically, I think they're just a little bit better in Brookwood. Uh, so give me with Tumpkin to advance. <clears throat> yeah, looking at Brookwood, you've got right-handed pitcher Jacob Nations, who's committed to Arkansas State, Three Rivers Community College. Chase Jones is a talented shortstop, left-handed hitter, and they also have Matt Hughes, Riken Wetzel, um, as well. Looking at and then looking at Watumka, led by left-handed pitcher outfielder Caden Woldridge, senior who's headed to Montevallo, kind of does it all for them. Um, left-handed uh, third baseman Noah Golson, infielder Jacob Smith, who just committed the other day, shortstop Mason Fuller, and then catcher Logan Fawcett is a, a sophomore, uh, 2026, who's who's hitting that hitting the middle of that lineup for the past couple of years, and then left-handed pitcher Asher Nobles um, has has thrown some big innings for the Indians as well. So uh, I'm going to go with Watumka as well. I think it. Uh, I just uh, I like you, know, you said. It. Tumka's uh, played well down the stretch, getting the 20 wins in the regular season. I'm going to go with the Indians here to advance uh, to the next round. Um, our next matchup, our 
First matchup in the North in Class 6A, you've got Huff, the Area 11 runner-up, Huffman. Uh, they'll be on the road traveling to the Area 16 winner, Buckcorn. Huffman is 12-7. and seven. Buckcorn is 18-12. and 12. Um, You know, you know more about Buckcorn than I do, seeing them up in your area, but I know they're you know led by Joshua Henson. Jack Roop has had a really good season as well. Um, I'm going to go with Buckcorn here. The series gets started on Friday. At 4:30, and then the if necessary game would need to be on Saturday at uh, Saturday at noon. But I think Buckhorn uh, wraps it up on Friday. I like them in two games here to advance to the second round. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I think six A South. The matchups are loaded. I'm not I'm not as high on the matchups in the North and six A. I think there's going to be some lopsided series in the North. And I think this one has the, you know, you mentioned it in two games. I think Buckcorn handles business here. Um, you know, they just won the area series uh, over uh, over Hazel Green this past uh, last week. I think they take care of Huffman fairly easily, and they move on uh, to the second week. That second matchup that we're talking about, the second matchup in the north, uh, you've got the area 10 runner-up, uh, Parker. They will be headed to – the uh, number, the winner of Area 13, and our number two currently ranked team, the Oxford Yellow Jackets, uh, the defending state champs in 6A. Oxford comes in with a record of 25 and nine. Um, they've been in that top two or three all year long. This series will get started on Friday at 4:30. Um, you know, I, we've talked about Oxford a great deal on all of our podcasts this week. You know, you've got R.J. Brooks, you've got you know, you've got Cannon Whitman. You've got uh, Carter, guy, Carter guy, Johnson. Yeah, I was going to say a guy by the name of Carter Johnson. Um, you know, and there's a lot of other pieces there. Uh, Nick Richardson. You know, we we don't have notes here reading all these off of. We just do it off the top of our head. Um, you know, we've talked about the personnel at Oxford all year long. All right. And, and, and listen, they're the number two team in the state for a reason. They've got a legitimate chance to go back to back. It's not going to be easy. We've we've talked about the depth of 6A as well. Um, you know, and when I mentioned that about the North, I, I think there are some really, really talented teams in the North, and I think they've gotten good draws early. That's what I meant by that. I did not mean that there weren't teams in the North that can win it because there's at least three that I know of that can win it out of the North. Okay. But I think they've gotten some favorable draws in the first round. Um, and it's just, you know, it's just, it's just what it is. And I, I, I think it's, I think Oxford takes care of business easily this week. And, and again, I say that with all due respect, Austin, I'm going to turn it over to you there. <clears throat> yeah. I'm going to go with, with, uh, Oxford as well. You know, you mentioned all the guys you had in Hudson Gilman and Forrest Heacock as well. Um, you know, yeah. The, yeah. the offensive lineup for them is as good as it gets, um, and, and, you know, just got to find a way to pitch it just good enough, which they, they have for the majority of the season. And um, I, I like Oxford as well. I like the Yellow Jackets. Moving on to our next matchup, mm. you got the, the Area 15 runner-up, Columbia. They'll be on the road traveling to the Area 12 winner, Mortimer Jordan. Uh, Columbia is 4-13. and 13, Mortimer Jordan is 16-15. and 15. Uh, This series gets started on Friday um, at 4.30 with Game 2 at 7.00. And the if necessary game would be Saturday at 11 a.m. I'm going to side with Mortimer Jordan here. I, I, you know they've they've in the central part of the state playing some quality teams. Um, I, I think that they're battle tested, and um, I like I like Mortimer Jordan here to advance to the next round easily. Yes, two they'll they'll pro probably be two short games here. I like Mortimer Jordan, um, I, and I know I know that the games before the playoffs don't mean anything because. Teams are just using it for live at bats and pitchers throwing live and getting live balls off the bat. But if I'm not mistaken, Mortimer Jordan beat Mountain Brook the other day. Yeah. Um, and, and again, there, you only put some use it for some use it for senior day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you only put so much emphasis into it. But again, you know, we know how good Mountain Brook is, which is we're going to talk about them next. But we're both going Mortimer Jordan here in this matchup. Moving on, as I just mentioned, our next matchup is, and we just found out something today that we like about this matchup. Um, Muscle Shoals, the Trojans, man, they're back in the playoffs, I think, after like a four-year hiatus. 
Coach Blake Beck's doing a good job up there. I, t- I, I, I don't know if I told you this. I told uh, when I was when they came over and played in our North Alabama showdown. I talked to Coach Beck before the before they played, and I said, "Man, y'all got a, y'all got a shot to, to to get into the playoffs." He said, "Don't say that." He did not want to hear it, and I I texted him after they won on uh, I think it was Saturday, and I said, "I told you so." He said, "Yeah, you did." So, congrats, congrats to them. Yeah, man, they're in the playoffs. Got some pretty good young talent over there. Um, and uh, they, uh, again, they finished runner-up in Area 14 to Hartzell, the number one team in the state. Muscle Shoals comes in with a record. They're right outside our top ten, a solid, solid ball club. They are at the winners of Area 9. That's the Spartans of Mountain Brook. Uh, Spar- uh, Mountain Brook is now 25-5. and five. Um they currently sit at number three and could very well could very easily be number one or number two. Um, Mountain Brook is one of those teams that can win it all. There's no doubt about it. The Spartans have rolled all year uh, long. Um, obviously, you know, very talented on the mound and that lineup. You've got you know John Robichaux on the mound. You've got Caleb Barnett. You've got uh, let's see, Dadell or uh, Kenneth Dadell. Yeah, Kenneth Dadell. I, mean, I think he set the all-time saves saves record this year. Yeah, I, I saw that as well. And, you know, we'll get into some of those other pieces in a minute. Uh, but just setting this up for you, um, this matchup, and this is what we found out about it. And as we told you, we're going to Birmingham on tomorrow to catch those back end 7A games. We're going to stay there and go to as many games as we can on Friday. Um, this game, this, this is going to get started on Friday at 1 o'clock, which really helps us out because we can go see this one before we try to get over to Tuscaloosa for the five o'clock game. So that'll give us a game to go to early on Friday. Um, again, that's the double header. The if necessary game would be Saturday at one o'clock. Um, man, this is, listen, this is a uh, Helena, uh, Helena, holy cow. Mountain Brook has absolutely deserved everything they've gotten this year. They put together an impressive year, 25 and five. And they obviously are the favorite this weekend. And I am obviously I, I'm going to pick Mountain Brook. I'm not going to tell you that. That I'm not, you know, not, not going to I'm going to go ahead and tell you that. But this is one of those like Baldwin County and Helena, where I think you've got a prohibitive favorite, but you're playing another team that may not be ranked, that may not be the name, but I'm telling you, Muscle Shoals led by Cruz Baker out of that leadoff spot and Dylan Olive on the mound. I'm telling you, man, Muscle Shoals can create, could create some problems for Mountain Brook. Now, yeah. you're going to have to find ways to score off Mountain Brook, okay? But this could be an interesting series. Um, again, I'm going Mountain Brook because, I mean, we've got them ranked number three for a reason. But Muscle Shoals, don't overlook them. Um, again, great season, you know, they, they, they're going to go down there and they're not going to be intimidated to play mountain Brook. This could be a good, this could be a good series. Yeah. Um, yeah, you looking at muscle shoals, you mentioned Cruz Baker, you, you, you've also got, um, you mentioned Dylan Olive. You've also got Jackson Jones. Um, Sam Arnold is a physical middle of the order hitter for them. Um, Collins, I think I said Collins word already. Carter Berryhill as well has, has gotten some big hits. Um, muscle, uh, looking at Mountain Brook, uh, you mentioned Robichaux and Barnett. James Graffos is a multi-year starter headed to Shelton State. Um, Hunter Keller, um, uh, you know, a, a host of other guys. Um, they've got some solid younger players as well. I know Paul Barnett, the younger brother of Caleb Barnett, is playing a big role at the plate and on the mound for them. Uh, I agree. I'm going to go Mountain Brook, but – uh, I, I agree. I mean, Muscle Shoals is, you know, seems to have that get after you mentality. And, um, you know, you mentioned, I mean, they, they won't be intimidated or anything like that. Um, it could be, would be a very competitive series, but we're both going to go with Mountain Brook here um, to advance to the next round. Uh, our next matchup, you've got Pel- the Area 13 runner-up, Pell City, who will be on the road um, traveling to Minor, who won Area 10. Pell City comes in with a 16 and 10 record. Minor is 99. The series gets started on Friday at five with game two at 7:15, and then game, if necessary, game three would need to be at one. Uh, Pell City, um, led by uh, on the mound, 
Uh, Braley Smith coming off a perfect game last year, man, last week to clinch their area spot. Um, you know, at the plate, you've got William Perry, um, Dalton Fink, uh, Peyton Moss, um, uh, Carter Perry. Is it Carter Perry? Yes, Carter Perry with a K. With a K. Yeah, Carter has really, really swung it well down the stretch. Um, uh, Baylor Smith has is a is a short who's who's played well. I mean, they've got piece. They've got a ton of pieces offensively. They're a very sneaky team, I think, in in, in Class Six A. Um, uh, with the with those arms and and how well they played down the stretch, only losing finishing as a runner up to Oxford. Um, then you look at minor guys like C.J. Richardson, Ethan uh, Bucher, uh, Tyler Anderson. Um, you know they, they're. A really solid team had a really good year last year, um, but ultimately I'm going to side with Pell City here to go on the road and and take two out of three um, here against Minor to advance. I'm going to go with you too. When we were doing our rankings the other day, we both talked about you know the six A classification and Pell City's one of those teams outside the top ten that can make a run. Obviously, if they're able to get by Minor, you know they could have a tall task in week two. That's still to be determined. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but you know Minor, kudos to winning area ten. You know, we do our player of the week, uh, do our player of the week uh, submissions. We get them from coaches. And I think um, Amerson was the kid last year that had like 7,000 stolen bases. Um, so, you know, they, they're they built on speed, minor is. And, you know, you, you get people on, you make things happen, you never know. But I just think Pell City, I just think Pell City is, has too much this week. They've been really good down the down the stretch. And obviously, you know, you throw Braley Smith out there, uh, he got a chance to completely uh, – has a chance to completely shut someone down. So, we're both going with Pell City. Our next matchup is a top-10 matchup in 6A. You have the the, the runner-ups from Area 9. You've got number 10, Homewood. Homewood, the Patriots, enter with a record of 19-10. and 10. They will be on the road. They, are, they do face a difficult task this week. They're on the road at the Area 14 winners, the Tigers of Hartzell. Hartzell, as I said, is number one. They come in with a record of 24-7. and seven. And this series will get started on Friday at 4.30 with the doubleheader and the if necessary game would be Saturday at noon. Um, two, two, uh, let, let me let me preface all this. Two programs that I think do things the right way. Two, two coaches that I think things do the right way. Um, two, two programs that, you know, have had success. I mean, um, you know, this is a – an interesting first round matchup. Uh, you know, Homewood finishes runner up to Mountain Brook, um, and they get the difficult draw of going to number one Hartzell. I mean, th- let's make no mistake about it. You look at Hartzell, you know, you've got and th- that lineup is is pretty sick. I mean, you've got Cole Miles, or Cade Miles, excuse me, headed to Jack State. You've got Peyton Steele headed to Alabama. You've got jo- JoJo Williamson headed to Alabama. You've got Cole Miles. Um, Lawson Williams headed to Northwest Shoals. Um, Peyton uh, Steele. Cam, Cam, I said Peyton. I think I said Peyton. Yeah. Oh. Cam, Peyton headed to Alabama if I didn't. Uh, Cam Palahatch uh, headed to Northwest Shoals. And let me tell you something, Cam Palahatch, if you want to see what hard work does, that kid has developed much as much behind the plate as any catchers I've seen over the last two or three years. Used to be a little long with the transfer, man, has gotten super quick with the transfer, and the arm strength has just continued to build. Really like Cam Palahatch headed to Northwest Shows and Coach Langston. I know there's guys I'm leaving off. You got Brody Leathers on the mound. Um, help me out, Austin, with Hunt. Hunt Nick Chumley. Yeah, uh, Nick Chumley. I mean, you, you've got a lot of different, uh, you know, listen here, if you pitch for Hartzell, You've got the luxury of being able to allow a couple runs and still win because you know your offensive, your offensive lineup is going to take over and score some points. Points, uh, score some runs. Uh, and that makes me uh, makes me stick, yeah, and score runs. Well, let's look at Homewood. All right, let's look at Homewood. Homewood's going to come in with a team that 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 is built for for games like this. I mean, you've got you got Jack Ross, a two way guy that I think I don't know if he's lost this year. I guess he lost to Mountain Brook. I think he's like seven and one with seven home runs. Um, Here, you know, ad lib this. I'll be back in one second. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> he's seven and one with seven home, I think like seven home runs. Uh, you know, you've got other pieces in that lineup. Obviously, Levi Nikolai, a sophomore shortstop, right handed pitcher. 
that has been used most on the back end of games uh, where we've seen him, but he is a uh, a, a 2026 uh, commit headed to Auburn. Um, can uh, obviously can really hit it, and again doubles as a front line arm. Um, I'm pulling up something right now uh, for Jackson. Auburn. Jackson Warren is another. Jackson, is a yeah, that's hitter. right. Uh, the brothers. What's the brothers' names? Um, Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, maybe I'm wrong at Homewood. No, I'm wrong. All right, but but again, Homewood's going to come in with a bunch of pieces that can go up and win this series at Hartzell. But I just I just it, oh the uh, Jeremiah Gary Jeremiah Gary there uh, can swing it uh, for Homewood as well. Man, I'm going to have to go uh, again. I think if Homewood was playing maybe anybody else other than two or three different teams across the state, I'd be I'd be more inclined to go with Homewood, but I've I've got to go with Hartzell uh, again offensively. Just go out and pitch and throw strikes, you're going to win. I mean, that's just the way it is with Hartzell. So yeah. give me the Tigers again. Yeah. Didn't mean to get too long there. Go ahead. Yeah, offensively, I think it's too much Hartzell. Um, all the guys you said, and you mix in Asher Dopel, mm-hmm. um, who's just a, a grinder at the bottom of that order. Um, and you know, seeing both of them, you know, Homewood, uh, you know the the, especially the top half of that lineup is really good, but just the depth of Hartzell's lineup, I think it's a little bit too much Hartzell, especially at home for the for for uh, for for this matchup. I'm going to go with the Tigers as well. If you beat if you beat Sardis three times in a week, that says a lot about you. Yeah, hundred percent. And and they they face Ger- although Gerhart was through three innings, but they scored four runs. Nikolai had a grand slam, so that wasn't just a grand slam. Ooh. That was a bomb. Yeah. I can hear the fat lady singing. <laughs> hey, hey, before we get into the last two matchups. We went four hours. We got to get 4,000 viewers. Okay. Before we get into the last two matchups, and we're not going to put it on the screen, but if you would, if you've been with us for f- the four hours and 25 minutes, just put over there to the side. Just raise your hand or put me or something. We're not going to put it on the screen. We just want to see if there's anybody that's been with us for four plus hours. <laughs> People must think we are crazy talking about high school baseball for four and a half hours, but we are. Uh, last two matchups: you got the Area Twelve runner-up, Pinson Valley. They'll be on the road traveling to the Area Fifteen winner, um, uh, Athens. Pinson Valley comes in with an area of, uh, with a record of five and twenty-two. Athens is twenty-one and ten. Um, Thursday, uh, the series will get started on Thursday um, at. Uh, 4.30 and game two at seven. And then the if necessary game would be uh, game three would be at uh, Friday at 5 p.m. Um, but I, I like Athens at home um, led by Riley Miller on the mound and at the plate. Hudson Marks is an underclassman um, uh, has, has, has been a, a key piece for them. Grayson Hayes just committed to Gadsden state um, and, and they've got a bunch of other pieces on the mound as, and as well at the plate. Um, you know, you, Jack Elliott, um, you know, it, you may know a little bit more than, than, than me, up with you, with them up in your area. Hudson Marks. I don't know if you mentioned him. I did. I did. Um, yeah, yeah but the, really talented. Uh, they've been on the, just outside the top 10 for the majority of the season. I, I like Athens to, to move on here. Yeah. Athens, Athens easily this week. Uh, that's a talented team. Um, and again, Pinson Valley, you know, winning, or excuse me, finishing runner up. That's a you know an accomplishment, but I think they're just going to run into something that's a little bit stronger than them this week. I like Athens easily in this series to advance to round two, where they will play the winner of our final our final uh, matchup, and that's the up the Trojans of Hazel Green. They come in with a record of thirteen and twenty three. They finish runner up to Bob to Buckhorn in Area sixteen. They are on the road. At number six, an Area 11 winner, Gardendale. The Rockets are at 23 and eight and have been a mainstay in our top 10 all week. This all series, year. All, all year. Excuse running, me. Out of, running out of gas. Yeah, I'm, I'm about done right here. I'll be yeah. honest with you. <laughs> but this series will get cranked up on Thursday. I'm almost 100% certain of that. Yeah, they, 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 yeah, they changed. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's on Thursday at four o'clock, the doubleheader, and then the if necessary game would be Saturday at one. On paper, this looks like all Gardendale. 
And yes, I'm going to take Gardendale. I mean, they have obviously been a, listen, they, they, you, you sit three to six in our state rankings all year long. That means you've been consistent. That means you've won the games that you're supposed to win. And it means that uh, you've probably won some games that were toss-ups, you know, and, and Gardendale, Gardendale is very, very talented. And by the way, beautiful new field there, man. That's a great mm-hmm. coach. Keaty, man, I know he's very appreciative of, of what, what he's got there at Gardendale. Uh, and by the way, he's a really good dude as well. He, he loves those Blazers of UAB where he played baseball. Um, but I guess I, it, it is Friday. Oh, it's Friday. It's been moved back to Friday. Thank you, Coach Ward. Man, I appreciate it. Man, Coach Ward and I go back a long way. All right. Uh, so it's been moved back to Friday. Our apologies. So make sure our listeners uh, see that. Um, man, let me tell you something. Gardendale is the favorite to win. Gardendale is going to be my pick. But I'm going to tell you, I've seen Hazel Green a couple times this year. And I think that they can, I think you can probably say they have not swung the bat like they wanted to this year. They've got some arms at the top of that rotation that can keep them in games. Now, the way Hazel Green has swung it this year, they haven't swung it real well. You know, I I believe that they're going to have to depend on those arms to keep them in games. And, I think this is probably strength versus strength because I do believe Hazel Green's strength is on the mound. You've got guys like Blake Saltzman. You've got Jackson Hunter. You know, Tarpley Priest has thrown a lot for them. I know there's some other guys that we'll get to in a minute. But they're facing the strength of Gardendale's team, which is is offensively. They can really bang the ball around the yard. You know, you look at Hazel Green's record and you think 13 and 23, this is a cakewalk. I'll. I don't, that's not, this is not a cupcake. All right. This is not a cakewalk for, for Gardendale. Um, do I expect Gardendale to win this? I do. No disrespect for the people from Hazel Green. Um, but I do think that Hazel Green can pitch it well enough to stay in both or all three games to give themselves a chance to win. You know, last year and the year before that, we continue to talk about Hazel Green being a blue collar community and a blue collar team. That hasn't changed. I think the question is, are they going to be able to swing it enough and put good at bats back to back to back to be able to score runs? Because, you know, Fitzpat it's Logan Fitzpatrick, right? Fitzgerald. Yes. Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Gerald. Gerald. Yeah. Le- lefty for Gardendale can really pitch, not going to light up radar gun, but can really pitch. I am going to go with Gardendale, but I don't think it's as one-sided as someone might just look at records and think it is. Yeah, if I'm an opposing coach, I probably don't want to see – Hazel Green's one of those teams I don't want to see early in the playoffs. Because, I mean, you look at that record and you think, like you said, I mean, this is a tougher matchup than most people may realize. Um, you know, hating, Hazel Green led by you know, Tarpley Priest – Colton Clark and Cole Zayek are two freshmen that have really hit, uh, at least when I've seen them. Israel Navarro, Jaden Charles can can really be dynamic pieces for the lineup, um, in, in addition to the guys that you talked about. And then Gardendale with with Caden Combs, who won the Player of the Week last week, is really – What were his stats last week? 13 for 14 with six doubles, a home run, and 10 RBIs. 13 for um, 14. Yeah. Whew. And then, um, um, you know – other holy cow, Cooper Jarvis. Oh uh, man, I, yeah. I don't know the availability of Todd McGraw. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, don't know. They've got other pieces as well up and down that lineup that we're missing out on. That we're, we haven't. You know, we're going off the top of our head, but you know, this is this is going to be a very a very has a chance to be a very competitive matchup. Um, you know, it, it's. Could, I'm going to pick Gardendale as well, but could easily see you know this go into three games and the Trojans possibly pulling out one. But I, we're both going to we're both going to stick with uh, with Gardendale. So, so Ooh. with that, <laughs> we are done. We will Some see you next week. And we went over four thousand viewers. Some of you stuck with us for over four hours and thirty minutes, and I want you to know that we are very very appreciative of that. 
This would be no fun if we had 12 people we were talking to for four hours. I know. Uh, this this is fun. We hope that you enjoy it. We aren't picking to make someone mad. It's just we can we want our audience to speak back to us and talk to us. Man, we're going to be out and about this week and in the next over, over the next month at, at playoff series. Please come up and speak to us. Man, we we are looking forward to this just like all of you are. This is this is why you this is why those players go to those 6 a.m. workouts. This is why you play games when it's 37 degrees outside and it's drizzling and you're having to sit out there and watch your son play or you're having to play or whatever. This is when the fun, this is when the fun begins. And we look for it just as much to you as you do. We hope your team wins this week and advances to round two. And and let me remind you, we will not do our normal podcast next Monday. Our playoff um, episode for next week will probably be on Wednesday. We will let you know for sure, but keep an eye on that. But again, I just want to thank all of you, over 4,000 of you for getting on and letting us talk high school baseball. And um, thanks for the input. And Austin, I'm going to let you finish this up. I'm done. Thank you so much. Austin. All good. Be sure if you haven't, uh, submit your brackets on the Bracket Challenge. You can head over to our website. Other than that, thank you for listening, and we'll see you uh, probably this time next week.